exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. It's the 1979 World Series, Game 5. Live from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, the American League champion Baltimore Orioles and the National League champion Pittsburgh Pirates. The Orioles now up three games to one, winning 9-6 yesterday. Tim Stoddard ended it with a strikeout of Adon. And what a day for Stoddard. On the mound and at the plate, his first hit in organized baseball. It came in the eighth inning, drove in a run. Also in the eighth, off the bench, John Lowenstein, pinch hitter, two-run double. And then Terry Crowley, the same result. Today, game five. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for today's game. The champions of the American League, the Baltimore Orioles. Manager Earl Weaver. Leading off, shortstop Tico Garcia. Batting second, left fielder Benny Ayala. The third place hitter, right fielder Ken Singleton. In the cleanup position, first baseman Eddie Murray. Hitting fifth, center fielder Gary Renicky. Batting sixth, third baseman Duck DeSense. In the seventh spot, second baseman Rich Dower. The eighth place hitter, catcher Rick Dempsey. Batting ninth and warming up in the bullpen, pitcher Mike Flanagan. And the remainder of the Baltimore Orioles. Now, your National League champion, Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Manager, Chuck Tanner. <laughs> Batting first, center fielder, Omar Marino. Second place hitter, shortstop Tim Foley. Hitting third, right fielder Dave Parker. In the fourth spot, left fielder Bill Robinson. Batting fifth, first baseman Willie Stargell. Hitting sixth, third baseman Bill Madlock. In the seventh spot, catcher Steve Nicosia. The eighth place hitter, second baseman Phil Garner. Batting ninth and warming up in the bullpen, pitcher. Jimmy Rooker. The rest of the champion Pirates. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since yesterday, two members of the Pirates family have left us. Ann Tanner, mother of Chuck Tanner, passed away this morning. Yesterday afternoon, Edgar B. Spear, a member of the board of directors and recently retired chief executive officer of the United States Steel Corporation, passed away. 
our heartfelt sympathy goes to their families. Will you please rise for a moment of silence in their memory? And now let's honor America with our national anthem, which will be sung by Miss America of 1977, Dorothy Benham Anderson. Dorothy Anderson with our national anthem as we get set for game number five, a duel of left-handers. Mike Flanagan on the mound for Baltimore. He won 23 during the regular season. Jim Rooker, the surprise starter for the Pirates. We'll be right back. Sex stomach. He used to take cod liver oil or something like that. 61 Sam Adams has been bothered all, all week. His uh, nickname is Sardines. Uh, somebody said, maybe you got some bad sardines, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough to make you sick. All right, Bob Avellini trying to make the Bears healthy. They're down 17-7. We open the fourth quarter. Third and two at the 30. And that's Robin Earl in motion. Oh, oh, my. Dave Williams had no chance. Number 50, Sam Buda Hunt shot through and nailed Williams for a three-yard loss. Hunt was in there, and Raymond Claiborne, number 26, right, just flying through there. Hunt gets the first shot. Claiborne coming in, the blitz, so effective against the pass. In this case, just unbelievably effective against the run. That's a 250-pound linebacker and a defensive cornerback in there for the first hits. Bob Parsons, former Penn State quarterback, hits a knuckler out to Morgan at the 35. This side to the 40, 45. And a clever run across the 50 to the 47-yard line of the Chicago Bears, Stanley the steamer Morgan from the University of Tennessee. 38-yard punt and 18-yard return. Timeout just into the fourth quarter in Chicago. New England has the ball again, leading by 10. This is rookie running back Steve Atkins of the Green Bay Packers trying to fill the shoes today of the veteran Turdell Middleton out with a shoulder injury. Leading the Detroit defense against the pack, this man, Al Bubba Baker, who leads the Lions in sacks and had three in last week's game. He'll be coming all afternoon. From County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the NFL on CBS presents the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan with Roman Gabriel here in Milwaukee on a bright, sunshiny afternoon. Two teams struggling, Roman, in the NFC Central. And today, uh, you might expect that uh, we would see a wide-open football game. But what do you think? 
Well, with the records of both teams, Tim, you would think so, but I guess the Lions are a ball control team. They'll probably stay that way unless they get behind and they'll have to go to the air. And Green Bay is similar. They both like to play ball control, and that's probably what we'll see starting out. Well, the Packers, of course, having to start Atkins at running back. Lost Barty Smith, their fullback, during the week at practice. And they'll have Eric Torkelson running in his spot, really a natural halfback, and only a reserve in the past. And so tough uh, work ahead for both these teams who have a lot of injuries, but they say they're ready to play this afternoon. The Green Bay Packers will kick it off. Chester Markall and the deep men for the Detroit Lions are Luther Blue and Ken Calicut. Awaiting the kickoff at the five-yard line. Markall's kickoff will be taken by Calicut at the six. Loose ball. Calicut still loose. And looks like he held on as the pack descended on him at the 11-yard line. Calicut retained possession. A lion is down upfield. And Detroit will start... First and 10 from their own 11 yard line. And one of the Lions special teams player is down and hurt at the 25 yard line. Both these teams have suffered from injuries. They have had uh, starters out. They've had reserves out. About 20 players in all over the two rosters are injured. For the Detroit Lions starting will be the rookie Jeff Conlow at quarterback. The running backs are Bo Robinson and Dexter Bussey. The wide receivers Freddie Scott and Gene Washington. The tight end David Hill, and he was somewhat questionable uh, in the warm-up today. He's got a shoulder injury, but evidently will start. Freddie Scott playing with a broken bone in his left forearm. Offensively along the front line of the Lions, Larry Terry at center. The guards are Elias and Bollinger. The tackles are Dorney and Baldishwiler. And Keith Dorney, of course, the outstanding rookie from Kent State. Monty Clark, very happy with his play so far. The injured Lion player was Eddie Cole, rookie linebacker number 50, being assisted off the field, and we're ready to go with the Lions' first series. Detroit coming into the game with a 1-5 mark. The Green Bay Packers 2-4. and four. It is the oldest rivalry between these two teams, the Lions and the Packers. First down and Scott Motion. And this is Bussy off the left side, gets out to the 16-yard line. Picked up about five yards. He was hit there by Johnny Gray coming up from the safety spot, number 24. Defensively for the Green Bay Packers, they've got a number of substitutes filling in for injured starters. They'll have Mike Butler at left end, and then Earl Edwards and Charles Johnson are backups playing at the tackle spots, and Robert Barber is a backup to Ezra Johnson starting at right defensive end. Second and five, Detroit in the shadows in their own zone. Bussy again ran into his own man, knocked right into his running path, picked up a couple of yards to bring up third and let's say about three and a half to go for the Detroit Lions. Jeff Comlow, the number eight pick from Delaware. Weaver, Gary Weaver made the tackle for the Packers and there are the linebackers. Weaver is joined by rookie Rich Wingo in the middle and Mike Douglas, number 53, on the right side. Very strong secondary. McCoy and Estes Hood, second year man on the corner. Steve Luke and Johnny Gray, veterans of safety. Third and three. Bussy has it. Out to the 25 yard line, cutting back against the rain. Good effort there, uh, Roman, as uh, it looked like he was stopped and then found a little more daylight. All right, Tim, the Lions doing exactly what we felt they would do. Coming in this game, they're going to test the left side of that line. That's Earl Edwards playing left tackle, 11-year veteran, and also Mike Butler, 77, on the left side. There they go for a big game and a first down. Mike Douglas, the linebacker, the first man to slow him up. Mike Butler, 77, still playing with a dislocated elbow. In motion comes the tight end. Well, now he's just going to jump over to make the strong side left, David Hill. Bussy again, straight ahead behind Larry Terry and Homer Elias, left guard. Wingo, the middle linebacker, stopped him, and he got about a three-yard pickup on the play. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is prohibited. 
Tim, I think we're going to see both teams using a lot of eye formation because both defensive clubs like to use an over and under defense. And from the eye spot, you can slant back to the weakness of that defense much easier than you can for split backs. Slot formation left for the Lions. They pitch it out for Bo Robinson. Gets a good block on the corner. Keith Dorney throwing the block. Johnny Gray finally forced him out out at the 33-yard line, close to the 34. That'll bring up third and a yard for the Lions, and they bring in a couple of new bodies, Luther Blue and a second tight end, Ulysses Norris, number 80, joining David Hill. Philadelphia continues to roll, 24 to 20 over St. Louis, and Ron Jaworski heard earlier in that game, as far as we know, John Walton had to finish up, Roman. Well, Walton's a fine quarterback, and he had, just hasn't had the chance to play, but if he did finish up, he did an outstanding job. Eagles are now 6-1 and one in the NFC East. Third in the yard here for the Lions, out of the eye, motion. They got Robinson behind the line, but the Packers had a pretty good jump on the play. Was he drawn over? We'll find out from the referee. I think, four. I think Comlo going to a long count, which is a is a very good to do in a situation like that. Short yardage, change the count, go to three rather than one or two, and you draw them off sides. We used to do that quite a bit, Tim. Butler and Edwards have made the stop, but it was offside against Green Bay. It'll be first down Lions, and they move smartly out from their own 11 at the beginning of the game. Offside, 7-0 defense is the first down. Robert Barber is 7-0, the four-year man from Grambling. The Packers without Ezra Johnson out with an ankle injury. Carl Barzalaskis went on injured reserve with an arm injury and a pinched nerve. They've got their linebackers, Mike Hunt and John Anderson, two outstanding sophomore linebackers, both hurt. First down, Kamala wants to throw. Up the middle, Washington wide open. First down to the 40-yard line of Green Bay. Steve Luke, number 46, made the tackle. I think... I think this is something we're going to see quite a bit of from the Lions. On first down, they generally run here. Play action, good call. Gene Washington has only caught four passes this year. They're going to the right guy. The Packers were in a double zone. There's an open area right behind the backers. Play action holds those backers. 21-yard gain for Detroit. On the move in Packer territory. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel, we are just underway at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Loose ball. Kamlo just covers it. And the linebacker Weaver in there to touch him down. It'll be a loss of about three on the play. Probably one of the biggest reasons for the Lions' unsuccessful year. 19 turnovers to this point, and their defense has only taken the ball back nine times. Well, it's difficult to tell there. A lot of times the center's even move, uh, generally moving forward and the quarterback moving back. At that time was hard to tell. Larry Terry is the center, second-year man from Wake Forest. Rookie quarterback, Hamlo. It'll be second in about 13. Robinson straight ahead. Bo Robinson is a rookie running back from West Texas State who became a starter early on for the Lions this year. Rich Wingo and Mike Douglas. Combining on the tackle, he picked up about six yards. It'll be third and, let's say, seven. Well, you can hardly blame the Lions for trying to control the line of scrimmage. The Packers have three fellas in there on that defensive front that weren't starters when the year began. The Lions are going to give them a good test with that young, strong offensive line. Look at this. The Giants ahead of San Francisco, 32-16. Five defensive backs in for the Packers. Wiley Turner, number 20, has come into the secondary. Slot left and under pressure. He gets it off to Robinson. Robinson goes right through Rich Wingo. With a nifty move and has a first down inside the 30 of Green Bay. Charles Johnson ranged back from defensive tackle to make the stop. That other lion is down. Well, we got a man down there, Tim. Is that it's hard to tell? Could be the running back Robinson. We'll wait and see. Actually, all we have here is flooding the defense to the left side. Good pressure there. A little quick screen out here to the left to Robinson, who made a heck of a move on Wingo, the middle linebacker. Packers had it played well. Let's, let's take a look at the pressure. Let's see where it comes from. Comes from the left side, I believe, of the Lions offensive line. Fullback. Fullback's moving into the protection. It is Bo Robinson, the ball carrier, is the injured player. We'll be back in a moment. Atlanta Falcons.
Falcons have won the toss. And Ray Guy, one of the strongest legs anywhere, will kick off for Oakland. He does not kick the extra points, however. That is handled by Jim Breach. Deep for Atlanta. Lynn Kane, number 21. Ray Guy indicating that he is ready and looking into a bright sunshine. In Oakland, California. He hangs it high. And Kane takes it at the four. With a good opening up the middle, Kane struggles out to about the 33-yard line, stopped by Derek Ramsey, who is another of the tight ends on the Oakland roster. They have three good ones, in fact. We mentioned the first two. And those two, is the most, for the most part, will start. Chester and Casper. And Derek Ramsey is the third, the one who just made that tackle, and he's a dandy as well. A good run back, but remember the middle of the field. Number 47, kicking team, declined. First down. It's there. a natural grass down there, and it is chewed up a little bit in the middle of the field, so we're going to see some good old-fashioned football. There's a big offensive line. Ken, Scott, Van Note, Howell, Warren Bryant, and Jim Mitchell, who's a good blocking tight end, but doesn't catch the ball much. There's the Atlanta backfield and the receivers. Those of you who've been watching the Philadelphia Eagle game against the St. Louis Cardinals, welcome to Oakland, California. You just saw the first scrimmage play. Andrews was the ball carrier. I believe, no, he was not. That was Mayberry. Andrews had been banged up, and there was doubt as to whether he'd play or not. There's the Oakland defense. They will go with a three and then come with a four three now. There's Browning, Dave Pear, Pat Tume, Hendricks, Johnson, Villapiano, and Rod Martin, number 53, who really stuck the ball there in that last play. And the secondary, Hayes, Williams, Davis, and Jack Tatum. A fair yard gained on that first play. Line of scrimmage, the Atlanta 33 is Steve Bartkowski. The Bubba Bean gets fairly good yardage, four or five against that Raider defense. The tackle made by number 53, Rod Martin. Again, the Raiders were in the three-man front, and that time they cut off the outside linebacker and ran straight at it. Let's run down as we have a chance here some of the final scores. The Redskins beat Cleveland 13-9. Buffalo lost to Miami 17-7. And Cincinnati overwhelmed Pittsburgh 34-10. Excuse me. Third and four. How about that? Just a matter of time. There's too many good players on that Cincinnati team. This is Mayberry looking for room and finds it. Mayberry with a good second effort. We'll have a first down Atlanta. Going to be close. Good second effort. He came out of Colorado. Uh, some people didn't think he was maybe going to be fast enough, but he is. Here they are in the four-man front. And Ollie Spencer, the great offensive line coach for like 18 years, is now the defensive coach, and they're changing up a lot. You can see the second effort. That was Martin that couldn't hang on, and Mayberry is still packing about 226 pounds. He's, he's a load. He got the first down. The line of scrimmage, 44. New Orleans, whopping Tampa Bay. Fine catch by Wallace Francis. Is it complete? Yes, it is. He got both feet down in bounds, covered by Ted Hendricks. We'll have a chance to look at it again. There's the first pass by Markowski. Let's see how he's throwing it today. You see Mayberry filling inside. Good pass block, and he gets the three. Ooh, he had the, the cornerback was all the way down on the ground, and an excellent catch. Looks like that was cleaned off and thrown pretty well. Yes, it did. Philadelphia beat St. Louis. The Eagles then go to 6 and 1, 24 20, the final score. Atlanta Falcons in Oakland territory. And a carry by Bubba Bean is enough for the first down. That pass completion a minute ago. To Jenkins got nine yards, and then Bubba Bean picked up the first for the Falcons. The pullback goes inside, and that time Ken, the big left tackle, took Toomey down. And a pretty good move by Bubba Bean slipped outside of it. The Raiders won't stay in the three if they're getting burned in it. They'll change it to a four right away. Outside, complete again to Jenkins. Uh, to Wallace Francis. Ted Hendricks on the tackle. Close to another first down for Atlanta. Boy, number 10 really appears poised. Uh, we thought after he got the starting job in game number four last year and took him to the playoffs that he had arrived, but Steve is just a different quarterback than that first couple of three years when he had one injury after another and the crowd got down on him. Right now, uh, he might be governor of the state of Georgia. And, of course, this game means an awful lot to him because he played collegiately at the University of California, close by. Bubba Bean split wide to the right. The lone setback is Mayberry. And Mayberry has the Atlanta first down. A good-looking drive put together by the Falcons so far. Well, Van Note that time took Pear, the nose guard, and turned him to the left side, and Mayberry, uh, for a rookie, rather unusually, read the play very well and adjusted at the line of scrimmage. You're right, that's a good drive. Just out 
inside the Raider 30 as the crowd here at the Oakland Coliseum comes to life and encouraging their silver and black defense. First down, Atlanta. Barkowski took a long time, and Bubba Bean gets the good yardage, but out of that pack comes a yellow flag, and the penalty marker is down. Had trouble getting Bubba Bean down when he is turned on. Ooh, there's a holding call. There is Jack Tatum, the safety man who made the tackle. That explains why the hole was so large, too. <laughs> the holding. That's holding. Now the two may comes out, and we'll go with a four-man front and try to get a four-man pass rush. Holding, number 57, offense, first down. Van Note, the offense is center. Let's see what he does. Uh, Looks like some a kind of an old kinescope or something. <laughs> Buster Keaton with the ball. <laughs> anyway, he held. Quickly. Barkowski on the draw play to Mayberry. And Mayberry goes down in the draft of Lester Hayes. Teams, teams that have been severely crippled by injury, particularly Oakland. They've really had injury problems. It's amazing Seven. they've done as well as they have. Seven starters and like 17 players. Here's that last draw play. Mayberry again replacing Andrews, both rookies. And both doing a heck of a job in so the first year. Second down. They need 14 for the first. Markowski will come straight back. He sends both backs out to the And Markowski has a man open. Wallace Francis again near a first down, not quite there. Charles Phillips is number 47 in the black jersey. Watch the move now up front as the blocking against a stunning defensive line. You can see Ken and the guards exchanging, staying on their man. And Markowski had plenty of time and did not have to retreat too deep. Francis now... Uh, has got 29 catches for the year. Here it is. Look at Van Note. He's helping pick up to the left. Well, that's a good pocket. He's been wide open every time. And Barkowski has had the ball perfectly thrown every time. It'll be third down. They need three for a first. Mayberry will not get it. He lunges about a yard shy, it would appear. Ted Hendricks finally put the clamp on him. Willie Jones, I think, got some of him, too, didn't he? Yes, he did, and Dave Pear as well. Willie Jones is the young rookie out of Florida State. Very quick. There's Lehman. He, I think he's got a chaw in there, doesn't he? Either bubble gum or whatever. <laughs> Tim Mazzetti on the scene about the 29 and a half yard line. So make it a 39 yard plus field goal out of the hold of the Atlanta punter John James. He's six of eight out to the 39 yard line. Mazzetti is wide to the right. It is rare for a soccer style kicker to the miss to the right. But that's where he pushed it. Tim Mazzetti, last year's hero, is a victim of some of this year's criticism. Nothing, nothing score. <laughs> up for the Monsters of the Midway. Soldier Field in Chicago. Beautiful day here in the Midwest. That's a great shot from the Channel 5 telecopter, WMAQ, NBC station here in Chicago. Thank you, gentlemen, for those artistic shots. Grogan on first down. Dumps it to Calhoun at the 50, the 45, 40. Calhoun inside the 35-yard line on New England first down. Bucket stir. And the ball. So Calhoun takes that little swing right. And New England marches deeper into Bear territory with a 17-7 lead. Clock will start to become more and more important. 13 minutes and 45 seconds left. The wind kicking up on the bay, but uh, the Bears uh, not getting a second wind here. And New England doing an extremely fine job of controlling the football. Russ Francis gets the pass and ridden out of bounds by Gary Fensick at the 27-yard line. That'll be good for another seven or eight yards. So New England on the march with the lead, 17 to seven. Again, Dick, I can't help but comment on the fact that they have so much to work for. Second down and three for New England. 
Soldier Field, Chicago. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olson. The New England Patriots leading all the way. Have a 17-7 lead against the Chicago Bears. Patriots with a second and three at the 27 of Chicago. Don Calhoun blasts up the middle, and it appears he has the first down. A couple of fumbles early by Chicago in the first quarter, and the Patriots scored on a Grogan to Morgan pass, and then Grogan to Harold Jackson of 19 yards, led 14-0. The only Bears score in the second quarter, Bob Abilene, 54 yards to Dave Williams to make it 14-7 at the half. 21-yard field goal by John Smith, the only score of the third quarter. We have 13 minutes left here in the final period. We saw Ron Earhart, Jim Ringo on the sideline. Have to be pleased with the way the New England Patriots are controlling the football this third quarter. First down carry by Horace Ivory. He's outside. He's at the 10. He is in the end zone for a touchdown. Horace Ivory. Horace Ivory. Matching the number on his uniform. 23 yards for the score. We talked earlier about the speed that Ivory reintroduces to this fine team. Breaking to the outside. He gets a little block there but just uses his great acceleration down the sideline, dives into the end zone. And it's not a touchdown, although one official signaled such. He was out of bounds at the three. So no touchdown. It's first and goal at the three first for down. New England. Goal to go for New England. Ball at the three. I thought the official did signal touchdown, but well. apparently someone else on the sideline said he stepped out at the two-yard line. Two and a half. First and goal for New England. It remains 17-7. Bears get a second shot to stop him here. Well, Grogan trying to surprise with a pass. Almost intercepted by Gary Fensick. Oh, that kid from Yale is everywhere. Grogan's pass. Going to take a look at it from the side. Looking away. See if his foot touches the sideline. The official right on the sideline. Number three. You see the official right there? The official at the far end. Going to call it. Keep it going, Continue guys. on, guys, if we can. can. Whoops, can. can't Not do it. Tape. Well, anyway, the one signal touchdown, but the other one watching the feet knew that he'd hit the sideline, brought the ball back. Second and goal at the two and a half. Ivory can't make it. Here's a Grogan there after the pass. He wants Ivory to get the touchdown that he almost scored, and the Bears are right there. Muck and Sturm, 58, spearheaded the charge. Along with 59, Campbell, 99, Dan Hampton. Going back to that first play, the missed pass to number 81, Francis. You see Ivory coming off there, apparently banged his knee, hopefully not the one he'd heard before. But I was looking at Hasselbeck. He was standing all alone in the end zone. And one of the one of Grogan's problems, he likes a receiver. He goes to him first. And he did not see Hasselbeck standing all by himself saying, hey, hey, nobody around me. Nobody loves me. Third and goal at the four. Pete Brock in motion. Grogan rolling, there he is, Francis, touchdown. All alone, the giant tight end, Russ Francis. Good humor man as well, said, want to shake my hand? I'm all world. Another quick look at it, they brought Pete Brock from the wing position in motion, a little play action fake. They must have picked somebody off there, either that or they had a defensive mistake because Francis was all by himself. Grogan's third touchdown throw goes to Francis. Mr. All-World says, hey, you want to meet a star? How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy. Yes, he is. He's John Smith to try the extra point. Matt Cavanaugh's hold. Right down the middle. Flag oh. is down, and that's going to be against the Bears. Now, here's the case that we had earlier where they'll take the extra point, and the penalty will be tacked on the ensuing kickoff, and Smith uh -oh. appears to be hurt. And Smith is down with... Why would you want to try again if the kick was good? Well, they're not going to. They're just signaling good. Let's watch it. Uh, you see John Smith approaching the kick. Is that Page? That is. Alan Page coming from the inside, just diving. Ran into the kicker. They'll, they'll charge the penalty here on the kickoff. Probably be a five yard penalty. And the Bears in trouble. 12 minutes left. They trail 24 to 7. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may we turn your attention to the commissioner's box, which is located at the first base end of the Pirates' dugout. Today's ceremonial first pitch will be made by the former Pirate second baseman, Bill Mazeroski. 19 years ago yesterday, 
He hit the home run at Ford Field, which won the 1960 World Series over the New York Yankees. And that's appropriate. Mazeroski with a home run to win it in 60, and the Pirates need a few miracles beginning today. Jim Rooker, today's Pirate pitcher. Howard talked to Jim earlier. Jim, what a spot they've got you in. It's the last stand, and you've got to save. Well, that's true. Uh, seems like there are a lot of Indians around and no help in sight, but uh, there aren't too many people maybe that can be put in this position, but I, I welcome the challenge, and I'm real happy about it. Uh, it's just a matter of going out and doing my job and hoping things turn out right. You seem to be throwing better than you have in a long time if your performance in the first game is any yardstick. Is that true? I believe so. I've, I've gone through a lot of, in, of injuries this year and been on the disabled list a couple of times. And uh, I think I'm probably more, uh, or at least at this point, a lot healthier now than I was during the course of the season. So I think that with the fact that I haven't had to pitch that much this year probably uh, has allowed me to be a little bit stronger at this time of the year as opposed to somebody that's maybe pitched a lot of games, a lot of innings, and uh, maybe not be quite as strong. What's your best pitch, Jim? Well, I'm basically a controlled pitcher. I'm not going to overpower anybody and uh, strike out a lot of hitters, so I've got to just uh, get all of my pitches over the plate, stay around the plate, and basically really stay on top of the hitters. I can't afford to get behind on these uh, Oriole hitters like the rest of our staff really has been doing as of late. Jim Rooker, who worked in relief in game one in Baltimore. The start in game five, the Pirates out on the field. Defensively today, it's Bill Robinson getting the start in left field, again because of the left-hander going for Baltimore, Flanagan. Omar Marino is in center. He hasn't stolen the base in the series. Neither have the Pirates. And Dave Parker over and right. Parker 7 for 17. At third base, Bill Madlock made a key error yesterday and also turned in a fine play at third. And off and on series thus far for Madlock with Tim Foley at shortstop with three hits in game number four. Talk about off and on series. There's a key example. Phil Garner at second base. Problems defensively, but Garner with seven hits and 14 trips to the plate. And of course, at first, the captain of the Bucks. Number eight is number one in Pittsburgh, Willie Stargell. Back of the plate, Steve Nikosha again in the platoon arrangement with Ott cashing against the right-handers and Nikosha in the lineup against the lefties and 37-year-old Jim Rooker on the mound. Rooker is 37. He has an 18-year-old son, David, who is a freshman at the University of Arizona and figures to be the Wildcats starting third baseman. Rucker, a surprising starter. Everybody figuring that Chuck Tanner would opt for Bruce Keeson, who was the starter in game number one. The Orioles going with basically the same lineup they went with the other night against the lefty Candelaria. The only change would be in the middle where they have flip-flopped to Cincy and Renicky. But the same cast of characters that provided the impetus initially in the 8-4 to four win in game number three and here was the man who was the big hero in game number three with four runs batted in had two more rbis yesterday kiko garcia garcia ayala and singleton to start it off in game number five garcia celebrating his 26th birthday today it's a family affair his dad alfonso is 54 his uncle louis is 52 today here we go game five. Oh, and one account the umpires, an American League umpire at the plate today. Jim McKean, Paul Rungi of the National League at first. Jerry Newdecker, American second. Bob Engel, National at third. Russ Getz, American left field line. Terry Tate, a national. Down the line and right. Oh, and to the count. Well, you had to be impressed with Jim Rooker on the opening night of the series. When he came on, he worked three and two-thirds innings, allowed just two hits, and he threw well. He was well in command. He had a good curveball and he had a good fastball. He can be a little sneaky fast. Jim, he's got a nice, easy motion. That fastball can get on you a little bit. Foul away. I liked what Rucker said because he was admitting the differences between the two staffs in that interview he did with me. I've got to keep the ball around the plate. I can't give anything away. Let them walk. It's told in the statistics of the series, maybe the most telling statistic. 
I'll continue right after Rucka makes this pitch. All right, I'll continue now. 19 birds have walked. Only eight bucks have walked, Don. Well, you can't afford to be giving up all those free passes, especially in a World Series. You know, the big thing, uh, walks are going to be part of the game, but if you can minimize your walks and you might maybe have an average of two a game, that is, that's a good game for anybody. Now, whether that's one pitcher or your whole staff, if you start getting up into the five and sixes and you're in trouble. Two and two of the count on Garcia. Rooker used to be a very deliberate worker. He was pitching well early this season and thought one of the reasons was he had speeded up the tempo. Hit in the air down the right field line and curling and going foul back out of play. So the count stays two and two on Garcia. There's a guy out there that just picked up that ball Dave Parker. He is playing and he is not a hundred percent. He has got the bad knee. He went into the fence yesterday to to grab a fly ball. He's got a bad shoulder but I'll tell you he's still going strong. He's still a threat. The Bucks, though, as I said before they have not put it all together in this series and even to a man they have come out and said that. This is not our ball club. People have not seen our ball club yet. Fouled back two and two. Well, you made an effective point in your opening when you talked about the Bucks' failure with men on bases. Look, thus far in this series, the Bucks are hitting for a 329 average. The Birds for only 266. However, with men on bases in scoring position, thank you very much. Uh, the Birds are hitting 289. The Bucks only 243. Another telling statistic. Broken bat looper and Rooker makes the catch of basket catch. Last time we saw that was 54 with Mays off works <laughs> over the shoulder. Now there's a play if Rooker doesn't make that play. I don't believe they get Garcia. But I said before Jim started off in his professional careers. We look at it again and good instincts right here. He was a former outfielder in the Tiger organization and he makes the play and he makes it look easy but a very good heads up play by Rooker. Here is Benny Ayala making his second start in the series. Two for two against Candelaria the other night, a single and then a home run. In the meantime, did you hear Earl Weaver tell me in the pregame show? Tall ball. That he left started up. He talked about how little was left on his bench. He left started up dead yesterday. He said, Ayala might as well leave the pitcher up against the right hander. <laughs> uh, well, there's a man right there that he's got the whole baseball world confused. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Doing one again on Ayala. I have never seen more baseball people shaking their head and trying to figure out Earl Weaver than I did yesterday after the game when we went over to the ABC hospitality place. Bouncer to short. Tim Foley. Two down. Uh, you know, one thing about the Orioles, Weaver contending that he uses everybody, and certainly he has proven that. He's proven that in the first four games. Every Oriole has gotten into the first four games of the series, and interestingly, all but one of the Pirates, only Dave Roberts, has not worked for Pittsburgh. Well, both of these managers, why, they're firm believers. They will platoon, both of them, as we see this afternoon, and they go to their bench a lot. They, they take advantage of all 25 men. Ken Singleton looks at a strike. 90 miles an hour, the last pitch from Rucker. That's not bad for a man yeah. that's been on the disabled list twice this year. There's a change, missing outside. Kenny, 7 for 17, hitting 4 12 in the series, but he's not that happy with the series he's having because of three important strikeouts. What and two the count. It's only knocked in two runs in the series, Don. Well, Ken had an interesting statement you told me about this morning when they were talking about the managerial moves of Earl Weaver. Fly ball to center field. Omar Moreno will handle this one. And an auspicious beginning for Pittsburgh as Ripper sets the Orioles down in order after a half. In game five, it's Baltimore nothing. And the Pirates come it up. <laughs>
Rider NFL 79 with all the scores and highlights with Brian and Mike after our game here from Soldier Field in Chicago. Those are the lovely Honey Bears for the Chicago Bears. And, and that uh, line, Ted Albrecht, the left tackle, starting left tackle from California for Chicago. He's formed the Teddy Bears and to applaud his efforts there. We'll tell you about that in a moment. The wind blows it off the tee for John Smith after the five-yard penalty. Uh, Albrecht has started a, a nice thing, a club at the Shriners Hospital for children here in Chicago called the Teddy Bear Club. And they have their own secret handshake, and uh, he goes and talks with the kids, and it's kind of a follow-up from his days, the East-West Shrine game out in San Francisco. And it's a nice way of giving back. Spirals that one down and through wow. the end zone. That was an unusual kick. Now we're happy to see John Smith back there to kick that one. We certainly would not uh, have wanted to see him hurt. He was knocked down pretty good by Ellen Page on that extra point with the extra yardage on the five yard tack on. Put it out of the end zone. You hear the Bear fans expressing a little bit of displeasure with their offensive team. Mike Phipps is the new quarterback. Phipps, number 15, is in for Bob Abilene. And the fans booing, uh, they wanted the football after it was kicked into the crowd. Used to be you kept the ball. Got expensive like everything else. <laughs> Phipps taking charge of the Bears, trailing 24-7 with 12 minutes left. Trying to throw on his first play, and he hits Robin Earl. And he's out to the 28-yard line for a gain of eight. Doug Bedoin, 27. Safety from Minnesota made the stop. Phipps. From Purdue, a school that's produced Len Dawson to the NFL and to NBC. The young quarterback, Herman, who's all-American potential there now. Led his team to victory yesterday. Came here to Chicago from the Cleveland Browns in 1977 for number four and a number one draft pick. He was uh, second in the Heisman balloting back in 69. Phipps, second down and two. Walter Payton, no room anywhere. Outside, inside, and just could not find daylight. It'll be third and three. Sam Hunt, number 50, made the tackle. As you look at Neil Armstrong, he'll send in the play. It's called down to Armstrong, then he'll pass it on to Greg Latta, and Latta will take it to the huddle. Let's look at the Buddha. He weighs about 260 pounds right now, always listed at about 245, but he hits Payton right head on. And then 59, Hawkins just comes in and finishes it off. But it's been a long afternoon for Walter Payton, and an afternoon he couldn't do much about. He has uh, just been running constantly into those red and white jerseys. Flirting with a delay of game penalty, and now Phipps is going to call time, or will they take the five? Yeah, they had to call time. There is no way they're going to get the penalty or the playoff, and there again, Merlin, and by the time they had to make the decision in the press box, it goes through the head coach. He may want to change it. Then he has to pass it on to the messenger, and it gets into the huddle too long a time. Dick, it becomes especially difficult when a quarterback has not played that much, and Phipps has not played for quite a while. So the timeout in Chicago, 10 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. New England 24, Chicago 7. Well, Tim, the Lions game plan working to a T. They've had the ball almost five minutes driving all the way from their 10 yard line down to the Packers 28 29 yard line slot formation left Freddie Scott in the slot for the Lions who are on the move in Packer territory got in motion Scott has it Estes Hood on the tackle and Kamala was going to him all the way a gain of about eight on the play let's see where they mark it it'll be about second and two all right, they're bringing Scott in motion from the slot left side, which gives them man coverage on the Packers. Fine throw by Comlo. Good play to start out with. Roman, how much do you expect him to pick on Hood, who is, uh, while he's a second-year man, is really effectively a rookie replacing Willie Buchanan since gone to San Diego? I tell you, Tim, anytime you got a guy that hasn't had much experience, you got to go after him. It is second and about four, three and a half. Tomlo looking for Leonard Thompson incomplete and it was hood on the coverage. He had a little help from the linebacker Gary Weaver that time. All right, let's take a look at what Dave Hill has to do other than catch passes. Here they have him on a slow block. He's working on Robert Barber, number 70, fine position. Dave Hill might have a future as an offensive tackle when he's no longer able to catch passes. <laughs> 6'2", 230 pounds. We mentioned he came into this game with a shoulder injury suffered last week. There was some question as 
whether he'd uh, be able to play, but obviously he's a competitor. He's out there. Third and a long two for the Lions. Kamlo's got time. Got Washington first down. Mike McCoy on the tackle. They're going to mark it inside the 10 yard line. This has been an impressive opening drive by the Detroit Lions here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. I think we're going to see the Lions. We're going to see this kind of play more often today. Going to Gene Washington, who, as we mentioned earlier, had only caught four passes. Fine protection by that offensive line. Good route by Washington. Third down has been a problem area for the Packers, giving it up 51% of the time. The uh, diagnosis on Bo Robinson is bruised ribs. Whether he'll be back, we'll wait and see. Dexter Bussey inside the 10, got only a yard and a half on the play before Mike Butler, fine young defensive end from Kansas, pulled him down the first pick in 77. When Butler and Ezra Johnson are healthy, the Packers are in excellent shape at defensive end. They've got two outstanding young players who can only get better. Here you go, Tim. Final, the Giants 32, San Francisco 16. A winning streak. There is Bo Robinson. Rookie running back for the Lions. Gain of less than a yard as it turned out. It'll be second and nine. Horace King trying to pick his way behind Bollinger and Dorney. Rick Wingo and Charles Johnson were the men to stop him. He got a couple. They're going to mark it at about the six-yard line. So the Packers getting tough in close to their own goal line. Third and goal at the six. We might see the Lions try to go on top on a little what we call a pop streak. Both wide receivers flaring out to the corner. The Packers are in a bump and run situation. Slot left. Ready shot on the slot. They have split back. Packer over the line was the rookie linebacker Wingo anticipating the count a little too eagerly. Did not appear to be drawn, and we're going to guess that the infraction is against Green Bay. I'll tell you, the Packers come up here with a safety blitz, and number 50, the linebacker, middle linebacker, Wingo, jumps off sides. Good heady poise by Kamlo, going to the three count again, drawing them off sides when they need it badly. Leonard Thompson goes out. Freddie Scott in for the Lions, running the plays into Kamlo. Encroachment. Contact before the snap, 5-0 defense, third down. That is the Alabama rookie, Rich Wingo, who got the starting job over Mike Hunt when he was hurt. And uh, there are some in Green Bay who said Wingo might have won that spot anyway. So with uh, Hunt and Wingo, they've got two outstanding young performers. Middle linebacker when they're healthy. This is a growing team. It's going to be a good one not in the not-too-distant future for Green Bay fans. Meanwhile, third and goal now inside the five at the three. Horace King, did he get it? There's no arms up except on the part of Lions players. Stop short, but not by much. That's a tough call, three yards to make, Tim, unless you're figuring on going on a four down basis. Three yards to go for a touchdown up the middle on a goal line situation, very difficult. Here comes Lawrence Gaines, number 38, into the backfield with the play for Kamlo. Out goes Horace King. Now Leonard Thompson comes in at wide receiver. And out goes Luther Blue, and Thompson brings in another play. <laughs> they gave him two. <laughs> Is that a choice he's getting there, Roman? Pick I think up the one you like? I think they really want this touchdown bad. <laughs> Horace. popped him. Charles Johnson, the defensive tackle, was there as well. And the Packers stopped the Lions right at the goal line. Now let's take a look at it here, Tim. Kamlo hands off just straight over the middle. Fine play in there by the linebackers and Charles Johnson. What a play by the Green Bay Packers. held the ball 545 but did not score which I don't think it's good to hold the ball and not get some kind of points right so the Raiders will take it over at their own 21 with Kenny Stabler the quarterback and we'll check out the rest of the lineup in just a second see if they go with the double tight end lineup and yes they do and both of them are on the 
same side. Chester up on the line. Casper behind him on the flank. Mark Van Egan gets the carry the first time. The Falcons with a good looking drive after they received the kickoff, but no points. Van Egan now, if he picked up four yards on this straight shot, moves past Marv Hubbard into the second place all-time rushing list for the Oakland Raiders. Here's that offensive line. Casper, of course, Art Shell, Upshaw, the old-timers there again, and healthy. Dalby at center, he's as good as there is. Sylvester Lawrence, and another tight end named Raymond Chester. The wide receiver, the lone one, is Rich Martini, Stabler, Jensen, Van Egan. The backfield. That is Derek Jensen. Fulton Kuykendall made the tackle for the Atlanta defense, and we'll run that defense down right now. Yates, Farmerino, the big tackle, Edgar Fields, and Don Smith, the rookie from down Florida, where he's playing so well. The fine linebackers, Kuykendall, Pennywell, and Greg Brezina, the veteran. And the secondary, Lawrence, Bias, Frank Reed, and Ray Easterling. But Bias and Lawrence are 5'9 and 5'10 at the corners, and that's pretty short. Rich Martini splits out wide to the right, out of your picture at the moment, and the Raiders lined up with a tight end on each side. They give to Van Egan. With his shoulder lowered, he hits Fulton Kuykendall, and down he goes. One of the big missing factors for Stabler's offense this year, of course, with all the injuries, has been a rushing game. They've been averaging, like, what, 91 yards and 26 carries a game, and that just won't do it. You just can't drop back and pass all the time and, and keep the momentum or ball possession. They've got to get the rushing game going. Looks like he's trying to do it. It'll be second and seven for Stabler. They say that he hasn't lost any weight, that he weighs just the same amount as he did last year, but he certainly looks a lot trimmer. Number 12. This will be his first pass attempt. Got it. Around Martini. Rich Martini tackled first by Ray Easterling. Raymond Chester ran the out pattern. Watch this now. You'll see the pocket form. Let's see what Staber does. He's never been the niftiest quarterback in the pocket. He just throws the cleanest darn pass. You have to work very hard to drop a Stabler pass. Hooked up was young Martini, who's out of California, Davis. Uh, did you know where that school was, Patrick? I would assume it's located in Davis. Very good. New York Giants beat San Francisco 32 to 16, their second win. And we'd like to welcome those of you who watched that contest to the open Alameda County Coliseum, where the Atlanta Falcons Visiting the Oakland Raiders, Frank Reed was the injured Falcon, and he has departed. Place taken by Bob Glazebrook. Giants got their second win, makes their record two and five now. San Francisco goes to 0 and seven. Atlanta's not supposed to be as prone to the blitz. They've been burned a little bit in a couple of games this year. Uh, let's see if we get one pretty quick. Ooh, got one there. Mark Van Egan. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's <laughs> it. Captain Crunch, right? Kuykendall, watch 54 come across. This is their attack defense. This is great, unless the team that's on the offensive side prepares for it and dumps off. And if you get everybody blitzing and dump it, you can have some big gainers, especially the tight ends like Oakland has. Brezina made the tackle after Captain Crunch. Mr. Kuykendall stripped the interference. He just got married a couple of weeks ago, you know. Who did? Crunch. Stabler drops on second down. Lots of time. That is Raymond Chester, and he struggles. Breaks a couple of tackles to get the first down for the Raiders. Much to the delight of this sellout crowd. The 30th catch of the year for Raymond Chester. He's six foot four, 230 pounds. Always had great speed. And was a great blocker. Watch this. Good pass protection. And Snake lays it right on tough after the catch. He took a hiatus and left Oakland, went to Baltimore, and suddenly comes back home. This is where he belongs, I think. He punched right through the tackle of Rick Bias and Ronald Lawrence to get that first down for the Raiders. Line of scrimmage. The Atlanta 41. First and 10, Oakland. Van Egan punches straight ahead. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Van Egan's coming off three straight years of a thousand yards or more. One of those Colgate fellas. 
hard worker, huh? Game after game and year after year. Second and five. Doesn't seem like he's gaining that many yards, but he always seems to. Stabler looking and finding Raymond Chester after he had to do a little dance. Fulton Kuykendall made the tackle on Chester. All right, watch, uh, watch uh, Casper now. He clears out to the right of your screen, and he delays coming out. Now he's dragging people that otherwise wouldn't bother with him, the linebackers. And Kuykendall, as quickly as he tries to cover it, he can't catch Chester from behind. And it looks to me like uh, Snake Stabler is right on tonight. He looks very, very good. It is third and one, and indeed he does look very, very good. Three out of three, in fact. Sam Egan inside the 30 and up for an Oakland Raider first down. Rollin Lawrence made the tackle. Oh, any quarterback will tell you, get the rushing game going, the rest of it will come. Short yardage, Lawrence, the little cornerback, has to come up and make the tackle. You get that rushing game going, Staber can do anything to you. Lights have been turned on since the teams came out to warm up. Sort of a broken, cloudy day as you look at Lehman Bennett. Assisted with the Rams and a head coach in Atlanta. First down, and this time it's Derek Jensen. And he is down inside the 25 to about the 23. Edgar Fields was the first man in red to hit him. Jensen got good yardage. And Tom Flores has a pretty good attack. This time, both tight ends were to the left. Chester was sort of the up back, the wing back, and they ran right to the strong side. Good blocking on that side. Watch the right of your screen now. Upshaw, Shell, they'll pull out and try to screen everybody. And Edgar Fields had to come from inside the formation to make that tackle. A lot of pursuit, though, by Atlanta. It'll be second down for Oakland. He needs six. Oh. Jensen again. We got about three. Robert Honeywell. Ray Easterling. The Atlanta tacklers. That's what Jensen has done so far this year. They've lost, of course, uh, Whittington, and uh, they lost Charlie Davis before the season even started. He retired with a bad knee. Uh, Robisky they lost. Robisky. And, of course, they lost Stewart and also Bradshaw, two very quick receivers. And now, of course, Cliff Branch is out. What it amounts to is they're going with a two tight end, two fullback offense. Stabler. Throws under pressure, and he was hit just as he let it go, and the ball went far over the head of the intended receiver. Now We'll get a look at Breach. I believe, Breach. I believe that was Wilson Famuena, the big Samoan that may have deflected that or hit Staber's arm. He knocked Staber down and then helped him up. Watch number 12 now. Pretty fair pass blocking, but a good rush. Yeah, Famuena's coming over the top. This little fella, he is the, maybe the shortest player in the league, Pat, would you say, at five, what? Five, five seven, 155. California, David Hum will hold at the 30, so this will be a 40-yard effort. He's five of six up to 40 yards. That one will get there. And be good. Raiders break on top. A 40-yard field goal. We're with Merlin Olsen and a great double header next Sunday on NBC. Miami and New England, probably for first place in the East, will be out in Los Angeles. Two great football games. I know people around the country are going to tune in for a long afternoon of Real football pleasure. Starting with NFL 79 at 12.30. The Bears have the ball. Mike Phipps, the quarterback, third down and three. Scrambling for his life, and down he goes. Another sack for the Patriots. Their first of this half, four in the game. And now 29 for the year. Sugar Bear Ray Hamilton strapped up that right thigh and said, I'll still get you. Sugar Bear going with that bad pin, but you had tremendous well, pressure from all you. four defensive linemen. Ron Earhart greeting his defense as they come off the field to give them a little congratulation. Munsford, number 72, 71, Sugar Bear Hamilton, 56, Rod Schultz. They have played exceptional football today. Morgan solo safety back at his 43. Parsons. Yeah, it's low. He scuffed one. Low line drive, oh, dark catch at the 42. Steve Schubert right there to force Morgan into that fair catch, but the Patriots good field position, leading 24 to 7, 40 yards on the kick. Ten minutes left, fourth quarter. 
fans here in Chicago feeling as if it's uh, too big a lead for New England. As we go to the bottom of the first inning with no score, a look at the Pirate lineup. And Omar Marino to stand in. Marino and Parker, the left-handers in the lineup, against the lefty Flanagan. First pitch of strike. Don, you started to make the point about Singleton and Weaver in the bottom top well, of the first. How well, was commenting on that? Kenny said, in response to all the talk about Earl and his magic, beauty, beauty. Took something off that, as you saw. Kenny said, sure, Earl makes the moves, but we're the guys who execute. We're the ones who deserve the credit. Well, that's exactly what Weaver said in the pregame show interview, Al. One and two the count. Yeah, but you know, Earl might be a little self-effacing, I think. <laughs> he deserves a lot of, look at the defense for the Orioles with Bumbrey out of the lineup. So Renicki gets the start in center field by in left, Singleton in right. Dower getting the start today at second base. As Marino goes down swinging. One away. Now four runs were chalked up as you look at this again, Don. Here's just a good, hard Jim breaking Culley. pitch right here. Moreno just outmatched with this pitch. Good location. Weaver stayed with Flanagan, for which Weaver, an example of what you were talking about, Weaver and Weaver alone deserves the credit in the first game of the series. But he pointed out, and rightly so, Flanagan only gave up two earned runs. A strike. Exactly. And there were so many situations in that game where you thought toward the end he would come out. It was 5 nothing at one point, and of course it wound up 5-4 with the tying run stranded at third. One and one. Well, you look at Earl during the series, Howard. He's the hero in game one, goat in game two in a sense. Yeah, when he didn't bunt Lowens. No. Right. And he's been the hero ever since. You bet. 1-1 one, one pitch. The strike in the count one and two. Flanagan with a 91 mile an hour fastball. One two pitch to Tim Foley. Checks in time. Pitch missing inside. Two and two. That's a pitch right there that Flanagan can get right handers out on. He's got a good hard fighting curveball that he can bring it right down into the knees and just below the knees. He's got a good downward break to it. Two two pitch is hit foul outside first. You do an interview with Earl, you've got to piece apart every word because he knows what he's saying in the context and perspective of the whole league. Hit the center field. Renicky coming on and makes the catch. He hesitated at first. Well, left field is his normal position and best. But recently, he's been playing in center, and he is on balance a good defensive outfield. Notice when Earl was talking about Flanagan. To amplify what I was talking about, Don, he said Mike had voted the best curveball in the league until Gidry came up with that slider. So you know he's always thinking about the whole league. Well, he's got it pretty well in perspective. He won more games than anybody in baseball, 102. Dave Parker takes up high ball one. Parker with four hits in game number one off Flanagan. Fouled away. It's interesting that both number three hitters, Parker and Singleton, coming into the game, exactly the same stats. As we remind you tonight, it's the Rams against Dallas in a big one. Special Sunday edition. And then tomorrow, the regular Monday night edition. Monday night football. First time ever from New York as the Minnesota Vikings take on the Jets. Both games at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight and tomorrow. Well, as I've said, the Rams and the Cowboys, as good a matchup as you can get in the National Football Conference. The Rams beginning to put things together, always with a great defense. Hobbled somewhat tonight by the absence of offensive lineman John Williams and their two wide receivers. We'll be giving you today's NFL scores very soon. One ball, one strike on Parker with two out and the bases empty in the first inning. Popped up in foul ground. The sensei coming over, but might have a play and just runs out of room in the second row. 
I asked Dave what he was going to do to improve on the four hits. He got off Flanagan the first time around. He said get four more, two of them three-run homers. He and Singleton, the same stats, each with seven hits and 17 trips to the plate coming in. Neither has homered in the series, and each with two runs batted in. I think what you said about Singleton, Howard, can be applied to Parker. He's hit well, but he really hasn't been that instrumental offensively. More particularly about Willie Stargell. That's right, Stargell, seven for 18. There have been five key situations where Stargell has failed with men on base in this series. Willie's well aware of them. And down goes Parker. So Flanagan strikes out two in the inning. Each side out in order. We go to the second. Baltimore nothing, Pittsburgh nothing. <laughs> Chicago, 10 minutes left. The Patriots with a ball. See, Dr. Bill Lenkaitis is uh, very valuable properties in those hands. Drogan's had a good day, and he's going long and has a man open. Westbrook, Don Westbrook, open downfield, but just a bit too long was Drogan on the throw. For Westbrook. Talking to Bill Lenkaitis. Uh, for the game, Hannah was sitting there and Hannah was talking about the two dislocated fingers and uh, Len Kytus said, well, it's one thing for you to have those dislocated fingers, but Len Kytus is a dentist. He said, if my fingers go out, he said, there goes the practice. He so see Grogan getting that pass away, as you said, overthrown, and he was very upset with himself about that. Grogan 19 for 30 and three touchdowns, two interceptions today, after he was replaced last week by Tom Owen. Rogan dumps it out to Calhoun, run the run, 40, 45, and finally wrapped up at the 47-yard line. Short of the first down, it'll be third, and about five. Campbell and Plank in on the tackle. It's a quiet Bears bench at the moment. Very quiet, and uh, you know, you talked about the renovation of this uh, Soldier's Field. When I played my first game here, it was a Chicago All-Star game, 1962. Instead of benches, they had trenches there. That actually, you actually sat down in a trench. Very dangerous. Uh, somebody get knocked off the sideline, go right down into the pit. And get, we had several people hurt, as a matter of fact, that game. Stan Rod showed as a shoulder injury and will not play any more today. Drogan on third and five to Alan Clark, complete for a first down. The rookie goes out of bounds at the 39. Look at the teammates on the sidelines. Pat Alan Clark, he's a very popular rookie, just a fearless athlete of a college player a halfback he threw the ball as well down at northern Arizona you know, these Patriots have been accused of not having the killer instinct not being able to put their opponent away they appear to have developed some here this afternoon you see Alan Clark they've turned the reserves loose Grogan throwing to one of them right there and he did a fine job of pulling that pass it seemed like all of these running backs catch the football and Clark has his first NFL reception so that was a happy moment for him first down at the Bear 39 Calhoun. Boy, you can hear the pads are popping as he picks up about six down to the 32 yard line. When Grogan hit Clark for that first down, Merlin, that made 12 out of 17 third down conversions for the Patriots. Well, those are tough numbers, and that's a tough defense. Uh, you know, almost two and uh, flip flop games back to back. Last week, uh, the Bears defense only had 49 plays on the field. Well, today, they've been on the field almost all day. And of course, that's the work of a, an offensive team that has controlled the football against them as they did against Buffalo last week. Exactly what the Bears did not want to have happen. They wanted to run the ball, control the ball, keep it away from this powerful New England offense. Francis can't quite get there. Boy, it appeared that at that last step, he was going to latch onto it. He didn't need much longer fingernails to have six. Well, Francis, you could see, you could see that, right? He wanted that football. Had broken free, had the opening. Fensick trying to cover him one-on-one, -on -one, and he got the extra bit of room. That's the advantage, again, of having enough speed in that tight end. And Francis, the, the thing that makes Francis great, he has the ability to block and the size to block on those linebackers. He then has the...
great hands of the receiver and the ability to get deep. You see him beating Fensick deep right there. Well, they were very worried about Francis, were the Bears, and had special defenses to try to stop him. But Drogan's had a good day. That's three touchdowns, not two for him. Alan Clark. And he's close to the first down. The rookie down to about the 28 before Alan Page can make the tackle. Talk a moment about Page, uh, number 82 for the Bears, Merlin, because you can relate to this. Here's a man who played down at Notre Dame as a top draft pick, 260 or so. Now he's playing at 228. How much did you weigh when you broke in after that college all-star game with the Rams? <laughs> I, I admit it to about 280. I think I was about 290. And you uh, finished at what? I finished. I worked down to where I was 260 my last year, Dick. So is that uh, just as you get older, you figure you have to be quicker? And well, you can't carry the weight. The body takes a tremendous beating. And Alan Page, uh, talking to him today, he said that uh, he could feel the difference. As he took the weight off, he gained more quickness. But he had a real problem with the, the coaches. Uh, Minnesota insisted that he put part of it back on. Alan, a very strong-willed player, said, no way. He said, I, I think it's important that I get my weight down. I want to play light. It's one of the reasons that he was turned loose, uh, something that he is still bitter about, his treatment by the Vikings uh, at the end of a very illustrious career there. He said that's something he would never forgive them for. But he's been a great leader here in Chicago. At the build of a wide receiver, long and lean. He really does. And I, we talked about the Greybeard. Well, he's certainly been a valuable addition to the Chicago Bear team. From the 24, second and six, Grogan to throw. And almost a touchdown. A leaping try by Ray Jarvis, number 87, just into the game. He's from Norfolk State. So Grogan with a 24-7 lead, and this is his pattern. He never seems to have enough points. Well, he wanted, he wanted another seven there. Jarvis uh, came to the back to the Patriots. They cut him. He was the last, the last cut of the receivers uh, leaving training camp. And when Carlos Pennywell was hurt, came back and stepped in immediately. Has fine moves, an excellent football player. Patriots, as we said, clearing the bench, giving some of their reserves a chance to play in this game. And Len Kytus at center. Brock and Adams at the guard. Hannah and Jordan the tackle. Francis the tight end. Jarvis and Westbrook the wide receivers. Clark and Calhoun behind Grogan. Third and six from the 24 of the Bears. Blitz! And oh, does Grogan get hit and a flag is down at the 11-yard line and that could be against the Bears. Terry Schmidt. It was thrown after Grogan was down. Watching Grogan take that hit, I've got to ask the question, why is Grogan still in the ballgame? You're up 24 to 7, 651. You've really played well defensively as well as offensively. Uh, you, you really don't want to take a chance with a very expensive piece of commodity like your quarterback. Watch the hit that Grogan takes here. You see Lankaitis trying to come out an option on the outside. He tries to he opens some room inside. That's 59 Campbell just pouring in there and puts the meat right in the middle of Grogan's chest. But there was defensive holding against 44 Terry Schmidt. And instead of the loss in the sack, it's an automatic first down after the five yard penalty. New England at the 19 of Chicago. Clock shows six minutes, 51 seconds remaining. New England ahead, 24 to seven. Miami has won. Here comes Clark. You know, he's built like a bigger Don Nottingham. There's not a lot to grab. Well, and when you run with that kind of abandon, uh, awfully hard to grab him. I think I was talking to the Chicago Bear uh, defensive coach, Buddy Ryan, before the game, and uh, he was describing this New England offense. And we'd said earlier that uh, not, not too difficult for New England's defense to pick out what they had to stop. They had to stop the, uh, the running of Peyton and the uh, catching of Scott. But he said, what do you stop? You look at them, they've got great receivers, they've got great running backs, they've got a quarterback that can run. They really are a tough offensive package to decide where to defense them. Up the Ooh. middle, Calhoun, and that hole closed in a hurry. Peyton has only 42 yards today, so if you stop Peyton, you stop the Bears. That's been the case for New England. Well, if New England wins, and they're less than six minutes from victory. This is how the standings will look tomorrow. Miami, New England tied. They play each other. That's the first game of the doubleheader on NBC next Sunday. Buffalo and the Jets and Baltimore. So Miami, New England, that'll be a great way to start football Sunday and NBC next Sunday. Third down and seven. Oh, look at this Good bootleg. Way. It fooled him completely. Ten and down to the six goes Grogan. Grogan. 
Grogan calling his own plays. I think a little sigh of relief from Ron Earhart on the sideline as he sees Grogan get up all right. I Somehow I don't think uh, Earhart would have called that particular play. Grogan with 125 yards rushing. He's the third leading rusher for the Patriots coming in, and he has 23 today. It is now first and goal for New England inside the Bear Six. Grogan, as you saw, just, uh, he made it, well, uh, he probably had called that one. Sometimes he'll call that kind of play without telling anyone in the huddle. In other words, he'll call the sweep and just fake the handoff and loop out of there all by himself. That way no one tips the hand. That's Alan Clark being trapped and breaks out of the hold of Muckensturm and gets back to the nine yard line where Dan Hampton, 99, made the tackle. Hampton has an interesting story and I'm sure some of you have heard it a time or two, but. Maybe others of you had not. Sixth grade, Hampton fell 45 feet out of a tree in which he was playing, broke his arm and two legs, was in a wheelchair for six months, so he didn't play sports. And in the 11th grade, he was playing a saxophone in the high school band when the coach saw this 230-pound kid and said, wouldn't you like to come out and just try to put on a helmet? Became a great star at Arkansas. Grogan. Incomplete for Francis. Well, he certainly looks for that big number 81 almost Grogan every play. Well, early in his career, Grogan uh, was faulted for staying with his initial receiver far too long. He fixed on a guy, and uh, he was going to get the ball there. Uh, didn't matter what happened. That sometimes had to throw right through defenders to do it. Still has a tendency to gun the ball with that strong arm at times into a crowd, but has developed the ability to switch off to pick up the alternate receivers. And, of course, with his ability to run, I, I don't know if there's a more dangerous quarterback in all of football. And again, I'd have to say when he's hot because he does have some cold days. And, uh, Steve Grogan. Third and goal at the nine yard line. Oops, Pete Brock raised off his three point stance and that'll cause the Patriots five. Stay with us, NFL 79. NFL Report will bring you the scores and some interesting finals today. Well, as highlights, Mike Adam Lee. Brad Gumbel gathering that material for you. So stay tuned for NFL Report here on NBC. Chicago the scene for this contest. The Patriots lead the Bears 24 to 7. New England trying to get more. It's third and goal, 14 yard line. Westbrook 83 left, and Jarvis 87 to the top of your screen. The middle to Calhoun. Far short of the first down, gets it to about the 12. Jim Osborne, the veteran tackle from Southern University, made the stop. So John Smith going to come in for a field goal try as some of the folks starting to make their way toward the freeways here along the lake. Some perhaps headed for those boats parked along the lake. Uh, getting a little chilly. Imagine pretty soon they'll be pulling those out. Leaves falling here in Chicago. Whistle and uh, timeout is called by whom? The Patriots? No, the Bears have Bears. called time with 3.36 left. And Smith about to try a field goal attempt. Don't quite understand that, but uh, would give us a chance to. Uh, we'd have to wonder how George Papa Bear Hallis uh, viewing this one. Obviously, not tremendously happy with what's happened here in this game today. But what a great old man. And, uh, how, how much a part of the history of this game George Hallis is. 84 years young is Mr. Hallis. 40 years coached an NFL team and of course was involved in the formation of what we now know as the National Football League. Well, we have a moment, speaking of the Bear Heritage, I want to show you some numbers. These are the retired numbers of Chicago Bears players of the past. And I think I'm kind of having a little quiz here for you. See how many of those you can relate to. Uh -oh. we, we, talk <laughs> about, we talk about some of the uh, great players in the Chicago Bear organization. Number three has been retired. Hello, number, number three. I, I don't know. Nick. Bronco Nagurski was number okay. three. All right. Number five. McAfee. George, George McAfee. Oh, he was a great yeah, player. 28. Yeah. Willie Gallimore was 28. 41, you know. I know, Gail Sayers. No, 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 no. no. 41. The late Brian, Brian Piccolo. Piccolo. Okay. 40. Sayers was 40, and I guess they did not retire Sayers. No, they That's didn't. Nor Butkus. Smith's field goal is good, and the Patriots have three more and lead 27 to 7. We'll come back and give you the rest of those retired bear numbers. We have 332 remaining in the game. 
<laughs> 27 to 7. Those numbers we got right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Roman, let's see that play again. A big defensive move here by the Green Bay Packers. Let's take a look at it. Tomlo hands off. There's a fine play in there by Barber and Charles Johnson. And there's Wingo and Gray. Gray, the free safety up there to make the stop. They ran it. The only guy that's been there for every game, Charlie Johnson. I still like Monty Clark going for it, though, instead of taking the three. They had driven down the field smartly. He wanted the big six. And even though they came up empty. Torkelson carrying the ball for the first offensive play for the Green Bay Packers this afternoon. The Lions used up 8.50 of the clock with that long drive from the opening Ken kickoff. Sanders Ken Sanders made the, the stop on Torkelson, a gain of two. Yeah, two on the play. Offensively for the Packers, young David Whitehurst at quarterback. The rookie Atkins at the running back spot, Eric Torkelson. Veteran running back replacing the injured Barty Smith. Boston and other Thompson, the wide receivers. Paul Kaufman, the tight end. Second and eight. Setbacks line up in the end zone. This is Atkins trying the left side, and he shut down. Doug English, number 78, outstanding defensive tackle. Got some help from the linebacker, John Brooks. Well, let's take a look at this play. I tell you, it's difficult to run against the Lions. In the last couple of weeks, they've really come on strong. Fine play by Ed O'Neill, who's come off the bench the last three weeks to play great middle linebacker. There is young Jeff Comlow, the Delaware quarterback. And I gave a wrong statistic that the Lions fans looking at probably picked up on. The Packers lead the long-time series over the Lions. 51 wins, 39 defeats, seven ties. Flag down, and the whistle blows before the contact is made. On third and long for Green Bay, trying to come out from the shadow of their goal line after their outstanding goal line stand. I think the Green Ball Bay offensive lineman. Offense. A couple of the Packers' offensive line getting off a little early. Difficult place to start your first series from, isn't it? You bet. That's uh, that's tough country down there trying to come straight ahead. Defensively for Detroit, an ex-Packer number 75, Dave Purifoy on the left side. and the other end, Big Al Baker. Sanders, a former defensive end, playing inside for the injured John Woodcock, along with English. The linebackers, the rookie Brooks, the veterans O'Neill and Weaver. And the secondary, Walt Williams, Luther Bradley on the corner, Doug Jones and Jimmy Allen. James Hunter is out with a calf injury. Can play today, but is tender. So Allen has moved to free safety. Doug Jones is that strong safety. Third down. Ten yards to go. All kinds of motion again. It looked like the pack moved off early. Looked to me like somebody was starting to pull left, and uh, that drew the Lions over. Let's see how Ball the referee sees it. Offense. He saw it the same way. Tim, these are the kind of mistakes that teams with the record that the Lions and the Packers have make, and we're seeing it again this week. Ball start, moving before the snap, 69 offenses, third down. And a second-year man, Leotis Harris, pulling guard from the right side, number 69. Second-year man from Arkansas who beat out Mel Jackson, the veteran for that guard position this season. They are practically in their end zone. Atkins digs his way out to the two-yard line. Brooks was there, number 53, the linebacker to make the tackle, and Green Bay will punt. Lions are going to get good field position again. Second series of downs for the Lions. They'll have should have real excellent field position. The lead man, Calicut, number 31. And Allen, or Ken Ellis, number 48. And they're standing at the 45-yard line. David Beverly gets it away. Not a bad punt. And it's been touched and then grabbed by Ellis. And he's dropped back inside Detroit territory by John Thompson, the rookie tight end from Utah State. Tough break for the Lions there. It turned out not badly. They're well out of midfield, but they could have been fairly deep into the Packers zone. We're scoreless in the first period. No 
England with a 27 to 7 lead at Soldier Field Chicago over the Bears rest of the numbers 41 was Brian Piccolo 42 Sid Luckman 56 another Hall of Famer Bill Hewitt at 61. I know about 51. I'm no, 661 is the one. 51 is not retired. That's a mistake. It's 61. Oh, 61. All right. 61. You played with him. I played with Bill George, great Bill middle linebacker. And what a what a fantastic football player he was. 66 was Bulldog Turner, and of course 77 Red Grange. The rookie Ricky Watts returns the kickoff to the 29-yard line, where the Bears, with three minutes and 22 seconds left, are in that unenviable position. Whether the rock hits the melon or the melon hits the rock, it's not good for the melon. And that's about where they stand, trailing by almost three touchdowns. Don't forget next Saturday, the big heavyweight championship fight from South Africa. Two unbeaten fighters, John Tate of the U.S., Harry Coetzee from South Africa. Four o'clock Eastern time, live from Pretoria, South Africa. Well, that'll be an interesting fight. And Coetzee, he can hammer. Great right hand. Mike Ooh. Phipps oh, oh. under pressure. Oh, my. It's Greg Latta, 35, 40, 45, 50, and finally bumped out of bounds at the New England 46-yard line. Mark Washington, number 46 in the game for New England, bumped him out of bounds. Talk about pressure. Tony McGee, they're running a stunt there. Tony McGee coming to the inside, absolutely running over people. Phipps throwing under tremendous pressure, puts it right on target. Good shot right there. He comes down the sideline. Latta takes the ball, picks up some fine yardage there before they finally drove, drive him out. That's Rick Sanford, number 25, a first-round draft pick, putting him out of bounds. First down at the 46. Bears Phipps replacing Bob Avellini. He's throwing for Scott, incomplete. Mark Washington doing a good job of shielding the ball from the receiver by leaping in front of him, and it went right through his hands. 3.09 left. Bears fell behind 14-0 in the first quarter. We got the long touchdown play from Avellini to Dave Williams, 54 yards in the second quarter. It was 14-7 at the half. Field goal by Smith in the third quarter. But here in the fourth period, a couple of New England touchdowns. And Steve Grogan's club all but salting it away. It would be 5-2 New England. Miami already 5-2. See the obvious contentment of Steve Grogan as he rides that very comfortable 20-point lead into the final moments of this game. Second and ten, screen, incomplete. In fact, it went right through the hands of Noah Jackson, 65. Jackson instinctively started to catch it, said, wait a minute. I can't do that. That's uh, <laughs> Shot right here. They're turning loose these defensive linemen. And boy, I don't know whether I'd want to do that this late in the game because they're just leaned out. You see Julius Adams, 85, right there on top of him. And, of course, the... Offensive lineman not allowed to touch that football. That's an eligible receiver. Loss of down and a minus 10. That's the toughest of the penalties. There's Daryl Stingley and Steve Grogan, men that collaborated. And of course, Russ Francis and the, the true affection that these New England Patriots have for their now handicapped. Wide receiver Stingley injured in that game in Oakland a year ago. Marvelous man. Uh, now lives here in Chicago and seeing his team for the second time. Of course, he was out in uh, Foxborough for the opener that Monday night game against Pittsburgh. It was the second time he's seen him in person. He's got to be much happier with the outcome of this game. And of course, a uh, game that uh, was not a very happy, did not have a happy ending for the New England Patriots. There was a nice moment when Stanley Morgan, who caught the first touchdown pass of the game, ran off the field and handed the ball to Daryl Stingley, almost as if to say, gee, I wish that would have been you and not me. Phipps to Latta. Get immediately at the 47 by Mike Haynes, number 40. <laughs> now the ball was out of bounds. It dropped right in front of Haynes, and he dropped on the football. We talked a, a little bit earlier about the talent of this New England team. When they run five defensive backs, and we won't see it right now because they have uh, Tim Fox out of the game, Doug Bedoin in. But they can have uh, four number one draft picks in that defensive backfield at the same time. I don't, I can never remember another team drafting that kind of talent for a defensive backfield. There you see Fox. He's one of the number ones right there. You're what a great hitter he is. You're absolutely right because in the old days, defensive backs, you, always, you drafted all your other people and you could always find a defensive back was the attitude of many of the scouting. Uh, they were a dime a dozen, or at least that was how they were considered. Oh, wow. What an un.
kind oh. turn. You turn away from pressure, and you run right into Julius Adams, 85. Five sacks for the Patriots. They started today one behind Houston for the NFL lead. Oh, and you watch him right here. Phipps is going to get it from the blind side. He just turns around, and hello. <laughs> Julius Adams uh, has had a very big day. I think that's either his second or third sack of the day. And certainly the Patriots really enjoy having him back to into form. Missed the entire year last year with a knee problem. That was a fourth down play, so the ball goes to the New England Patriots at the Chicago 42-yard line. Well, this is going to set things up. Tom Owen, 17, comes in, replacing Steve Grogan. That'll be a most interesting game next Sunday. That'll start our... NBC NFL doubleheader Miami New England both five and two battle for first place. Owen who helped his team to that come from behind win against the Lions came in in the third quarter last week gives to Alan Clark. Clark burrowing through Walterscheid to the 40 yard line and that'll take us to the two minute warning. That signal now being given two minutes remaining in this game in Chicago where the New England Patriots very impressively lead the Chicago Bears 27 to 7. Bryant Gumbel in New York reporting to you that in San Diego the Chargers have gone out in front of the Seahawks by a 7-0 count. Here's how it happened. Dan Faust looking into the end zone finding a wide open Lydell Mitchell for the score. It's 7-0 San Diego. The Chargers started the day with a share of first place in the AFC West. They'll have it by morning with a victory. Let's go back to Chicago. Thank you, Brian. So the Chargers take the early lead. Chicago. Big question, Merlin. Is it a toddling town? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't see much of this town, Dick. I, uh, I can't, uh, can't give you, barely, you a report. You barely made it in from Canada in that fishing uh, trip. Huh? Yeah, got fogged in. Uh, lucky to be here for this one. Though. Looking forward to that salmon, though, next week now. Yep. Alan Clark. And we're in the final two minutes of the game. Jim Osborne makes the tackle. Might be appropriate, Dick, to talk about uh, the Patriots having ice this one. Uh, how good a football team are the New England Patriots? And certainly one of the uh, things you've seen with us today is the tremendous uh, potential and the tremendous power that they've uh, demonstrated, not only offensively, but defensively and on special teams. It's been just an overpowering day for the Patriots. But they have not played that way consistently through the year. They've had some very lackluster days, and, and they've had some very down days. You've got to wonder if uh, if they are a team that can make it through those one game seasons those playoffs where every game must be won or you simply do not survive. Well, next week will be like a test for the postseason because they'll be playing a quality club the Miami Dolphins and that'll be the halfway mark of the year the eighth week of the season. Our thanks to Ken Fouts our director David Stern our producer in Chicago today and our spotters Terry Kane and Gil Haggard. Nice job, gentlemen. Joe Costanza working the pencil on the statistics and the countdown into the final minute. 27 to 7, New England. Fourth down coming up. The Bears apparently aren't even going to call time and try to muster something. Well, it's got to be a frustrating day for them. Uh, they have not played well offensively. Uh, their, their big weapon, Walter Payton, taken away from them by the New England Patriots. Avellini, uh, very inconsistent with his passing game early. Certainly part of that attributable to the fine defensive performance of the Patriots, but he just wasn't able to do much with it. Now Peyton Merlin he has four rushing games of 125 yards or more, interestingly, and three under 50, including today, 42 yards. And those three games under 50 were against Miami, Tampa Bay, and New England. All of them three, four teams. You have to wonder if that isn't the way to Try to stop Peyton with all of his maneuverability and power. Well, certainly difficult to run against a 3-4 defense that has great linebackers who are mobile. And uh, I don't think uh, they're, well, perhaps with the exception of Denver, there's not a team in football that has a better set of linebackers than these Patriots. Harris punt almost blocked, but he gets it down inside the Alan 10. Alan Clark, look at that. Alan oh. Clark. And he batted it back. And it'll be ruled dead back to the five-yard line. Alan Clark again with just a great defensive play. Uh, ball bouncing high in the air. Looked like it was going to go into the end zone. Bill Clark Matthews up, bounded it back. Yeah. Bill Matthews, a uh, young rookie, playing very well. Excellent job by uh, Clark, though. Had he not gone up, that ball would have gone into the end zone. Well, it's a valuable addition. 19 seconds left. Soldier Field crowd, a sellout of nearly 58,000. 
Go home disappointed. The Bears will be three and four. Had a chance to move up on Tampa Bay as the Buccaneers lost, and it appears that uh, with defeat pinching the teams in the Central Division, that uh, really no one loses any ground, and that First down. particular fight is very much up in, uh, up for grabs. Well, and I think that's maybe the high point of the day for the Bears that they did not lose any ground in this uh, race because it certainly has not been a productive football day for the Chicago Bears. Dave Williams sprints through and gets out to about the 12-yard line. That could be the last play of the game. The Bears did not call timeout when New England had the football, and they're not going to call timeout now. That's almost uh, knuckling under, saying uncle, and the fans don't like it. Well, there aren't many of them left. Uh, they uh, saw the writing on the wall and began to leave early. But as we said, not their kind of day. So the final score here at Soldier Field, Chicago, the New England Patriots, their fifth win in seven contests for Ron Earhart's club. They defeat the Chicago Bears 27 and seven. New England now five and two. The Bears drop to three wins and four losses. And that sets up things for the match against the Miami Dolphins next Sunday for first place in the AFC East. And if, if nothing else, uh, New England has demonstrated again today, if you're going to beat them defensively, you've got to be able to throw the football. You cannot do it on the ground. And the other thing they've showed us is the tremendous power they have offensively. It will be interesting to see if they can keep their momentum and their consistency together for the rest of the season. And as you pointed out, when Brogan is good, there perhaps is no better quarterback in the National Football League. And all the Patriot coaches and fans can hope for is that he remains the excellent player that he was today. So for Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg, thank you for being with us from Chicago's Soldier Field. Executive producer of NBC's football is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. Telecast of today's game is produced by David Stern, directed by Ken Fouts. The associate producer, Terry Ebert, technical director, Arthur Arnold Rand, and associate director, Richard Klein. Sorry, gentlemen. Next Saturday on Sports World, the WBA Heavyweight Championship fight live from South Africa between undefeated John Tate and unbeaten Harry Coetzee. That begins at 4 o'clock Eastern. And now stay tuned for the Budweiser NFL Report. All the scores and highlights of today's NFL games right after these messages from your local stations. Well, they say that uh, the interest rates are going to be even higher. You want to borrow a couple of million bucks at interest rates so low your banker would laugh at you? Apparently, it's not all that difficult. Ask Uncle Sam. A lot of people who already are millionaires did just that, and they got the money. That's what apparently it's all about tonight, about 60 minutes. I wish I could get home in time to see that. First down, Lions at their own 49-yard line. In motion, Buddy Scott. Extra bussy. Straight ahead behind Larry Terry. Got about four yards on the play. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be a four-yard gain, second and six. The linebacker Wingo is there again. He's a busy young man, the rookie from Alabama. Actually, Tim, the man in motion doesn't really help the running play, but what the Lions are able to see is that they got single coverage in the secondary when they send Washington or Thompson in motion. Oakland in front of Atlanta, three to nothing. San Diego leading Seattle seven to nothing. Those games just underway. We have 3.30 remaining first period here. David Hill jumps to the tight end right. They set a wingman out there, and they come back to the short side. King drops the ball and just manages to retain possession against Mike Douglas and Johnny Gray scooting in there trying to grab the loose one. King did not see the ball. He overlooked the fact that he had to catch it before he ran. Good pitch out by Comlo here. King just did not look the ball in. He's lucky to get it back. First thing you should do here is get on the ball. Don't try to pick up, pick it up and run it. Get it on, get on it. Terry Jones, number 63, not Douglas, 53. The man diving in there trying to get it to the tackle. Jones, the man, Roman mentioned coming up a knee injury. Second year man from Alabama is in there at defensive tackle. Tom Lowe on third down, and it's incomplete. Intended for the tight end, David Hill. Mike McCoy, the cornerback, had him all the way, number 29. And so the Lions will have to punt. That time they doubled the outside receiver and had a defensive back on David Hill. The Lions trying to go to the right guy, but it's difficult to go to a tight end when you got an outside corner cover. Steve Odom is the deep man for the Packers awaiting the punt. And Larry Spider. Spider standing at his 37. A lot of signal calling being done out there, as you can hear. 
Ryder angling. Gets a Lions bounce. Leonard Thompson will down it. All the way down at the seven yard line of Green Bay. So once again, the Packers have to start from deep in their own zone. 2.27 remaining here on the first quarter after the 40 yard punt by Swider. We are still scoreless in Milwaukee. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire in Oakland, California, where the Raiders did that just now. Boy, look at that time of possession. Their drive was 7-16, and it paid off with three. Atlanta's had one possession, and the Raiders have had one possession. We're almost through the first quarter. Lynn Kane takes the line drive kickoff break eye, and this one should be a respectable possession when they unpile. The Raiders come out with the football. Tries to get through the wedge, it does. Covers up. I'll tell you, that is planned. They actually stripped the ball carrier, and that's within the limits of the law. Good play by Oakland. Todd Christensen made the recovery for Oakland. There he is, Raiders ball. There's the fumble. The tackle was made by the kicker, Ray Guy. Christensen. And Christensen came up with the football. He's a weightlifter anyway. He pumps iron. He just ripped it out. They call him Toddzilla. <laughs> Toddzilla. <laughs> First down, Raiders, and Staber goes back to work. Casper. And Dave Casper out of bounds at the Atlanta 15. Raider first down. Ray Easterling made the tackle, but Casper was wide open. And, of course, Casper started late, missed 43 days of practice, and had to work his way into shape. This time, Martini, the flanker, clears out. And this great tight end from Notre Dame does the outside maneuver, and he has speed. I don't believe he's quite six foot four inches tall, but he's about six four wide. He is the thickest darn thing you ever saw. That ball looks like a grapefruit the way he handled it. He's also an academic All-American, which shows you can be strong and smart at the same time. If you want to be. It's the way I always felt. <laughs> First and ten. Egan veers off to the left side, maybe a yard. Wilson Famuina on the tackle. John Madden, the former Raider coach, the great coach here, uh, is up in the booth with us, and he says that the Raiders like to calm off a team that likes to blitz a lot, calm them down, get the good rushing game going so they have to play straight defenses, and then they can go to work on you. John, of course, now is working for CBS and doing a whale of a job, and we'll have a chance to talk with him a little bit later on. I bet you we will. Second and ten. Stabler looking over that Atlanta defense and uh, certainly has on his mind throwing. Protection is good. Oh. Almost. Intended for Chester. And the almost has a flag go down. Frank Reed on the coverage and now on the argument with one of the officials. If it wasn't for Roland Lawrence, the ball would have been caught. Reed ran into Chester, and Lawrence knocked the ball away. Defensive pass interference, number 28 in the end zone. First down, one yard line. Remember, every game the Oakland Raiders have gone out and scored first in, they have won. Here's the pass on its way. You'll see 28 that's hitting the belt line of 88, and there's the ball knocked away by number 22, Lawrence. Just barely knocked away. Gotta make some contact in this game. Right. Booker Russell now is in the backfield with Van Egan. Van Egan has the open touchdown. That is the second rushing touchdown for the Oakland Raiders this year. Directed by Ken Staber, the Raiders move out to a 9 0 lead. Following a fumble on the kickoff. Sometimes when you're hurt, you can make up for it by stealing the ball from the other people. Van Egan, the Raider touchdown. David Hum, the third quarterback, is the holder for Jim Breach. Dead center. Touchdown again. It's a, just a drive off the right side. Van Egan, 
You're not going to keep that guy. Forty-six seconds left in the first quarter. Well, that's all next Saturday on the Sports Fact. The World Amateur Roller Skating Championship should be interesting. And, of course, the world's strongest men. The Packers starting from their own eight-yard line. First down. And with Eric Torkelson and Steve Atkins, a new pair of starting running backs, Middleton is dressed but has a shoulder injury. Barty Smith hurt his knee walking onto the practice field this past week. Had surgery, gone for the year. This is Atkins, number 32. Did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Very... Close to it, perhaps, but uh, there'll be no gain. Ken Sanders, Dave Purifoy on the tackle. Tim, that's one of the big problems the Packers have had. They're a ball control team, but they've only been able to control the ball 25 minutes a game, and that's that's number 13 in the league. San Francisco is 14th. Oakland's opened the margin over Atlanta, 10 to zip in the first. The motion. So Andre Thompson, the wide receiver, 89. Flags down. Flags on the play. Torkelson. Not get much. Eric Torkelson, six-year man out of Connecticut, was an 11th round pick in 1974. One of those players just awfully hard to cut. He works hard. He's good on the specials. Plays several positions for you. And here he is, a 200-pound halfback, having to fill in for big Barty Smith. And that's how Snake Pit the Packers have been. Uh, Barty Smith walks onto the practice field and uh, without any contact, uh, suffers a knee injury, gone Offside, for the season. 6 0, defense, second down. 6 0 is Al Bubba Baker. Second down, about five for the Pack. They also lose those 19 receptions that Barty Smith had. Torgelson only has one, so it'll be interesting to see what the Packers do with him. Torgelson had only carried the ball three times this season. In motion goes Andre Thompson. Steve Atkins. They shut him down. Good defensive play. Baker's out there. Bradley, number 27, the cornerback coming up to make the stop. May have lost about a yard on the play. Tim, whenever you're a ball control team, you have to control or run more plays than the opposition. The Packers have run 345 plays, the opposition 448 plays, which is a difference in 103 plays. So somewhere along the line, the Packers either got to put the ball up or run more plays. Well, uh, David Weider is passing with a 57.2 percentage. That's fourth best in the NFC, so he can get it to you, and he's going to try now on third down. That's incomplete. Intended for Andre Thompson. He was well covered by Luther Bradley. And the Packers will have to punt. There are some boo birds here in Milwaukee's County Stadium. Both teams, both teams in that sub defense, when they bring in those extra backs, are pulling a corner. That time, Luther Bradley on the tight end. Well, so many teams in that sub situation goes to the tight end versus the linebacker. But both teams are using cornerbacks to cover the tight ends. David Beverly will punt. He's standing just outside his goal line. Tim Kallick at 31. And Ken Ellis, number 48, are awaiting the punt, standing at the Lions 44. Again, Kallick lost his, uh, Ellis lost his footing, and the ball comes all the way back to the 31-yard line. And uh, twice now, Kenny Ellis has had problems, and uh, one would wonder about the footwear he's wearing here today. This is natural turf, of course, at County Stadium. He's just getting his feet crossed up. His shoulders start to move, but his feet are sticking to the ground. Turns into a 56-yard punt for Green Bay's David Beverly, first down at the 31. Well, next Saturday night, an interesting, fun-filled show for you, the Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. You're going to be seeing... A lot of stars competing in head-to-head -head competition in sports. People like Charles, Bill Cosby, Red Fox, Tony Tennille, Joan Rivers, many, many more. 8 o'clock next Saturday night on CBS. First down Lions at their own 31. Dexter Bussey running hard, cutting back well, and picking up about six yards before being stopped by Mike McCoy and the linebacker Mike Douglas, number 53. There's Bill Curry, the offensive line coach of the Packers, trying to get his men a little more inspired. Of course, they haven't had much field position, and it's difficult to come out of your own end zone all the time. Mark Conkar, Darrell Goforth, left side of that Packers offensive line. Second and four Lions. The ball is now out at their own 38-yard line. In the I formation, 
Lawrence gains the lead back. He's playing with a hamstring pull. These teams are really crippled up. Bussey runs into Gaines, who was straightened up as he attempted the block. Douglas made the tackle. Mike Butler, number 77, just held up the blocker, Gaines. Now let's take a look at this. Mike Butler playing with one arm, does a fine job here for the Packers. Bussey runs right into Gaines. Butler does a fine job piling up the play. There's 53 Douglas in there to help out, too. What a play by the Packer defense. <laughs> relatives to bring that banner in? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have that banner in Georgia. Everything's peachy on CBS. Third down as uh, we are beginning play in the second period and the Lions to our left. Comlo third and five under pressure is pulled down by Terry Jones. First sack of the afternoon and it's all the way back to the 26 yard line where the Lions will have to punt a loss of 13. Comlo has good protection here, but his receivers are covered well downfield. There's Terry Jones. The last game he played in was the opener, and he's taken up right where he left off coming into this ball game. Ball's recovered in there by Douglas, 53. Fourth down for the Lions as the play was already over, and so it'll be Swider standing at his own 10-yard line. Steve Odom, the lone receiver, standing at the Packers, 39. Lions bounce, Odom feels at the 31. Odom squirts back out to the 38-yard line, pulled down by Dave Parkin and Eddie Cole. And so the Green Bay Packers, with a little better field possession this time, will be starting first down. We're still scoreless, just underway in the second period. And the Falcons did it without... It's very important. Well, that young Don Smith, number 65, is a load. He's 6'5", 250 pounds, a rookie, and he made Staber throw that one very early. What do you look for, a sneak back by one of those tight ends? Second and long. Lehman Bennett looking on. I look for Chester across the middle. Maybe even a little bit late. Make everybody make a move on defense. Chester is lined up tight to the right. Casper lined up tight to the left. Martini split wide to the left. Really the running play. Derek Jensen clubs his way down to about the 13-yard line. Hackendall on the tackle. Well, this is just a sweep. Remember when Oakland used to be able to run to the left side? There's Dalby getting his block. Pretty good job by Shell. There's Upshaw out in front. And when the Oakland Raiders come out to be introduced, it is scary. The stadium shakes. They are still a very large team indeed. It is third and still goal on the 12-yard line. Casper is out. And Larry Brunson is in. Stabler fires out of the end zone. Just threw it away. Everybody was covered. A wise choice for Kenny Stabler. I think he wanted to give his small but effective field goal kicker a chance. Here comes Breach. Stabler will say, Breach, you're in the breach. Do your thing. I think Breach was a pass button kicker over in Sacramento, somebody said. That's right. Like Dave Jennings of the Giants and a couple of other players who are in the NFL today. Breach with David Hum, who is a quarterback, don't forget. The holder. From 30. And good. The Oakland Raiders move out to a 13-0 lead over Atlanta with 10 minutes and 24 
seconds left to play in the first half. Well, there's uh, Comlo taking the headphones off. He was probably listening to Bob Snelker, the receiver and quarterback coach for the Lions, trying to give him a few hints as to possibly what might be open. Dexter Bussey, number 24, giving some encouragement to the rookie quarterback. First down, Green Bay at their own 38. Wide left is Andre Thompson. Wide right now in motion back to the ball is James Lofton. First down pass play from Whitehurst. Sideline incomplete intended for the tight end. Kaufman on the coverage was Weaver, number 59. Lions have a linebacker named Weaver, Charlie, and the Packers have Gary Weaver. Well, the Packers start out in good field position, go right to play action. They had Eric Torgelson on the right sideline in the open. Whitehurst didn't see him and came to the tight end instead. Second and 10, Green Bay. 14-16 to go, first half, no score. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel at County Stadium in Milwaukee. A beautiful afternoon, about 50 degrees. Bright sunshine. Lofton in motion. That's complete to the tight end, Kaufman. Second-year man from Kansas State is close to the first down. 15 catches coming into today's game. Fine call that time. Kaufman goes down in between the linebacker and the corner and just turns it out, a little hook pattern for the first down. Or close to it. They're going to measure. Bo Robinson walking the sidelines for the Lions was injured back early in the first period with bruised ribs. It looks like he's coming back to the Lions bench, but he does not have his pads on. And it would seem likely he's not going to return today. First down for Green Bay. Here's Monty Clark. Lions coach got to feel a little bit unhappy, to say the least, that they took the ball, drove right down the field, wound up being stopped inside the one. They did not elect to go for the field goal, and uh, frankly, I uh, I agreed with them. Go for it. Right. They were asserting themselves, and they gave it a good try. It was a great defensive play by Green Bay to stop them. Atkins. Atkins running well. Breaks another tackle, and trying to stretch for that first down marker. He'll be marked short, but a real good effort. Finally pulled down by Jimmy Allen, number 40. Atkins is a big running back. He's 220 pounds, runs a 4-5-40. Comes out here with not a whole lot of help, but he makes it go on his own. Timmy is one of those kind of backs that sort of run in midair, if you know what I mean. Uh, They're high on this young man. Second and Third two. round pick. The second round pick, pardon me, from Maryland. 79 yards against Atlanta last week. Second. A little more than a yard. Atkins again. Has the first down. Running hard. Inside the 35 to the 33. Jimmy Allen again on the tackle. And it's well that he was, or Atkins might have got to the sideline and all the way. There it is, just a little pitch sweep. Back to Atkins again, working on the strength of the Lions defense. Bubba Baker and Doug English. Well, let's watch the block here by Turkelson. You have to have this from your fullback to make this play go. Fine block in there on... Weaver, number 59. First down. Green Bay on the 10-yard game by Atkins. They're at the 34 of Detroit. Whitehurst deep and incomplete for Lofton. Lofton, uh, Walt Williams on the coverage, and Lofton ran right through Williams as the ball was overthrown, and Williams is down, getting up slowly. He took quite a smack and appeared right on the thigh. The Packers, had, Packers had the coverage they wanted there, man coverage, but Williams reading the play perfectly. Here it is, ball's overthrown. Williams rolls into this fence down here in the right corner of the end zone. There's really no padding. We were discussing that earlier, Tim. Somebody could get hurt down there. Well, this is a baseball park, as most sports fans know, and so the configuration of the football field creates uh, short corners in both end zones. In motion comes James Lofton. In motion comes most of the Detroit line. <laughs> and we'll see who winds up being to blame. Kaufman and Purifoy get up uh, having a few words for each other. 82 and 75. Looked like there might have been a little false start in there by Larry McCarran, the Eagle center, to draw the Lions off sides. 
or the Packers Center, rather, not the Eagles. Got the Eagles on my mind. In faction against the Lions, referee Cal Lepore will make it official. Making about as official as you can get right now is marking it off against them. Encroachment, contact before the snap, 78, defense, second down. Doug English, number 78. Second and five. Let's see that one again. There it is. It's Sanders, number 82, the left tackle. Well, they blamed it on English. Looked like he was right there with him. Atkins again on second down, and English wraps him up. Got no more than a yard, if that, on the play. It'll bring up third down for Green Bay, and there is Bo Robinson. And uh, he's getting uh, those ribs wrapped. Well, they say that he might not play anymore. He's out for the game, we believe. Cleveland Elam in at defensive tackle, number 72 for Detroit. Acquired in the trade from San Francisco, has had a hand injury in the early part of the season. Third down and five, Green Bay. Wide right is Andre Thompson has Lofton in motion behind him. Whitehurst has time, sideline, incomplete. Lofton could not hold on, and it was Jimmy Allen putting a pop on him as the ball arrived. Williams had the original cover. Lofton in motion from the left over to the right side. Play action right. Baker and Purifoy putting on the pressure. Ball is thrown a little behind Lofton and a little high. He possibly still should have caught the ball, but a fine play in there by, by the Lions defensive back, Williams. Fourth down, Green Bay. They're going to try the field goal. Chester Marco, he's been under some heat in this area so far. He's two for five this season. Generally reliable field goal pitchers been having his problems the last couple of weeks. This will be from the 36 to 46 yard try. And that is going to be no good. And so the Green Bay Packers come up empty. As did the Lions on their opening drive, and with 11.21 to go in the first half, the Lions nothing, the Packers nothing. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire in Oakland, California. Ray Guy about set to kick off to number 21 for the Atlanta Falcons. Lynn Kane, the Raiders lead it 13-0. 10 minutes, 24 seconds left to play in the first half, and let's see. Drybore breaks out of the pack out to the 24-yard line before he is stopped by John Huddleston. Patrick, I haven't seen the Oakland Raiders a lot, but I've never seen them more inspired than they are today under Tom Flores, the coach, and what have you. Here's the coverage on that kickoff. You can see what I mean. There's nobody sitting on the bench. Very few players are sitting. They're all standing and yelling, and they're finding people that hit a lick and have red and white on that CBS Sports Spectacular you just heard about as Barkowski tries to do something spectacular and goes high. Intended for Wallace Francis. A little too hard for him to handle. 4-23. And the field goal, good. And Staber makes it all count, doesn't he? He seems to know exactly where everybody is. Even Lehman Bennett. One thing that the Falcons really have going for them, they're a great second-half team, and they're going to have to be. It'll be a long week out here. If it continues the way it's going right now, the Falcons play San Francisco next week out here, and they're going to stay out. Mayberry bounces it. Tries to pick it up. The Raiders have it. Thank you. 
14, Carmelina led the Atlanta defense. He looks a lot more smelt than he did last year. Yeah, he looks like he almost has creases in his trousers. He looks like, uh, well, fellas, let's go. We got pretty good field position. We got 13 zip on the scoreboard uh, before half. Second and six. Final score there. The New England Patriots 27. The Chicago Bears 7. Bear record is down three and four. New England five and two. Jensen to the outside. Frank Reed made the good tackle. You can see Van Egan. He had 22 yards on eight carries before this move. A great play by the safety man. By an ankle. Lawrence helps out. Third and eight for Stabler. See how his protect protection works this time. And if you get a chance, just watch those linemen and how they operate. This is the most difficult job I think in football, pass protection. Unless it's out of a cornerback. Thank you. Hawkins and Van Egan. Intended for Dave Casper. And the big tight end just didn't quite stretch enough. He couldn't. Well, they are really working up front, though. Watch the blocking in front now. That's Dalby, the big center. He might be as good as there is in the AFC, along with Webster and probably Langer. Upshaw trying to cut his man. Edgars gets by, but... Stabler that time had to get a blocker off his foot. Atlanta was coming. And Breach comes in again. Again with David Hum holding. This time... 33 yards. Line drive is hooked to the left. A little high snap, maybe. Snap looked a little, just a mite high. The breach moves to the left. So the Raiders get a break, but can't cap a line. The beauty of roller skating and uh, muscles from the world's strongest man next week on the Sports Spectacular. Well, there's Al Baker taking some advice from a fine defensive line coach and who was a great player in his own time, Floyd Peters. Baker's probably down there telling those defensive linemen, let's keep it going because they're the ones who got to keep them in the game. Lions take over on the missed field goal try by Chester Marco. They have first down at their own 28. Lawrence Gaines and Dexter Bussey, the running backs. This is Bussey. Bussey hit hard. Pulled down from behind by English and smacked from in front by Wingo. Wingo is done. Gain of maybe a yard and a half. They'll spot it at the 30 yard line. 30 yard line. There's New England 27, the Bears 7. New England starting to put some points on the board. Pats are 5 and 2 now in the AFC East. Bears 3 and 4. And they're in this division. NFC Central. Second. Close to nine. Bussy in motion. Tom Lowe. Open is Scott. for the inbounds? No. Does not have the ball inbound. Freddie Scott. It's incomplete. Third and nine. Tom Lowe dropping back here, has Leonard Thompson on the left side, clearing out down the sideline, opening up that area for Scott. Moves up well in the pocket, something that you learn as you play, and he's doing it well. He's stepping back. Let's take a look at him. He thinks he has it, but Scott's out of bounds. Tough break. Butler and Barber pinching in from the two defensive ends, and that's Tom Lowe stepped up well. Third down. Lifting linebacker, and he moves away from that well. Unloads the ball and it's incomplete. Intended for Freddie Scott. McCoy and Gray were there. Scott could not hold on. Meanwhile, Kamlo took quite a rap just as he released it. Well, Kamlo gets run out of the pocket here by Mike Butler, 77, who's doing real well with that left dislocated elbow. There's Butler running him out of running him out of the pocket. Kamlo's intended receiver was Washington, who was open. But here he comes to Scott. Boy, he got smacked there. Butler never never eases up. Blitzing linebacker Jim Gaino, number 51, applied the pressure down the middle. And so the Lions will have to punt against. Swider standing at his own 15. Steve Odom awaiting it at 
the 33 of Green Bay. Good kick by Swider. Backing Odom up all the way to the 25. Good coverage by the Lions. Dave Parkin, reserve defensive back number 44. And Leonard Thompson, number 39. Pinning him down. Good kick by Swider. Good coverage. And so the Packers will start from their own 21 when play resumes. 10-12 to go in the first half. Yard punt by Larry Swider tomorrow night on CBS. The White Shadow. Will Coach Reeves go back to a professional team? And then on MASH, Radar says goodbye forever. I thought he did that last week. WKRP in Cincinnati plays baseball against WPIG. Wouldn't miss that. And Lou <laughs> Grant. One of my favorite shows. That's all tomorrow night on CBS. Atkins. Oh, he nearly had all kinds of room. A very good hole at the point of attack. And he was pulled down by Doug Jones, number 46, or he might have gone the distance. Boy, all we get here is a trap up the middle on English. English playing over the center, McCarron. Atkins makes a fine cut, but there's Doug Jones from the strong safety position coming up to save possibly a great big gainer. Got only two as a result. Fine play by Doug Jones starting in Jimmy Allen's strong safety spot. Allen is at Hunter's free safety position. Hunter out with a calf injury. Atkins again. Atkins is stopped right at the corner. A loose ball. Was it before or after the whistle? It is going to be Detroit ball. The Lions recover. And it looks like number 78, Doug English, came up with a loose ball. So the Lions now with a great opportunity at the Packer 22. There's a handoff to Atkins going to the right side on a sweep. Let's take a look here. He's hit real hard there by Williams, making a fine play, and he fumbles the ball. That's English with the ball. So the Lions in excellent scoring position now. The 23-yard line. They come out of the eye. Lawrence Gaines and Dexter Bussey. Slot right. Slot man in motion is Scott. Play action and incomplete intended for Gene Washington, number 18. Overthrown by Tom Lowe. Looks like he wasted a little. Not a bad job, though, because that time the free safety, number 24, was in there. Johnny Gray was right in the area where Tom Lowe was trying to get the ball to him. It might have been an interception if he bought it down. Second down, Lions. On the fumble recovery by Doug English, they are deep in Packer territory at the 23. Gaines, nowhere. Stacked up by the middle of the Green Bay defense, led by Terry Jones, number 63. 99, Charles Johnson, rookie tackle from Maryland, was there as well. The third pick this year by Green Bay. Here's a final, Houston 28, Baltimore 16. Colts continue to suffer. Houston, one of the good teams in the National Football League, moves to 5-2. and two. Well, this is... A down in which the Packer defense has given up yardage consistently. Let's see if they can hold the fort, so to say. Third and nine. Big play here for the Lions coming off their fumble recovery. Scott in the slot right, and Amlo, seeing a defensive change in alignment, wants a timeout. And uh, probably under orders for Monty Clark. When in doubt, when you're down there, you better come over and talk it over with him. Especially if you don't have an audible for the blitz, because they were coming, and it looked as though they... Uh, Tom Lowe didn't have an audible for the blitz. 8.35 to go on the big third down play at a Detroit timeout. We're scoreless. See the mountains up behind the Oakland Coliseum and a sellout crowd in attendance on a warm 
sunny afternoon watching their beloved Raiders leading the Atlanta Falcons at the moment. 13 to nothing. Atlanta ball, first and 10. Markowski is chased and almost hustled down. Gets out of one problem. Finally goes down. Ted Hendricks. That was Monty Johnson who made the tackle. There's Art Shell, the big offensive tackle. Looks like he's got some kind of a problem, maybe with his back or something. Here's the blocking now. Watch Bukowski. And the receivers stopped running their patterns. Everybody stopped to watch their quarterback do this little act on his own. They've got to retrace their steps and start getting some openings. I believe that was, was it Hendricks and Johnson that did it? Johnson chased him early, and then Hendricks almost took his head off when he took him down. Second and 12. Pearson, the Atlanta receiver. First time we've seen him. Rod Martin on the tackle. It's one of the fastest players. He and Jacobs are the fastest players on the Atlanta team. Shell was over there getting his back worked on for a while. I thought it was Shell. It was. Was it? Pearson weighs the, the fellow who just made that reception, leaves the contest now, made that reception. Weighs only 177 pounds. Bubba Bean is back in the Atlanta lineup. There's Pearson over behind Lehman Bennett. Billy Rickman over there with him. Another of their wide receivers. Markowski has an Atlanta first down. He gives to Mayberry. He breaks out of the pass with one tackler. He's finally hit by Jack Tatum. Carries him a few yards, and finally Tatum takes him down with the help of Mike Davis. I know it seems strange to see running plays when people want to see the quarterback throw it all the time, but he really has to settle down and not try to pick it all up at once. I don't think he's the kind of quarterback that can take you end zone to end zone just throwing short passes. Second and one. Very few are. That's right. And Egan has been uh, had his cut stitched, it appears. And he'll be back. Good job by Dave Scott, the left guard, and also Van Note, the center. Watch Pear on the center. He straightens up Van Note, but by the time that he looked around, Mayberry had already flown. World Series score. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, nothing, nothing. In the middle of the second inning. Barkowski throws. Deflected, almost intercepted as Tatum makes a dive for it. Filipiano hit it first. Well, Henry Williams read the play pretty well, too, over there. The trouble was that Barkowski went ahead and threw the ball, and I don't believe it was ever open. It was right into the strength of the defense. Pass was intended for Alfred Jenkins. That is a final score now. Houston 28, Baltimore 7, or Baltimore 14, I beg your pardon. record goes to five and two. Baltimore drops to one and six. Earl Campbell got three touchdowns for Houston. Barkowski has to beat the one of Francis. Fumble and the Raiders have it back. The Raiderettes want more. Well, that's two fumbles and a muff now that uh, the Raiders have come up with. Score is 13-0 Oakland, and they have the football. It's loose again. Suddenly. We thank you for that welcome. It's nice to be here. I don't know if that's part of the welcome or not, but it's a pretty good move. Look how tall and creaky. It's another turnover. There's a big stat right there. First and 10 for the Oakland Raiders with five minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the first half. Stapler outside, Martini has it. He threw that ball while Martini's back was still turned to him. A great catch by Martini because the ball was sort of hanging up there, and if, you, if he'd have backed away from that, Bias might have intercepted. What's the left part of your screen? Ball is thrown early, as Pat said, at high, and Martini gives himself up. He's a good-looking young receiver. Not if you're trying to cover him, but from up here or out there. It'll be a 
second down, Raiders. They need six. Four yard pickup on that pass completion. And Staber again goes straight back, and a flag goes down. The sack by Wilson Palmuina. Lewis Mark Van Egan did fullback might have jumped. There's a tough job moving up and taking on a defensive end that's got about four inches and 40 pounds. Watch number 30. Got about a five yard run at you. <laughs> he wants to get an inside move. Illegal motion, number 30, offense declined. Third down. The grit splits, the Atlanta defense will take that sack and decline the penalty. Staber hasn't been down today. He hasn't really been touched today. Until then. Third and 17, Mark Van Egan and Derek Jensen. The two setbacks. Staber, let's see what he calls. Martini again, a good hand. Uh -huh. What an excellent catch. The ball was a little bit behind him. He did it all with the hands, and that's a good illustration of that soft pass that Staber throws and how easy it is to manage. And you can have it without velocity. The ball is just turning over so many times that it's it's fluffy. It's like a souffle. <laughs> Watch this. Boy, he sets up good. Watch these hands. That's class. Teach that you should watch the ball into your hands. And boy, that was a good illustration, wasn't it? Ray Guy, back to punt. And he'll hang it up there for a while. Dennis Pearson, deep for Atlanta. First number one draft as a kicker, I guess, ever in the league. Was he? Yeah, number one. How about Charlie Kogelak? Wasn't he a number one? Dennis Pearson. You might, have been, you might be right. I think you are. From Princeton? Yes. Speaking of number ones, the Raiders have seven number ones and 13 number twos on this squad. It's a lot of people at skilled positions that are very well thought of. A lot of talent. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, another brand new edition, then followed by Archie, when Edith and Murray tangle over the energy crisis. Uh-oh. It's an Archie Bunker's place. Followed by One Day at a Time right. and Flesh and Blood. Don't miss that. A big night tonight on CBS. All of it. Drops back. Hangs it high. And almost complete. Wallace Francis was open behind Henry Williams, but the ball was hung a little too high. Well, we've seen Murkowski really throw it. Played so well against the Cowboys in the playoff game last year, but he really didn't give Francis a chance. Francis ran the out and up, was open, and really had to make the jump just to keep the interception from taking place. I think his foot might have slipped or was somebody hanging on it. The Raiders had a chance to recover on defense. And so it'll be second down, 10. Atlanta's ball, their own 27. Four minutes, seven seconds left to play in the first half. Raiders make a blitz. Let's see if they come. Tatum up on the line of scrimmage. And yes, here they do come. And again, Barkowski throws it high. Complete this time to Alfred Jenkins. That's little dynamite. The man from Morris Brown spent the whole last year recovering from a collarbone injury. He is the fastest. He's between a 4-3 and a 4-3-5. Look at the blitz coming. Filipiano, they were all coming. A great throw early and soft and darn good coverage. That's tough coverage when you're a cornerback. Nobody can help. That was Lester Hayes who's back there with him. But a good throw. And a blitz that was well read by Steve Bartkowski in the Falcon. That's the way to beat it. Three and a half minutes left first half. 13 nothing open in Leeds Atlanta. Bartkowski again surveying the defense and this time throws back to Bubba Bean. Bean cuts inside the 45 to about the 43. Mike Davis arm tripped him up. Bartkowski surveying again and Lehman Bennett giving all kind of signals, which must mean something. Well, that is some offensive line. That's the thing that impresses me about the Raider defense. We saw him do it to Miami, and they're doing it to a very fine offensive line. Bryant and Big Ken and Scott and Fieldman's in there. And Van Nod, that's a, a good-looking offensive line. Clock still running. 245 left first half. Falcons have all of their timeouts left. Almost a bad exchange from center. Barkowski throws deep and overthrows Alfred Jenkins. If he hadn't been pressured.
pressured. That could have been six. Kaskey had trouble getting the snap from Van Nook. There's a little struggle over the ball. Let's see if they blitz now and come. They do. The outside linebacker blitzes. That's Martin. And gets Markowski trying to sprint out left. Now the big quarterback settles down and does throw it 57 yards, but just over Francis's hands. Filipiano is also coming. Stop with 2.36 left first half. Falcons still struggling to get on the scoreboard. Oakland could be further ahead than they are. They've been able to take advantage of the many breaks they've had. Dennis Pearson split wide to the right. Larry Rickman up at the top of your picture. And the Falcons go with a bunch of speed. Barkowski fires out of bounds intentionally. The nearest Falcon was Wallace Francis. Spencer has done a heck of a job with the defense. They show you a lot of different looks, and the head coach is the one that my employees that said, Ollie, you got to take my defense and change our look. And Ollie Spencer, of course, a great offensive tackle in his pro playing days with the Detroit Lions and in command of the Raider offensive line for so many years. Now running the defense. John James will check the hand time. Maybe that's a good place to come from, though, if you've been doing offensive coaching all the time. Maybe you really know what the weaknesses are. Well, you think about Tom Landry, who played defense and coached defense for so long. Shula. And has put together that magic offense in Dallas. And Shula as well. Falcons are going to take too much time as the Raiders shift around. Number six, offense. That was a lot of hang time, wasn't it? But they don't mind taking the five yards here. You don't want to block kick. At least five more yards. Uh, James will do a little soft shoe back there and kick it down inside somewhere. He's kicked five inside the 20. This is where he is at his best. He can kick away if need be. I mean, really trying to kick it a long way. Or if it needs to be knuckled, and let it bounce a little bit, he can do that too. got a pretty good piece of that ball. Check the left part of your screen and just see it. Number 37, who is a blur in black and silver. Oh, he put it right on the laces, didn't he? <laughs> Very close. The NFL on CBS next week, next Sunday, regional games, Green Bay at Tampa Bay, Washington, Philadelphia. There's the candy. Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit, New Orleans, and... The Giants against Kansas City in Kansas City. St. Louis Cardinals at Dallas. And the Falcons, as we mentioned before, play San Francisco. They'll stay out here all week. Check your local listings for the game in your area next week. Right here in the Oakland Coliseum, with a two-minute notification being given to Lehman Bennett and Tom Flores, it's the Oakland Raiders 13. Atlanta Falcons, nothing. Raiders look very sharp. Next Sunday, CBS Sports kicks off its NFL coverage with the NFL Today, followed by a full slate of regional games. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Third down for the... Detroit Lions following their timeout. And they need nine yards to keep this drive alive following the fumble recovery. So far, it's not a drive. Bussey, good hole, running hard. Bussey is brought down by McCoy. He has a first down at the 11 yard line of Green Bay. Good effort by Dexter Bussey, who came into the game with 218 yards rushing. Well, this time the Packers outsmarted themselves. They decide to go with a run defense with no blitz. Hand off in there to Bussy, who picks his hole well. Good blocking in there. Going against that 34 defense. And the Lions come up with the first down. Big play. 
Big play on third and nine. Uh, you just get, got to expect the pass there. They came up with a big running play. Well, the Packers, I think, Packers felt that they had fooled Comlo and they figured they'd come back with a pass. So they, what they do, they line up in the defense to take away the run, and they still get burned. So the Lions now have first down at the 12-yard line of Green Bay. Sellout crowd at Candy Stadium in Milwaukee. Hoping the Packers can stop them again. And on this play, it looks like they might. Horace King was hit first by the linebacker, Douglas, 53. Wingo got a piece of him, and he was finally stopped on the corner by McCoy and Butler. And Mike Douglas is a fine linebacker. He came into this ball game leading the Packer defense in tackles with 50 tackles. Loss of five on the play. So the Packers respond to the first down play by the Lions. They throw him back and make it second and long. Second and 15. Tom Lowe. What a catch. No, it's incomplete. Freddie Scott had that ball. Almost made it. Scott playing with that cast on his left forearm. He's got a broken bone there. There's a mistake by a first-year player, Tim. Down in here, you don't look at the receiver all the way. You got to go from one side to the other to keep that free safety out of position. So it is third down and 14 to go. Packers rising up again. They stopped Detroit on the first offensive series of the game. Good rush, and it's incomplete intended for Leonard Thompson. Tom Lowe nailed back there. The safety loop was blitzing, and the linebacker number 52, Gary Weaver, both in to hit him just as he let the ball go. Fourth down. Well, they always, they always said the best defense was for pass rush was a sack, and here it is. Oh. Steve Look has a fine shot in there. Nobody picked him up. The Lions had too many people in the pattern to pick up the safety. Benny Ricardo, Benny Ricardo will attempt the field goal try. The Lions were light a man on their special unit. And they're still confused here. They got one too many or one too few. Ricardo on the 24-yard line, and he hits it. That's good concentration. We and got a score. Spot, we finally got some points. A 34-yard field goal by Detroit's Benny Ricardo. And with 7 9 remaining here in the first half, the Lions 3 and Green Bay nothing. Saturday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time on CBS, the stars will come out for the Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, featuring 30 recording television and movie stars competing in high-spirited head-to-head competition. You're going to see the likes of Charo, Bill Cosby, Bobby Vinton, Phyllis George, Lynn Redgrave, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, Joan Rivers, Red Fox, Leif Garrett, Charlie Pride, many, many more. That's Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. The celebrity challenge of the sexy should be fun. Well, there's Bart Starr, great quarterback, having his problem as a coach here in Green Bay. I can recall coming in here in 67, though, playing the Packers. We got on the board first in the playoff game, and Mr. Starr brought him back. He'll probably do the same thing with this Green Bay ball club once he gets all his players back from that injured reserve list. Yeah, we mentioned they've got their two fine young linebackers, John Anderson and Mike Cotton, out with injuries. Steve Barnes, Alaska, Ezra Johnson are, are hurting. Eddie Lee Ivory, outstanding rookie running back. They had high hopes for him. Gone for the season with a knee. Barty Smith starting fullback is gone. Mark Conkar has been bothered with ankle injuries. Two of the other backup people, Rich Newsom, Ron Cassidy out. And it's up here. Ricardo's kickoff taken by Odom at the three. Number 84. He's a scoop. Out to the 29-yard line of Green Bay. 28-yard line. And he is hit there by Dennis Franks, number 58. 25-yard return for Odom. You'll always find Dennis Franks, number 58, around that football on those special teams. So the Lions capitalized on their fumble recovery. They didn't go very far. Seven yards and seven plays. But they came up with the only points of the game so far. First down, Packers. High formation. Wide left is Andre Thompson. First down pass. Intercepted by Walt Williams. He'll score. 
It was intended for Lawson, but Williams was there ahead of him. So the Lions, with a fumble recovery and an interception, have jumped into the lead. Well, again, Tim, I might point out, there's the experience of a Walt Williams playing the quarterback's eyes. A little short out pattern, Whitehurst dropping straight back. His eyes continually, let's watch Whitehurst taking a look right here all the way with his receiver and Williams, Johnny on the spot. So Ricardo in to attempt the point after. A happy Walt Williams celebrates in the Packers end zone. 36 yards. A turn of an interception for a touchdown. No good. Hit the upright, Benny Ricardo. Missing the extra point. And so the Lions, off the interception, have a nine to nothing lead with 6.53 remaining here in the first half. Tim, Benny Ricardo was going for number 44 in a row. He was the third extra point kicker in the league this year. And he misses number 44. The Raiders have the ball at their own 16. They lead 13 to nothing. Two field goals by Breach. Detroit Green Bay score. The Lions 9 nothing over Bart Starr's Packers. Bella is in for Shell, so I did have some trouble with either the back or the shoulder. Bella is a heck of a good backup tackle, but he was hurt all last year. Yeah. Stabler to Jensen. Oh, so he breaks out of the pack, breaks a couple of tackles, and gets good yardage. The longest run for scrimmage for Oakland this year has been 19 yards. And that's going to be close to, uh, no, that was a 16 yarder. They're still getting good chunks of it today. And that really has controlled the tempo of the Atlanta team. Lehman Bennett was afraid that if Atlanta played silly and turned the ball over, they might have trouble with it. And they have turned it over. They lost a couple of fumbles. And they lost an interception. Stabler back. Whistles go everywhere. <laughs> Jerry Mark timeout, right. Atlanta. A charge timeout, said Jerry Mark right to Atlanta. Young Smith, the rookie, the number one draft, uh, finally Upshaw said, come on, kid, you're, you're breathing on my quarterback. <laughs> Don't forget at the half, we'll have Brent Musburger, Jane Kennedy, and her cross, and they'll have highlights of all the rest of the games around the league, as well as this one, and scores, an update on what's going on with the World Series. Pete Rose is sitting in with him today. So that's, we don't get a chance to always see the show. It's really fun, isn't it? Looks like it. Just older. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that either. 127 left to play first half. Open 13, Atlanta nothing. Raiders with the football at their own 32. And Stabler. Tackler and the Raiders take a timeout. Stabler wants to go down and get some more points. They use it all. There's no energy crunch today with this team. Loaded for Bear. Watch the hook pattern to the left part of your screen. Young Martini goes down, drives off Bias, who's about five foot nine inches tall, a cornerback, has to give some ground away. Comes back to meet the passer and takes it. Boy, you think back over the years about the great quarterbacks that have come out of the University of Alabama. That one, Namath, Starr, Steve Sloan, Scott Hunter, Richard Todd, now with the Jets, and more. Don't forget the CBS Sports Spectacular as the 1979 World Amateur Roller Skating Championship. The world's strongest men featuring the hoist lift, the tram pull, plus that special stunt that you won't tell me about. <laughs> well, that would take all the suspense out of it. Stabler is 10 of 14 for 114 yards, and young Martini has caught six of them. Stabler has, uh, because of that yardage, become the all-time leading Raider passer, passing Darryl LaMonica. He needed 107, he's got 114. Oh. He may have four. He throws Martini. And out comes the flag. Rick Bias, Ooh. back there with Martini, but 
The yellow flag came immediately out of the referee's pocket, the official's pocket, I should say. Martini was pushing off a little bit, too. It's a tough thing to uh, be definitive Best about. Interference, number 28, defense, first down. Called on Frank Reed. Frank, of course, was knocked out in the first period. He's come back in. Watch this throw. We'll pick it up from another angle and see if we can see who was making contact with whom. He's got a step or so. It is on Rick Bias. I'm telling you, I think the defensive back had better position than Martini. I don't blame Bias from getting mad, and it wasn't uh, Reed anyway. It was 38. It was Rick Bias. down the pass intended for Brunson cutting across the goal line. He couldn't hang on. Frank Reed on the coverage that time. Still plenty of time left on the clock to get more points. The Raiders are in good shape. Looks like they're maybe going to call Henry Lawrence for holding. The Raiders are falling back for the first time today. Jerry Mark Bright, the official, brings it back to the 20, and he'll tell us who it was. Holding number 75, oh. offense, first down. Vela, John Vela in for Art Shell. So one thing about the Raiders, they're so strong when they hold you, you're held. It you hurts you holding it. Clarence Hawkins and Mark Van Egan, the two setbacks behind Staper, but he'll put it up. Falcons blitz, Raiders pick it up. Hawkins, touchdown. Stayed right in the pocket. A flag goes down back around Kent Staper. But the rookie running back gets a touchdown. A penalty marker is down. They're going to call unsportsmanlike on Atlanta. The touchdown's going to hold. Well, that was some catch. Might have been roughly the passer. Let's see what the official call is. Touchdown. Touchdown counts. And now we'll see what the violation was. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 52, defense. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's Hawkins' first catch and also his first touchdown. He had one in preseason, but this is the first one they put in the NFL rule book or the uh, scorebook or the annual or whatever they call it. Dewey McClain was guilty of rushing the passer, roughing the passer and the penalty will take place on the kickoff which means that Ray Guy will kick off from the 45 three line shot misses the extra point well, that'll make it open 19 Atlanta nothing here's the touchdown again a lot of time snake almost pushed one of his blockers out of the way but see how clean that ball is thrown but he has a lot of time to do it, and he's a very smart, accurate reader of defenses. Looking down into Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Beautiful ballpark that opens in the middle of the 1970 season. Second time the World Series has been played here. Do it for 21, of course. The late Roberto Clemente. The Pirates right fielder, Manny Sanguian, mentioning it after the Bucks won game two. That one was for Roberto. Sam Gian's base hit in the ninth inning. The key blow. Kiko Garcia popped out in the first inning. Rooker made a nice play to get him, and it's fouled back. 0-1. Oh, you know, knowing Kiko with his chronic back problem, he has a pinched nerve in the back. Once a month, he goes to the chiropractor, pops his back back into place. You wonder how the kid has been able to do so many things. Well, you know, he's had a pretty good year for Baltimore when you look all the way through it because since the All-Star break, he's been doing a lot of playing for him. Didn't play the first two games and then really came on. Bounce to short. Foley gets him. And ten in a row. Set down by Jim Rooker. So far, and it's oh so young, a perfect game for Jim Rooker. Still throwing easy. Now going against this Birds lineup second time around. So a good time to take a searching look at it. See if they're detecting anything. Can begin to get to him. 
Well, he hasn't really thrown that many pitches. Both Rooker and Flanagan threw three, three innings of play. Rooker threw 33 pitches. He's pitched thrown two, I guess, right now to Garcia to make that 35. Flanagan's gone through 28. So they're going just about hit and hit. Benny Ayala grounded out in the first inning. 1 0. They don't get the appeal. Two and on the count. This is Zion. Three and on the count. So Rooker behind for the first time. One thing he says he must avoid doing. Three and one. And he loses him. So the Orioles have their first base runner. And Rooker will be working out of the stretch for the first time as Ken Singleton comes up. Flied out in the first right inning. Number. It'll be interesting right now to watch how Jim pitches out of the stretch position. Of course, he's done it many times in his life, but a lot of times when you get rolling along, rolling along, and working out of the windup for so many times, as we said before, he's retired 10 in a row. Now he walks Ayala sometimes. It's Maybe we'll take just a pitch or two to get himself in the groove pitching out of the stretch. And we'll have to wait and see about that. Well, we have just lost any possibility of a repeat of Don Larson in 56. <laughs> Pop foul back out of play. As Kenny's wife, you've seen it twice before as Chet 40 covers his human coverage of this World Series. Dimensional coverage, I might add. The strike one pitch. Did he check the appeal? He did check. One and one. <laughs> well, a lot of fans doing some umpiring with their hearts out here, but yep. I believe Kenny checked in time. Jim McKeon. But well, I'm not real sure. He's out there. That bat is laying back there now. times when things go along like this both of these managers they'll just start something make something happen one one pitch is found with the plate and the count one and two on deck Eddie Murray one ball two strikes now Rooker who was in great rhythm as you look at the schedule if necessary game six Tuesday from Baltimore, 8 o'clock. If necessary, game seven, Wednesday from Baltimore at 8 o'clock. Brooker was in good rhythm, but now working deliberately, and the 1 2 pitch is fouled back. He's mixing up his pitches, it seems to me, very well done. That was a good evidence. He and has been throwing Kenny the slow curve, dropping down, suddenly moves upstairs with the fastball. He's thrown some good change-ups, and he's had them in pretty good locations, too. He's just missed with a few of them. He's had a good curveball. He's jammed some right-hand hitters. And he's had an exceptional fastball so far. Two and two the count. Well, he's got Singleton and Murray, the two hitters against whom you dare not make a mistake. Oh, what a beauty. On the inside corner, Singleton does not like the call. Ah, he's wrong. That pitch took him by surprise. It's exactly what we were talking about. He's mixing up his pitches beautifully. Well, he stayed away from him all the time, and now he comes back and nips that inside corner. There you see Nakuja setting inside, and it's right there. You can see the... Now, here's one of the 
American League umpires Jim McKeon who will work with the inside protector. Lee McPhail, the president of the American League, Dick Butler, the supervisor of umpires, they've given the American League umpires that option. You do not use to ha you have to, you don't have to use, I should say, that big balloon as Murray fouls it away. And there's a lot of them going to it. Matter of fact, there's probably more in the American League right now that are using that inside protector than are not. You see, also, Jim has that flap hanging down that Nicosia has, started by the Dodgers' Steve Yeager to eliminate any foul tip from going back and catching in the throat of the Adams apple. That has become just about standard equipment now. Just about. It has. Yeager had an idea, and it was a good one. Well, you start getting hit there a few times, and you'll think of something. Started using that, kept his health, and stopped hitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one pitch. Popped up. Bill Garner is right there. And the Orioles are gone in the fourth inning. Rook is sailing along. No runs, no hits. They leave one at the end of three and a half in game five. Baltimore nothing. Pittsburgh nothing. Lead man will be Steve Odom for the Packers. And Carter will kick it off. Nine to nothing. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel at Milwaukee's County Stadium on a brilliant fall afternoon. About 50 degrees. Good bounce, and Odom has difficulty, and it goes out of bounds off Odom. Well, the Packers are going to start inside their 10. They'll spot it at the 8-yard line. The Lions get another break off the of Packer error once more. Well, the mistakes have hurt this Green Bay club here. And they made that outstanding defensive play, stopping the Lions on the opening drive. But since that time, one error after another has kept them in trouble. Uh, you know, it's the same thing the Lions defense did last week against New England. They created the breaks and actually put points on the board. And they've done the same thing here in the first half against the Packers. First down for Green Bay from their own eight yard line. Got airplanes flying in the booth. Nate Simpson in the game at running back number 48. Horkelson, up left tackle, it's over the 10 yard line to about the 12. Linebacker O'Neill made the stop on him, flag down. Uh, might be holding. Where can they move them? They're already in their backyard. It is against Green Bay. Parkinson and Nate Simpson now the running back. Simpson, a third-year man from Tennessee State. As far as we know, Atkins was not hurt. We did not see him get hurt, and he had been doing some good hard running. Now that play was a gainer for him. They hit the, the weakness of the defense against that over. They ran to the bubble where the linebacker was. But they make a mistake and hold. Now Atkins is coming back into the backfield. Holy make it John Thompson. Four. John Thompson of Brady Street, the tight end. First down. They're going to go with a two tight end situation here, Tim. Keep the ball on the ground. They don't want to make a mistake here and turn it over. John Thompson, number 83, joins Paul Coffman. The wide receiver, Andre Thompson, comes out. The three Thompsons and two Weavers in the game today. <laughs> keep close track here. Simpson with another flag down. Gets over the five for a gain of only about a yard. Right side of the Lions defense shut him down. Linebacker Weaver was there, Charlie Weaver. Now they drew Cleveland Elam off sides. He was lined up over the center. He jumped just before the ball was snapped. Whitehurst using a little Bart Starr move there. Going to a different count. Have a Baker in on the tackle too, but it's going to go against the Lions, as Roman pointed out. So that Outside helps the Packers back a little defense, bit. Defense, nose guard, first down. First down, Green Bay, and about nine to go. Andre Thompson back in at wide receiver. Wide right goes Lofton. Thompson comes out to the left. Parkelson and Simpson in the eye. Right, 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 right. 
Play action. Whitehurst, sack. Close to the goal line, Elam had a shot at him. He was finished off by English and Baker. And a loss back to the two-yard line. A little about to choose where they're going to spot it. Well, let's watch Cleveland Elam, the right side of your picture. An outside move here on Leotis Harris, 69. Elam, 72, coming free. Makes the first contact off of this play-action pass. Actually, Elam created the sack. Tim Stokes has gone in for Mark Conkar, left tackle as Conkar was limping off. We mentioned at the top of this telecast that he's been bothered with an ankle injury too much of the early season. Simpson. Pretty good run by Simpson. Gets out over the five. Luther Bradley pulled him down, number 27, with help from Allen, number 40. And he picked up about four yards. Let's take a look at Ed O'Neill coming from his middle linebacker spot. Bradley makes a fine knee-high tackle. Ed O'Neill comes across and helps him out. Right here, there it is. Good shot into the side. Mm. That hurts. That stings. Well, they're back to the original line of scrimmage once more where it's third down. Ball at the eight-yard line. In motion is Walter Tullis, number 87. Three wide receivers are in. Out to Torkelson. Gets away from Brooks. Torkelson has a first down out over the 20-yard line. Jimmy Allen tripped him up in a good effort by Torkelson. Got a flag there, too, Tim. Fourteen yard gain, and let's see whether it stands. Personal foul signaled against Detroit. So they get 14 and then some. All the way down to the 36 yard line. So the Packers dig themselves out with the help of a couple of penalties. The Packers. Personal foul. Late hit, 82, defense, first down. And Sanders with a late hit. The Packers catch the lines a little unaware here. Charlie Weaver started off the field, came back. They doubled all three receivers, left linebacker here on Torkelson, who makes a fine move, finally brought down there by Jimmy Allen, number 40. First down, Green Bay. Simpson, big haul, flag down. Simpson is hit by Allen. He has first down yard at the midfield. But a flag is down back in the offensive backfield. It's against the pack. Now they sing a lot side against Detroit. Referee Cal Lepore is going to sort this one out. First signal was against Green Bay. Offside, 82, defense, it's a decline, first down. Well, turns out well for Green Bay. Boy, that time they came in and got Ed O'Neill down, and there's Jimmy Allen having to make another tackle in that secondary. Nate Simpson, the fifth pick in 1977 for Tennessee State, has not seen a whole lot of action. It's running well here today with the injuries to Middleton and Smith. Whitehurst, incomplete. Lofton made a good effort going down for the low ball, but he was already down and did not quite stretch far enough to gather it in. Well, on this particular play, Timmy, they make the play action fake to the fullback to hold the middle linebacker. They open up an area. Lofton falls down. The ball's still a little low. He could have come up with it, but it would have been a fantastic catch. Well, you quarterbacks expect them to make those, though. That's all. <laughs> He's getting paid to make those kind of catches. Well, I got to agree with you there. Number one picks usually are making a fair amount of dough. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Lofton in motion behind the ball. Baker was over the line. Simpson, he's got room on the corner. Simpson has a first down. And at the outside stands against the line, they'll have a first down inside the 40 of Detroit. Baker was drawn off sides, but I'm, I have a feeling the Packers will take the game. Forget about the penalty. Outside against Detroit. So it'll be first down for Green Bay. Now at the 38 as the Packers finally 
starting to get something going here with 4.59 remaining in the first All half. Five, six, oh, defense, penalty fine, first down. Nine to nothing to score. Oh, here's Simpson taking the pitch out from Whitehurst, coming around the corner there. Fine block in there by another block. These are so many of them, it's hard to tell who made the key ones, but there's enough of them to get him upfield. Three good blocks on the play for the Packers. First down. Eric Torkelson. Got about two before he was stacked up. Doug Jones, the safety coming up well on the play. Number 46. Six-year man from San Fernando Valley State. Eddie O'Neill, the middle linebacker in around as well. It'll be second and eight. The ball right at the 35-yard line of Detroit. Get him two on the play, second and eight. Well, the Lions have been the taking Lions away the outside five. receivers for the Packers. The Packers making good gains with the backs. We might see them go to the back again. Slot right, Andre Thompson. Lofton is wide right. Simpson, big hole. Simpson to the eight-yard line of Detroit. Packers threatening with a first down. The man to stop him getting up slowly is Walt Williams, number 21, a 22-yard gain for Nate Simpson. Now, remember, Turdell Middleton is normally the halfback. He is dressed but has a slight shoulder separation. Bart Starr didn't want to use him today. Atkins started. Simpson is the third running back in here. Here they are, trapping English right up the pipe again. Fine running by Simpson. Simpson, four carries, 55 yards. First down, Green Bay. Hoffman. Close to the goal line, but did not get in. Paul Kaufman, the tight end, number 82. Has first down yardage. Well, it's just a little out pattern or drag pattern by the tight end Kaufman. Fine throw in here by Whitehurst. On that last we caught the Lions with a linebacker trying to cover the tight end. Here it goes again. Let's watch 53 Brooks, the linebacker, trying to cover Brooks, Kaufman, the tight ball, end. Ball Not able to do it. Parkinson and Simpson, the running back. First and goal from the two. Simpson is stopped at the one-yard line. Simpson, Linebacker O'Neill, number 55, and submarining was Baker, number 60. I'll tell you what, if that guy has a plate, he probably swallowed it because Ed O'Neill popped him so good. <laughs> Watch this shot. Boy, Simpson knows he's been in the game now. Oh, oh Ed O'Neill, what a shot. 235 pounds out of Penn State, O'Neill at... Lost his uh, job to a rookie, Eddie Cole, at the beginning of the season, but he's won it back and played well. Second and goal. I don't Stopped again. He didn't make it. The Lions are tough down there. Well, this is uh, reminiscent of the opening series where the Hackers stopped the Lions in the similar situation. But Detroit leading the game 9 to nothing at this point, and they're trying not to give up anything. The ball at the one. Third and goal. Well, you almost got to expect them to try to get outside. They're not going to go up the middle, I wouldn't think. The Lions have been very tough. Whitehurst at the end. Yes, Whitehurst. Behind his center, Larry McCarron, squeezing between McCarron and the guard, Leotis Harris. Whitehurst getting good drive blocking by his center, Larry McCarron, and the two guards, Leotis Harris and Daryl Goforth, to push it in from one yards out. That's sort of rem reminiscent of the old Bart Starr days. Bart Starr doing the same kind of thing against the Cowboys in the playoff game a few years back. 92-yard drive, 12 plays, using three penalties, and 4.39 on the clock. 
Marco for the point after a big one. And he has it. And so, with 2.14 to go in this first half of play, the Packers on the board, and Detroit leads by 2.9 to 7. Well, let's watch the center and two guards do a job here on Sanderson English. They open it up there. Sanders was slanting outside, English inside. The two guards in center for Green Bay doing a fine job. So that's how it stands as the shadows now almost completely cover the field here at County Stadium in Milwaukee with halftime approaching tonight on CBS. 60 minutes. Find out about uh, how to get uh, low interest money. I'm curious to see about that myself. <laughs> Archie Bunker's place follows one day at a time and then flesh and blood we mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm particularly looking forward to that. That was an outstanding novel about the boxing world by Pete Hamill. Should make quite a television show. All tonight on CBS. Calicut and Luther Blue are the deep man and they are standing at the 10 yard line of Detroit as Mark Cole will kick it off. Good boot. Calicut driven back close to the goal line. Calicut got away from one man but was dropped at the 15 yard line. Steve Wagner and number 78 Casey Merrill making the tackle on him. Detroit will start from their own 14 first down. Well, let's see what the Lions can do coming out of their own backyard. The Packers moved it almost a length of the field for their score. Let's see what the Lions have. Detroit really has done little offensively since that opening drive in which they came up scoreless. Their points have come following a fumble recovery and off the field goal. Following that uh, fumble recovery and an interception by Walt Williams. Slot right. Scott in the slot. Back the other way goes Bussy. Bussy running hard. Gets out to the 25 yard line. May have the first down. That is the two minute warning. Johnny Gray and Mike Douglas making the stop on him. It is a first down for the Lions as the warning is sounded. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Detroit with a two point margin, nine to seven. Well, in Philadelphia, they were going to give the Burt Bell Award, the Maxwell Football Club was to Stabler a couple of years ago. Yeah. They called Van Brocklin and said, you want to come in for the dinner? And he said, who's getting the award? They said, Snake Stabler. He says, what time? I'll be there tomorrow. Came up and spent three days with Stabler. Utmost respect, Van Brocklin for Snake Stabler. Two great quarterbacks. They have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Ray Guy shanks it off the side of his foot. It'll go out of bounds. And now they'll go back to where I said in the beginning, back to the 45. 87 yards on five plays. It only took the team a minute and 15 seconds. It's 19 0. The celebrity challenge of the sector. Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You know the old Temptations, the singing group? They'll go against the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders in a, some kind of an obstacle race. It's rather interesting. How many Temptations are there? Well, there were six of them, and their battle cry was alimony. That's what they would yell before they would start competing. <laughs> Bill Cosby, Red Fox, Lynn Redgrave, Tony Tennille, Charlie Pride, Barbie Benton, Phyllis George, and Tom Brookshire, all in that program. Alimony. Well, it made them mean. That's what Coach Cosby said. You got to get mean. They said, think of something. He said, alimony. And now a guy catches this one nicely. Into and out of the end zone. Where Atlanta will take it over. Their own 20. Falcons stay out here, as you mentioned, Pat, for a week or 10 days. Actually, the Raiders have three games in the next. Seven days, somebody told us. They have a Thursday night game coming up. They have one coming up this next Sunday. They're getting healthy, but three games in a short order like that are going to really tax any team these days. 45-man squad. Of course, they had a short week this week, too, because they played on Monday night.
6'2", 250 from Washington. You'll see three men against at least five. They kept the tight end in. Here he comes. Sweet David. Just buried Steve Markowski. So it'll be second down. Here it comes again. And here he comes. It's like a rhinoceros. Second and 20 at the 10, and Mayberry gets the call. Mayberry circles out near a first down. And he might have a face mask violation coming up in the grasp of Lester Hayes. Mayberry. At least a 20-yard pickup. And a good run. He's the young fellow from Boulder, Colorado. Starts out to the left again against the three-man line. You'll give a lot in this situation without giving up points. You can see Monty Johnson now just getting position. Pair can't hang on. You'll see a pretty rough tackle here. They used to be sort of part of the game, but you don't want to hurt people and snap their necks. And the flags fell on that one. Good call. There's the walk-off. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 37, defense, first down. That was Lester Hayes, Jim Mitchell, the Atlanta tight end, limping off on the other side of the field. Lester Hayes, remember we saw him in the Sun Bowl playing for Texas Aggies? Yes. What a team. What a team they had down there that year. Oh, gosh, yeah. Some of them are still playing. Curtis Sticky is still at AM. Alfred Jenkins inside the Raider 30. And all of a sudden, the Atlanta Falcons are in field goal range. Jack Tatum on the tackle. Number 10 going for Jenkins, the fastest man on the team. These little rascals had seven games of 100 yards or more in a four-year career. That's o catching. Oakland leads Atlanta 19-0 with 19 seconds left to play in the first half. Jack Falk for the Rams said that after Mazzetti started kicking those field goals, bartenders all over California started showing up at the Rams on us to kick. <laughs> 19 seconds left to play first half. As Mazzetti loosens, the Falcons have one more timeout remaining. You ever run into a kicking bartender before? I've been kicked out by the bartender. <laughs> One more timeout left. Markowski fires. That might be a trap. It is. 13 seconds left to play. They probably will one, run one more play. And they use that timeout. Watch Big John Matusik, who's been hurt all year with a deltoid muscle. That's the upper arm. It's been ripped. Look at 72. He's got dead aim on it. Looks like he's getting healthy. You talk about big. He is huge. Tusek is listed at 6'8", 275, and that might be conservative. Lehman Bennett, doing that gum will work out. One more play, then the timeout, and then the field goal attempt by Mazzetti. Pass was intended for Dennis Pearson. Flag is down back by Steve Bartkowski. He's got his helmet off now. Charles Filiaw put the pressure on him. And that might be roughing the passer. Well, Filiaw came in, and of course, we said he blocks out the sun when he stands next to you. Now, Bartkowski's a big fella at six, four and a half. And Filiaw will be six foot nine or ten, and they said he's well over 300 pounds. Looks like the quarterback's got a little blood coming from the lip there. He does. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 77, defense, first down. Atlanta has a first down, now eight seconds left to play. The line of scrimmage to 14. There's Filio, and let's look at what happened. He's right in the center of the screen. He's being double teamed by Van Note and Scott, but he staggers out to the left side. Now, that's like a runaway tractor trailer to come over the top of you. There he is. With eight seconds to go and a timeout left, 
What's that thing you're sucking on? Is that a pacifier? What is that? I was afraid to ask. The Falcons have the football. Barkowski dropped. Barkowski fires toward the corner. Good coverage. Alfred Jenkins, the intended receiver, Henry Williams. Jack Tatum back on the coverage, and now here comes Mazzetti with three seconds left on the clock. Also, Monty Jackson in there, the former Ram, who hasn't exactly been the spotlight of attention around here. Here's a great play by Mankowski, just throws it into the corner. Jenkins, even Jenkins couldn't get to it. Good coverage. Here is Mazzetti with John James Holden. Three seconds left on the scoreboard clock in the first half. Raiders lead it 19 0. It'll be a 32-yard field goal effort by Tim Mazzetti. And again, Mazzetti is wide, this time to the left. He missed once before to the right. And the holder is John James, the putter. So they do understand one another's problem. And Mazzetti has problems at the moment. He's missed two. As Tom Flores takes his Oakland Raider team to the locker room at the half, leading 19 to nothing. Another half of football to go before a packed house at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. 19 nothing, Raiders lead. Winding down in the first half, Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel at County Stadium in Milwaukee. An 11-yard gain for Bussy gives him 52 yards. Rushing for Detroit. Lions first down. Tomlo, four for 11 passing. At this point in the game, we'll try now. Has time. Incomplete, he threw it in front of Freddie Scott. Not a good throw. Second down. No, not a very good throw. He had time to get the ball there. He short-armed him. Lions only have two timeouts left because they took one earlier when Tomlo red blitz. Lions, 25. Now we send in an extra linebacker as we look at the numbers on these quarterbacks. Not much there. Four for 12 for Comlo. Three out of nine for Whitehurst. Edwards goes out and Gano is in at linebacker for a 3-4 defense. Comlo complete. Picked up about six on the play. Getting it off to Dexter Bussey out of the backfield. Douglas and Wingo, the linebackers, converged on him. It'll be third and four. Hurry up offense now. Tom Lowe, incomplete interception. Intercepted by Douglas. It popped out of the hands of Bussey. And an alert, Mike Douglas grabbed it for the Packers and takes it all the way to the 22-yard line. Wasn't a bad throw. Bussey had the ball. Let's take a look at it. Tom Lowe comes back to Bussey, who was his second receiver. Good shot by Wingo. And there he's Douglas picking it off. Tom Lowe looking to his right here, Tim. Comes back to his secondary man, who's smacked hard in there by Wingo. Ball is lifted off by Douglas. Third interception of the season for young Mike Douglas. First down, Packers. Plenty of time to get some more points. Play action. Sack. The linebacker, Weaver, number 59, and he had to shake off a pretty good hold on him there by Leotis Harris, who practically tackled him trying to block him up. Tim, it's a good thing Weaver was there because Kaufman was wide open in the end zone. He had beaten Jimmy Allen. It is second and about 21. Fighters scrambling. Out of bounds. Picked up a couple. Under pressure. 106 to go. Third down. Dave Purefoy was after him like bees are on honey. Whitehurst did the smart thing. Save your body. Third and about 16. Well, they have only Lynn Dickey as their backup <laughs> quarterback here, too. I would think Bart Starr telling David, uh, stay alive, young man. We're, we're a little thin at that position. You could tell he didn't want to go straight upfield. The ball now at the 29-yard line of Detroit. 106 on the clock, third down. Well, they got Hunter in the game now for Ed O'Neill. Lot formation right for the Packers. Yeah. 
Swing it out. They got blockers in front of Torkelson. Torkelson inside the 15 will be short of the first down at the 14 yard line. Took a pretty good pop when he finally was stopped. Jimmy Allen, number 40. Timeout called by Green Bay. 56 seconds to play in the first half, and they are down by two points. I'll tell you, that was a good call against that sub defense by the Packers. A little quick screen out to the right side. We're going to take a good look at it. The Packers get their offensive lineman out front to the right side. Whitehurst looking downfield, dumps it off to Torkelson. Run those defensive backs off, and you have nothing but linebackers in the way. Well, David Beverly comes in. Fourth down and two yards to go. Chester Marco will attempt the field goal with Beverly holding. And of course, if he is successful, the Packers can go in front. They're spotting it at the 22 yard line. A 32 yard try from Marco. Good. It is good. And so the Boobers now are cheering for Chester Mark Cole and missed earlier. And has now sent Green Bay in front with 52 seconds remaining here in the first half. The Packers have 10. The Lions have nine. And we have a ball game, Tim. We sure do. Next week we'll have some more for you on CBS. Our regional action will be like thus. Green Bay will be at Tampa Bay. Philadelphia will be at Washington, and we have given you that the other way around. Washington is the home team next week. Chicago at Minnesota, Detroit at New Orleans. The Giants are in Kansas City, St. Louis at Dallas, Atlanta at San Francisco. Consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Don't forget all the action begins with the NFL today. Brett, Jane, Irv, Jimmy the Greek, and Jack Whitaker. The Lions still have two timeouts. They have time to put points on the board. Marco will kick it off. Luther Blue, Ken Calicut. Now the deep man for the Lions, so they've got time to do something. Calicut from the 10. Back to the 21. John Thompson, reserve tight end, stops him there. Lions will start with 48 seconds to play. Rookie tight end John Thompson from Utah State. Well, he put a hit on him, too. So Jeff Comlo has the plays from Monty Clark. 48 seconds on the clock. 10 to 9. The Packers lead on the field goal by Marco. Open is Scott. Freddie Scott to the 42-yard line of Detroit. Johnny Gray made the tackle. 35 seconds in ticking. 21 yard gain. Bussey and King are the running backs. Flags down. The Packers across the line. Little Edwards jumped off sides. That'll stop the clock for the Lions. They still have two left. Earl Edwards, a veteran, picked up with all of the injuries to the Packers defense. They signed him as a free agent. His last team had been Cleveland Brown. 11th year veteran in the NFL from Wichita State. He's always been a, a real good pass rusher. That's why the Packers have him in there on this situation. Contact before the snap, 73. Defense, first down. First and five. The ball moved up to the 48 yard line of Detroit. Wide left goes Washington. Scott Wright. Complete to Freddie Scott, out of bounds at the 42-yard line of Green Bay, 22 seconds to go. That's a fine throw in there, good call. That time Scott working man-on-man -on, -man on Hood also gets a timeout by getting out of bounds. Leonard Thompson brings the play in. Comlo waiting for uh, Washington to leave, but Washington's going to stay, and Dexter Bussey goes out. So three wide receivers are in now for the Lions. I think Calicut's in, in, the, in the ball game too, Tim. 
first down. No, he's not. Now that's Thompson, 39. That's Thompson. Now Gene Washington, the third wide receiver, huh. lines up over there. Seems to be a bit of confusion on this play. Oh, no. Well, there was a lot of confusion. <laughs> not just a bit. Well, this is a new look for the Lions. Three receivers to one side. Be interested to see what they do out of this. Well, as uh, you well know, Roman, we've seen a number of teams are going to that uh, flood one zone, throw everybody down there, and hope something tips in your favor in the final seconds. But with 22 seconds, I think it'd be Ball a little early to go for that. Quarterback, offense, first down. Come to be known as the uh, Big Ben play in uh, some circles. In Philadelphia, they call it the Harold Carmichael play. <laughs> And the Hail Mary. First and 15. Three wide receivers out to the left. Screen pass intended for Horace King. He was already down when the ball landed. Almost looked as though he's throwing it to number 61, the big guard. Homer Elias. <laughs> he knew enough not to catch it. Well, they tried to fool him. They put all three guys straight down the pipe. Going to come with a little screen pass. Gano comes in at linebacker. Edwards goes out. The Packers go to the 3-4. Second and 15. Scott wide left. Tomlow up the middle for David Hill, and it's incomplete. Looks like Hill tried to one-hand it. And he just dropped it. Yeah, he should have had the ball. They had a... Uh, middle linebacker blitz, which opened up that middle area. Uh, evidently, it's his right shoulder that's bothering him because he never raised it to catch the ball. Well, we mentioned he had a shoulder injury, and uh, there he, it is, Tim, right there. He's too good a receiver to make that kind of an attempt unless there that shoulder is bothering him. I would say so because he's their leading receiver, plays both ways all the time, run and pass. Third down. Robert Barber, number 70, back at the Lions, 45, with eight seconds to play in the half. Boy, Barber blew right by Carl Baldisweiler there. 13-yard loss. Lions take the timeout. They've got one more try here with eight seconds remaining. Tomlow looking downfield. Doesn't really have much time as you see Barber coming from the left side. Tomlow does a good job of just holding on to the football. Well, you can see our view uh, somewhat impeded every now and then by that poster. <laughs> <You're> right? <laughs> well, that keeps us busy. And uh, the Lions, with one more shot, maybe we'll see the real big band. Now they've got the punter in. Now, Wider will stand at the 30-yard line. What do you think? Uh, would you have gone one more time here, Roman? You had the ball out there? Well, I think with the record that I was standing with, I might have chanced it. Throw it deep enough, the odds against a return are a little slender. I'd say this is a little surprising when you're That's probably going to take eight seconds on the clock to get one deep. Well, Monty Clark gambled fourth and one on the opening series. This time, he didn't. And <laughs> what can you say? Look at this. Look at this. That is uh, Ulysses Norris, number 80, reserve tight end, who took an old-fashioned two-handed forward pass from Ed O'Neill. What a play. <laughs> what a play. Meanwhile, Larry Swider, the punter, had a heck of a time fielding a low pass from center. We had a number of things that were unusual on that play. Would you say <laughs> that, that fair description? You couldn't have drawn that <laughs> on the board. No way you could have planned that play. <laughs> Well, meanwhile, there must have been a flag down, too, which uh, caught up in that action in the backfield. I didn't see the, the flag go, but there's some discussion with the officials. Illegal kicking, a loose ball, offense, penalty crime, the half is over. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said that with, with a certain amount of gratitude. <laughs> well, here's an interesting finish to the half. The ball bounces to Swider. <laughs> Look like soccer. Watch, Watch this, this pass. Oh, geez. Great play. Nice catch. Good stiff arm. Good hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's entertainment. That is entertainment. And so the half comes to an end. 
with the Green Bay Packers holding on to their 10 to 9 lead. And uh, they should have thrown the, the long ball with the final play of the half. It, it couldn't have turned out much worse than that. At halftime here at County Stadium in Milwaukee, the Packers 10, the Lions 9. You saw it on CBS Sports. Roller skating isn't a fad, it's a sport. And here's the key. Lex Kane winning the men's freestyle at the 1979 U.S. Roller Skating Championships. Next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular takes you to West Germany for the World Roller Skating Championships. Top skaters from Europe and the Americas vie for world honors. Then see super heavyweights in action in the world's strongest men competition. Another super Saturday of sports. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger with Jane Kennedy and Irv Cross. And uh, Irv, uh, what about the turnover bowl? Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, how many turnovers? About 13 in that game? 13 turnovers all total. Of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers themselves lost the game, but the ball nine times. And there's a score right there, 34 to 10. And anytime you turn over the ball, Five times the basic rule in pro football, you're going to lose. Of course, take a look at some of the action. Number 53, Dennis Winston, you know, catches the ball here, and for the Pittsburgh Steelers, can't quite get upfield. They wind up settling for a field goal, and they lead 13 0. Anderson hands the ball off to Pete Johnson. He rambles in for a touchdown, and they have a 13 3 lead at this point. The kickoff return, hit, fumble, number 59, recover, picks it up, and runs it in for a score, and Cincinnati now leads 20 3. Bradshaw hands off to Franco Harris. He's hit, coughs it up. Jim LeClaire picks it up, goes in for a touchdown, 27-3. The old turnover ball we're talking about. Ken Anderson going to 83. Nick Walter who runs it in, but again, too little, too late. And Pittsburgh winds up going down 34-10. And the Washington Redskins came from behind in the closing seconds to beat James' favorite team, the Cleveland Browns, 13-9. Here is Joe Theismann. He's the toast of Capitol Hill. It's Clarence Harmon, who runs it down at the Cleveland 25-yard line and recovered his own fumble. Here's Brian Seip, underrated quarterback, good receiver here. Dave Logan, down to the Washington three-yard line. Calvin Hill then barged in for the Brownie touchdown, and Cockroft missed the extra point. Then it was Theismann pulling back, looking for McDaniel, and McDaniel breaks free of two tacklers, and he gets down to the Cleveland one yard line and they had to settle for a field goal they stopped him on three running attempts so with time running out Theismann had Harmon in the middle and he hit him with the payoff pitch and the Redskins drive their record to five and two and next for them the Eagles all finals New Orleans 42 Tampa Bay 14 and here's the Eagles score 24 20 now over St. Louis Montgomery today 25 carries 117 yards and one touchdown San Francisco 16, New York Giants 32, followed by the name of Phil Sims. Had quite a day. More on that in a moment. Washington over Cleveland, 13-9 was the final. And once again, for the 20th straight time, Miami beats Buffalo 17-7. And there it is, Cincinnati 34, Pittsburgh 10. And Houston over Baltimore, 28-6. Who will coach the Colts next Sunday? Might be a change there. New England in Chicago beats the Bears and Walter Payton 27-7. Three touchdown passes for Grogan. At the half, Oakland ahead of Atlanta, 19 to nothing. And of course, the game you're enjoying, Green Bay, just a point ahead of Detroit, 10-9. Denver shutting out Kansas City. That's a bit of a surprise, making it look easy. One other partial, 7-3, San Diego over Seattle. And of course, tonight, it'll be Dallas against Los Angeles. And Jay, now tell me about this young man. Not since Broadway Joe Namath has the town of New York been able to celebrate a quarterback like it'll be toasting Giants rookie Phil Sims tonight. 
In his second start today, Sims recorded his second victory, an easy 32-16 win over San Francisco. Paul Horning, a former Golden Boy himself, talked to the rookie sensation right after the game. Jane, there's the star that was born today here in East Rutherford, New Jersey, Phil Sims. 17 out of 32, 300 yards, two touchdowns. Phil, congratulations, and you really picked up the blitz well. It was unbelievable. Well, thank you, Paul, for, for the congratulations. And, uh, you know, uh, we expected them to blitz me today. We Tampa Bay did it last week and had real good success with it. So we worked hard on it all week, and we, pre we were prepared for them to do it. And when they did it, we hurt them with it. So I think it kind of slowed them down pretty much in the second half. How about the 20-yard touchdown, Ron, when they blitzed the safety? Man, you went right under him. Well, yeah, that was – I think we had a good little good luck on that one. Uh, he came in, and we didn't quite – I don't think our wide receivers read it. And uh, I just – accidentally got away from him and everybody was on man coverage so I just walked into the end zone. One last question Phil, were you ready to play today? I know you've been sitting on the sidelines four or five weeks, got your first start last week. Were you anxious to throw the football today? Yeah, I, I, to be honest I was real anxious. I was, you know, I've been I prepared hard all week and I was just I was just hoping we'd have a good day throwing today, you know, for myself and for the team. So now teams can't come up and key the run on us like I think San Francisco did today. He certainly did, and New York is going to be partying tonight. Oh, indeed. <laughs> NFL Today will be right back after these few words. Bert Quint brings the story home. We call him the fireman because he's best when the heat is on. Cronkite and Company, only on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS. All right, Baltimore leading Pittsburgh right now, one to nothing. They're in the bottom of the fifth, and let's check in on those amazing Philadelphia Eagles. Dick Vermeil has put together a powerhouse. First of all, they knocked Jim Hart out of the game, and so Pasarkowitz came in, and a great play here by Mel Gray of the St. Louis Cardinals, who got loose. This play covered 78 yards, and put St. Louis up by six, 13-7. So then the pressure was on, and the main runner for the Eagles is Wilbert Montgomery. And he gets a lot out of a little, doesn't he? Here he comes again, this time for the score. And Philadelphia jumps into the lead, 17-13. Then there was a fumble, and the Cardinals resumed the lead. And Billy Campfield finally got the score. That won it. And next week, Philadelphia will take on the Washington Redskins, and Irv Cross is predicting a rout. <laughs> I'm predicting the Eagles are much improved and could very well win it. They're as good as their record, 6-1. Of course, down in uh, Tampa Bay today, we had two games. In the halftime, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer New Orleans Saints score was 0-0. It ended up 42-14 New Orleans. Ricky Bell, who carried the ball 10 times today and gained 101 yards, breaks off his right tackle here for a 49-yarder in the third quarter. A few plays later, Doug Williams gets his offense going with a pass to number 81, Isaac Hagens, who makes a catch, touchdown, and he leads 7-0. Archie Manning knows how to get his offense going when he needs it. Goes to Tony Galbraith who throws the ball upfield to Wes Chandler, the most dangerous wide receiver in football today, who makes a nice reception, setting up a scoring opportunity for Archie Manning. Manning rolling to his left in the third quarter, goes in, it's the first score of the game for the Saints, and scored right just, at this point is 7-7. Number 34th, Galbraith, goes over his right guard for a touchdown, 14-7 New Orleans. From this point on, it's all New Orleans. Manning goes to number 85, Henry Childs, another touchdown. 21-7 New Orleans, and Manning's not finished yet. Goes to number 34, Galbraith, who breaks off his right guard, goes upfield for a touchdown, and they find up, wind up winning the ball game, 42-14. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers now have lost two games. You know sometimes how when a punt return man fumbles the punt, and the coverage will come past him, and then he'll turn in a great return? Watch Nathan of Miami. He's going to return this punt this afternoon against Buffalo. Now watch what he does. He's going to make a good catch. He's not going to fumble the ball. Watch him hesitate here. Now, pass one, slip the second tackler, and pick up that escort over there on the sideline. Shift that ball so it's not fumbled as he gets jarred on that side on the field. Good speed. And he is in an 86-yard return for Nathan and the score. Miami led. And here comes big fella, Larry Zonka. Glad to be back home. Good Hungarian food in Miami. Rolling hooks on the board, but too little too late. 17-7. Miami. For the 20th straight. Hey, hooks with good effort. I had noticed that. Or a good second effort. Let's send you back to the stadium. We'll see you afterwards if there's any time.
John, if let's put on a headset, the three of us will just sit here and watch this second half, huh? And of course, with John Madden, who had such an outstanding career here as the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. And what a good man he is. Ready to kick off. Tim Mazzetti for the Atlanta Falcons. And John Madden is going to be sitting with us here in the second half. to the 40. He is finally brought down by Tim Mazzetti, the man who did the kicking. But all the way down to the Atlanta Falcons five-yard line is Brunson. There's the kickoff, and here he goes from his own five. Well, he's averaging 33 and a half yards. He'll had a long gainer of 50. Remember a few years ago in Kansas City, he was really one of the most dangerous run back people this side of Upchurch, I guess. Young guy, also from Colorado. I think he learned how to run at uh, about 5,500 feet or something. Great run back and great blocking to get him out there. That's a pretty good way to start that second half, isn't it, John Madden? That's a great way, and I see Art Shell's back in there now, and I know the Raider coaching staff are very happy about that. He just wants to play. He thought he might play some flanker today, too. He's got four or five speed, doesn't he? Sure does. Mark Van Egan, Raider, touchdown. Off the favorite side, Mr. Upshaw, Mr. Shell. There they are. That's what I was saying. They're glad to have Art Shell back in the first play of the game. They run right at him. Get a look at Van Egan's pants. Where's all the blood coming from? That cut on his nose, I guess. He loves that. He likes it rough, huh, yeah, John? He sure does. Breach the kick out of the hole of David Hum. Six to nothing. And the Atlanta Falcons, shocked at the opening of the second half, really have their work cut out for them now. Well, we go to the fifth inning in Pittsburgh. Rapidly paced ball game, no score. Two hits in the game, both belonging to the Pirates. Gary Renicky will be leading things off for the Orioles and with more play by play. The big D, the twin D. Double D, <laughs> D squared. And take your pick, Don Drysdale. All right, Al. Gary Renicky to lead it off, and there's Mrs. Renicky. And you know that the wives are all hoping that they can go back home tonight, world champions. It'll be Renicky, Desense, and Dower in that order. Now this is a man Rucka must be very careful of. He's got home run power, hit 25 of them on the season. And the scouting reports on him, Rucker is familiar with, but. Oh, that's a National League strike by an American League umpire. Well, you've got him working on the inside. You've got him working with that inside chest protector. And you're going to get lower strikes from those kind of umpires. And here you take another peek at it. Right there. 0-1 to Renicky. Changes low, the count one and one. Renicky, he's a pull hitter. We mentioned before that during the course of the year, that he has hit home runs, he hits them in bunches. Despite the scouting report that Rucker has closely studied, Renicky is still lesser known. To up, up the alley, Moreno's got to hurry, and he can't get it, has to play it off the wall. Renicky on his way for two, and he'll make it with a double. Now that is the first hit as you look at Mrs. Renicky. You know, she's happy. Gary standing at second base. Now that is the first Baltimore hit of the afternoon. A leadoff single. Check that leadoff double by Renicky standing at second base. And now you've got Desense. And here's where execution comes in. Desense should be trying to move that ball to the right side. Now I'm convinced after Howard just said what he did that this is tape delay. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're talking about Renicky will get the hit. And he sure did that. He got the double up the alley, standing at second base. Desensei stands in. He struck out his first time at bat. 
One ball and no strikes. Again, the scores. Miami rebounding after two losses. 17-7 over the tough Buffalo. The Bengals with their first victory crushing injury riddled Pittsburgh. Then, of course, what a beauty that pitch was. New England giving it to the Chicago Bears. Philadelphia giving it to the Cardinals coming from behind to do it. Tell you, those Eagles are amazing. A ball and a strike to DeCense with Renneke at second. Nobody out. Line drive. Gooder can get it. Base hit right field. Parker will come to the plate. It'll be cut off by Stargell and Baltimore as runners at first and third with nobody out. Garner went as high as he could go. Bill tried to time his jump perfectly on a little looper. It looked like at that point he might have a chance. But that's as high as he can possibly go. Just barely deflects it. And of course the runner at second. Renicky had to hold. And then be held at third. Well runners at the corners with Renicky at third. And DeCense at first. The first scoring threat for Baltimore. Nobody out. And all of a sudden, they might get some action down in the bullpen. You see Nicosia pointing out the infield and the up the middle with Garner and Foley. They set for two. Madlock a few steps behind the bag at third with Stargell holding to Sensei at first. The outfield all straight away. Dower popped to the first baseman. Stargell his first time at bat. 0 for 1. One ball and no strikes to count. So we sly old fox patiently waiting Wry little twinkle in the eye sometimes looks like a leprechaun runner goes and it's foul away a weaver playing hit and run with Dower and the sensei well, there is tomorrow night's, or I should say Tuesday night's starting pitcher. If they should go that far, he was scheduled right-hander Bert Blylevin, but Chuck Tanner knows that if he doesn't win today, you forget Tuesday night. It's all over. One and one the count to Dower. Two and one. Renicky at third. With DeCense at first. Renicky led off with a double here in the fifth. And DeCense, a little looping line drive over the glove of the second baseman, Phil Garner. Nobody out, no score. And keep DeCense close. Runner goes again. Garner underhands to Foley. Back to Stargell. Double play. Renicky scores. Baltimore leads it one to nothing. Well, Dower with the infield at double play depth. He knows the ground ball is going to score a run, and Garner is able to get there. He was moving toward second. And over to Foley in time for the force and back on to Stargell for the double play. But interestingly enough, the only run in the game on the double play as we take a look again, coming in hard at second base, the sensei to take out Foley, but he still gets a strong throw over to Stargell. But it's one to nothing Baltimore. And the catcher, Rick Dempsey, stands in. Pass ball away. One and the count. Key point is they got the run. They continue to make their hits count, even though the hits have been fewer than the number of pirates. One ball, one strike to Dempsey. He bounced to third his first time at bat, 0 for 1. Chuck Tanner, you've got to feel for Chuck. Two balls in a strike. You might have tuned in late. This is Tanner, Chuck's mother, passing away this morning. His ball club down three games to one. There's the breaking pitch for the strike in the count 2 2. We could see the distraction all over the clubhouse, dugout. There's Kent, who worked again last night and gave up those hits to Lowenstein and Crowley. 
A full count to Dempsey. Three balls, two strikes, two outs are running for Baltimore. They lead it one to nothing. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Hard base hit left field. So that double play Dowa hit into looms very large now. Even so, Dempsey getting on is a boon for the birds because they get Flanagan out of the way and can begin the next the inning Mike with Garcia. Now here is Mike Flanagan. And that's exactly right. You love to have that pitcher come up and lead off the inning if you possibly can. There's Mrs. Flanagan. That's the young lady you met in the up close and personal in the pregame show. Breaking pitches low to Flanagan. He fly to center his first time at bat. Mike is 0 for 1. He was 0 for 4 opening night. But he said he swings a bat pretty good. 2 and 0 the count. In the inning, the leadoff double by Renneke. The little looping line drive. Base hit to right by DeSensei. Put runners at first and third. Dower hit into the. There's Blylevin in the bullpen. Dower hit into the double play with a run scoring, and that's where we stand. Two balls and a strike. Bert Blylevin scheduled to start on Tuesday night if there is a Tuesday night, but he's going now. Two and two the count. Say one thing for Mike. He means business up there. He fancies himself a hitter. He turns it loose. Now we saw Scott McGregor, too. He's a pretty good looking hitting pitcher. And the count goes full at three and two. And the full count. Runner at first. Dempsey will be going with the pitch. Stargell will move in and play in behind. Harvey Haddix, Chuck Tanner, runner goes, foul away. Haddix, of course, the pitching coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Giants winning their second of seven. Tampa Bay losing their second of seven. Washington beating Cleveland. And what a job Bobby Bethard has done for the Redskins. And putting that team together, they have won five of seven. Runner goes, pitch just outside, and Rooker thought he had him struck out, and so did Nicosia. Now Flanagan walked. Last thing in the world you want to do. Runner now in scoring position. There you take another look at it. Boy, oh, that's a close oh, bit. It really was. But in the meantime, Garcia, clearly a hot hitter. Six RBIs in the series, six for 12 in the series, coming to the plate. Rucker, his first inning of trouble. He had not allowed a hit until this, the fifth inning. Kiko 0 for 2 this afternoon. 1 and 0 the count. Side and the count two and zero. Oh. Oh, all of a sudden, home plate starting to bounce around a little bit on Jim Rooker. You saw Chuck Tanner. He is taking the cap off, and that means a signal to the bullpen. He's, is he ready? Bounce to Foley. He'll underhand to Garner, and the side is retired. But Baltimore comes up with a run in the fifth inning, and after four and a half, it's now Baltimore one and Pittsburgh nothing. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. It is 10 to 9 for the Packers over the Lions at halftime. Well, uh, as it's common around the entire National Football League these days, tailgating parties prior to the game have become just part of life at NFL stadiums. And we're going to show you how they do it here in Milwaukee, where, uh, boy, they go at it, as you can see.
Well, they're pretty serious about their tailgate parties here in Milwaukee. That's quite a show. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Ray Guy set to kick off to, or in the direction of, Dennis Pearson. Back deep for the Atlanta Falcons. Guy hangs it high. Well, he does get it nice. Right to the goal line. Add to the goal line is right. Was Rufus Bess who almost took Pearson's head with him. Rufus Bess, watch out of the left side now. See where this comes. This is a legal one. No face mask, John. What do you think? Yeah. It's legal. You know, they're getting very tight on those blows to the head now. In the first half, we had three of them. This was like getting up off the deck and knocking the guy down. The next one coming out for the opening bell. The score like that. It's a shocker. First down Atlanta at their own 21, and Barkowski knows what he's got to do. Mayberry is converged on by two open tacklers, Ted Hendricks and number 36, Mike Davis, the first one to hit him. You see that pair get all the way to the outside from the nose position, John, and get into that tackle on the outside. Watch he's, number 74. He's a great pursuit man. You know, he plays the whole line of scrimmage. He doesn't just play the middle and from tackle to tackle. He plays from sideline to sideline. Second down situation for Barkowski and his Falcons. They need eight for a first. They need some points on the scoreboard rather quickly. Just a battle enough for a first down before he was knocked backwards. It was Alfred Jenkins hit by Monty Jackson. One time it looked like the middle linebacker, Johnson, blitzed late. Why would he get a late blitz on that? Did, did, did you notice that? Watch yeah. number 58 now. It's a delayed blitz. What he tries to do is waiting to see what the back does. If the back stays in and block, blocks in, he's going to come. He's released the responsibility, huh? That's right. Must be a great feeling. <laughs> That's what they all want. Do whatever I want. Right. Free of responsibility. Yes. Third and two. Mayberry is one of the backs. Kane is the other. Barkowski to throw. And when Kane makes the reception in Atlanta first down, out to about the 34-yard line. Swung both backs out. Actually almost had him cross. As they fanned out of the backfield, he hit the second one, sort of a trailer. I hadn't seen that pattern yet by Atlanta. That's the first time. It looks like that's what they're trying to do this half, is to come out and get their backs out of the backfield and hit them and let them run away. Mark Van Egan over talking to David Hum. Hum with the headset on. What other team in pro football has two left-handed quarterbacks? You know? I'm trying to think of... Uh, how many left-handed quarterbacks are there? I can't think of any. Barkowski to Kane again. And Kane will have another top in first down. Jed Hendricks shoved him out of bounds in front of the Oakland bench. Toomey really put a big rush on. To the right of your screen now, watch number 67. And he keeps going. It must have been legal. The official's looking right at it. The ball was on the way. Kane looks like he's going to be playing a lot of football for Lehman Bennett. Woo! Historic. The late blitz again by Johnson. It was the same thing. It was another delayed blitz by Johnson. Kane is a rookie from USC, 6'1, 205. And Mayberry gets down to about the 46 yard line of open. Stopped again by Dave Pear. Boy, that was a good trade, John. That, they pair. that sure was a good trade. That was one of the things that, that we needed at Oakland was a tackle. We had a number of, of ends, and we needed a tackle, not only his nose tackle, but also a four-man line tackle. And Dave Pear is able to do both. He's a big effort guy, too, and he gives you everything. Second and five as Barkowski drops back on that good protection this time. It finally does break down, but he's got the ball to move there. Flag, the penalty flag is down on the right-hand side of the field, not close to where the reception was made. We'll just have to wait and see what it was. Monty Johnson on the tackle. I think Alfred Jenkins was held up down here, number 84. He's very fast, and 
They only have one chuck within the first five yards, and it looks like Lester Hayes chucked him after that five-yard distance. Holding number 37 defense declined. First down. I thought I thought you started chucking at five and did it all the way down the field. <laughs> <laughs> It's a if, very, the, if the officials aren't watching, you do. And that's what you did. <laughs> the only way we could play, I can't believe these backs are this good. This is very difficult now. We didn't have that rule then. You could hit them anywhere in the stadium. That's, you why you hit, that's why you hit me going into the tunnel at time. 11.34 left third quarter. First and 10 for Atlanta at the Oakland 27. The Falcons. And Barkowski beats Hendricks blitz. Jenkins has it. Monty Jackson, the nearest tackler, but Alfred Jenkins made the deception for the Falcons. Might be enough for a first down. I mean, one of the great throws that number 10 has made all day. Big rush by Stark Hendricks. Steps inside, Browning goes by. And a great catch by a very dangerous receiver. Raiders have done a good job on Jenkins. They've also done a good job on their pass rush. It was enough for Atlanta first down. Line of scrimmage will be the open 16 as the Falcons are out in a hurry. Lehman Bennett continually signaling to Barkowski. As Kane, flag goes down, Kane gets inside the 10 to about the 6. Jack Tatum on the tackle, but a penalty marker is down. The hole opened up because of holding. Plus, the Oakland Raiders were in their four-man defensive line, which is their pass rush defense. Is that Scott at left guard that was doing that? Dave Scott. Big Dave. Number 86, oh, offense, oh. first down. It's Jim Mitchell, one of the best blocking tight ends in football. World Series score, Baltimore won to Pittsburgh, nothing after five. You know, this is the only day out of the year where you've got baseball, football, basketball, hockey, tennis, and golf all going on at the same time. Day for sports. It's almost a Super Sunday. Super Sunday, of course, will come in January. And you'll see the Super Bowl on CBS. Intercepted by Lester Hayes, intended for Wallace Francis, number 89. Six foot one, 195 pounds. Markowski faces a second down situation now, and 20 yards to go for the first. Line is driven to 26. John, you're looking for a blitz? No. No blitz. Game to the 15. exciting city, a city that won't stand still. But what if in the midst of all this hustle bustle, suddenly a man collapsed? A heart attack. He stops breathing. Would you know how to save his life? I'm Doug English from the Detroit Lions, and I'd like to show you one way the people of Detroit are saving lives. It's called CPR, a volunteer program of the Red Cross supported by the United Way. CPR is short for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. 
knowing how to administer it could mean the difference between life and death to someone. I recently lost a member of my family to a heart attack. That's why I know the importance of this program. That's a lesson we all should learn. And this is just one of the hundreds of United Way programs made possible by your support. It works here in Detroit, and it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Right? Right. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. We're ready for the second half, a one-point football game. The Green Bay Packers lead it 10 to 9. Benny Ricardo will kick it off. The Lions to our left in white. The Packers to our right in green. Jim Ryan and Roman Gabriel at County Stadium, where shadows are now completely across the playing surface here. Tough hit on the short kickoff. It was Howard Sampson, number 36, reserve defensive back, returning it for the Packers. Wally Fasut and Eddie Cole made the tackle on him at the 30-yard line of Green Bay, and you can see they were about as close as you can get as it's reflected on the scoreboard. 152 total yards for Detroit to 134 for Green Bay. Neither team able to get much of a pass off in going. Tomlo 7 for 18, Whitehurst 4 for 10. 10 to 9 the score, the Packers in front, first down Green Bay at their own 30-yard line. The motion is under Thompson 89. Back this way comes Sampson. Simpson, pardon me. Simpson, and the 48 gets to the 32-yard line. Nate Simpson from Tennessee State. And just if you've joined us along the way, you know both of these teams are injury-wracked. The Packers, without both their starting running backs, Turnell Middleton is dressed, but has a slightly separated shoulder. They're holding him out this week. And, of course, Barty Smith uh, injured his knee during practice this past week. is gone for the season. They started Steve Atkins for Middleton. He has since been replaced by Nate Simpson, who is running well. Eric Torkelson is running in Barty Smith's spot. Play action. Whitehurst. Screen to Torkelson. Has a block. Has the first down over the 40-yard line. Pulled down by Baker. Help from the linebacker, Charlie Weaver, number 59. First down. Now let's take a look here. A little play action fake to the Torgelson. Setting the screen up right side. See the lineman coming out. There's a good block out front on Ed O'Neill. That's another good block there on the linebacker Brooks. The Packers running this play quite effectively. By the way, fans of the rule book who wondered if the half put in on a penalty as it did. It was an offensive penalty, illegally kicking the ball by Detroit. And the half can end on an offensive penalty, not on a defensive penalty. This is Simpson again, picking his way and running well. Look at that move. Away from William. Simpson, and he fell down over the 45, or he might have had some more. Excellent running by Nate Simpson to the 40-yard line of Detroit. Weaver finally covered him there. 19-yard gain. Oh, this time they're running strong right. Simpson cuts back. The Lions over-pursue. Watch this block downfield by Andra Thompson on Luther Bradley. Right there, fine block by the receiver to get Simpson more yardage. An earlier one by Lofton, number 80 as well. And now Simpson has himself 76 yards on eight carries. First down the pack. Opening series, second half. Torkelson pulled down by Weaver after a gain of about eight. Key on that play, and Tim. And there, too. Sorry, Ron. No, the key on that play was Mark Concar had a fine block. He drove Al Baker right out of the picture. Fine block in there by Concar, who's been having trouble with injuries. Darrell Goforth goes limping to the sidelines, number 57. He'll be replaced by Mel Jackson, number 71, for Green Bay at left guard. Second and two. High formation for the Packers. Markelson the lead back. All kinds of motion. The tight end, Kaufman, was downfield before the ball was snapped. Kaufman, number 82. <laughs> ah, that's a tough play by the Packers. In good position, jump off sides. They were second, one and a half. Now they hurt themselves. They put themselves in a passing situation. Steve Atkins has come in at running back. First time he's been in since back in the first period. He started the game, number 32. Green 
Bay. Offside, 82, offense, second down. Second and seven for Green Bay. The ball at the 38 of Detroit. 11.55 to go here in the third quarter. Well, Whiters wanted the ball. Karen didn't want to give it to him. Mix up in the signals and flags down again. You know, I almost have to think that Whitehurst forgot to count because nobody moved but him. He didn't have anything to work with, though. He had to go back in there waiting for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a bit of a long afternoon for both these uh, teams here with mistakes today. Ball start, quarterback, offense, second down. You have so many players hurt. You've got starters out of both your offensive and defensive lineup. These are the kind of things that are going to happen. Look at this. Boy, Oakland's really storming back. 26 to 6 over Atlanta in the third quarter. Second down now and 12 for Green Bay. Whiters with time. Has Atkins. Atkins is hit by Charlie Weaver, number 59. He has nowhere to go. Short of the first down, but it'll bring up third and about a yard, a little more than a yard for a first down for Green Bay. Alliance here with their sub defense. Let's take a look at the protection as Whitehurst gets back. The Lions taking away the tight end and outside receivers. Whitehurst going to his back, which he has to do in a situation like this. Big play for the Packers. Bring him back into the ball game at third and one. Third down and Whitehurst brings him out in a wing formation. Parkelson outside nicely has the first down. The cornerback Williams still can't bring him down. Parkelson battled his way to the 20 yard line. What a great effort. Eric Parkelson, the six year handyman from Connecticut. Play was designed to play was designed to come inside the tackle, but Torkelson moves outside well. Good blocking out there in front of him. Walt Williams cannot bring him down. He gains 10 more yards with Williams dragging him. Boy, what an effort. This is the kind of effort that can turn a football team on, Tim. 12 yard gain for Torkelson. Packers first down at the Lions 20. In motion Lofton. Atkins. Atkins hit by the safety, Doug Jones. And then the big guy gets in on the play. Charlie Weaver, the linebacker. Nine thirty-six to go, third period. Green Bay leads 10 to 9. Slot formation right. Atkins right up the middle. Gets to about the 13 before he popped, and Romany had that one figured. Not a bad call, a draw play from the I formation. Atkins doesn't look like he's moving too fast, though. Tim, he looks nope. a little hurt. Yes, he's limping off now, and I noticed the same thing as you did, Roman. It may be why he was replaced earlier by Simpson. We were unable to get any kind of an injury report on Atkins, but he had started so well that uh, we just expected him to stay in there. And now we bring in Walter Landers for the first time today, number 42. He's coming off a knee injury, was hurt most of last year in Clark College in Georgia. Free agent that they liked last year, and he got hurt. And he's been hurt again this year. In the slot, Lofton, left. Why left Andre Thompson? Oh, Thompson, touchdown, Green Bay. Nice play by the Packers. Tight end, Thompson. And it is 16 to 9 for the Packers. That's a great play by the Packers. They had a double slot left with the tight end lined up to the right. We get a play action fake by Whitehurst. He fakes it here. The Landers Kaufman on the right side of the screen blocks down. Jimmy Allen not able to kept, keep up with him, so Ed O'Neill has to try to cover. You'll see Allen 40 come in the picture late here. Right there, you can see his shoe. Whitehurst did a good job getting the ball to him. He was under pressure just as he let it go. Kaufman, free agent signed last year out of Kansas State. Packers let Rich McGeorge go, the 
veteran, and Thompson has taken over as a tight end, and he had 15 catches coming into the action today. Mark Cole will attempt the point after. It's good. Now well, the Packers, throwing 70 yards in nine plays, including two penalties, come up with another major score, and uh, they now lead it 17 to 9. 8.35 to go, third period. That summer all with Tom Brookshire and John Madden. Good drive. And good pass blocking for Barkowski that series, huh? Here's Zetti's kickoff. Spins around to about the 28, 29 yard line. Before Lynn came, he just made the touchdown, made the initial contact, 25 yard return. Next week, Green Bay at Tampa Bay. Is that where you'll be, John? That's where I'll be with Dick Stockton. Washington against Philadelphia, Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit at New Orleans. The Saints rolled it up big today. Giants at Kansas City, St. Louis against Dallas, where Thomas and I'll be, and Atlanta. We'll stay out here on the West Coast, move over across the bay to San Francisco to Candlestick Park with the 49ers. Still winless after that loss to the Giants today. Van Egan always seems to be going forward. John, J John, what's the family situation like now that you're not the, the coach under pressure all the time? Is it better? Or? I don't think so. They're getting tired of me now. It was nice for a week or so, and now they're tired of me. They wish I'd go back to work. They try to get you a job, huh? Yeah, they sure are. Second and six. Open Raiders have Brunson put wide to the left. And Staber drops back. Staber with all the time in the world gets Dave Casper. Casper came back to him. Boy. Casper had the first down by a mile, and then he sort of slid back away from the safety man. Does he have the kind of speed to scare those defensive backs that much? Because he didn't really drive into this. As uh, he, much could, as he could scare them with anything. Dave Casper is probably one of the greatest athletes that I've ever been around. He could do anything. He can block. He can run. He can catch. He's a super person and a super player. Look at this now. Watch upshot of the right and Dolby to the left. There is some blocking going on there. As we come back live, it was the first time Van Egan has about 8 4 up near Big Field. Bob Blaisbrook made the tackle. And look, we're going to need a cut man. Going to get Angelo Dundee to move in. <laughs> look all over his face mask, helmet strap all over his pants. Sometimes that looks worse than it is, though. It can be a very small nose. Depends on who it's on. Second down. John, you said that once in a while Casper likes to drop the first ball. He likes to get himself into sort of a, a shook situation. He plays better, you think? I'm going to catch a lot of them later. <laughs> He's really a workhorse type of player anyway. The, the more he plays, the better he gets. He's a little hyper, and after he gets a little of that out of him, then he plays a lot better. That's the reason the holdout and all. He's just now really getting into the right? Third and short yardage. Booker Russell joins Van Egan. And Russell has the Raider first down. Bright sunshine now at Oakland. Greg Brezina made the tackle. Raiders lead 26 to 6. What's the tackle by a linebacker that's played superior football for 12 seasons for Atlanta? Greg Brezina, their defensive captain, and actually calls the plays after they're relayed into it. Clarence Hawkins is now the other running back with Van Egan behind Stabler. At the 43, Staver will put it up. Oh, Raymond Chester. Another first down stopped by Bob Blaisbrook. Never seen Staver look any better. Well, this time he ran a play and sort of had to turn all the way around. 
Watch the play pass action. That turns all the way back around. Plus, when you know they're blocking well for you, John. Sure. I they do an excellent job of blocking, and we we worked an awful lot on that. We worked a lot more on our pass protection than we ever did our run blocking. When they go up on the line of scrimmage, I like the way they take them right on the line of scrimmage and keep that pocket clear. I also kind of like the way the, the snake stays in there. And again, he made a wise choice then. When they missed the handoff, he didn't try to pick it up. That thing looked hot. He's not going to do anything with it if he picks it up anyway. <laughs> He's pretty healthy, though. For the first time, everything is, all systems are go, aren't they, John? The knees and all? They sure are, but he's still not going to run with the ball. But he is, he is healthy. Was it easy to work with on a game plan at all? Super to work with. He was, he was always calm. You know, he's a lot more calm than, than I ever was. And he used to calm me down. <laughs> Second and 19 for that calm fellow. 6.22 left third quarter. The blitz was on, and Faber throws it in the direction of Casper. But really, just to get rid of it. So it's still 19 that they need, but now it's third down. Derek Jensen and Mark Van Egan now the running backs. Both of them are fullbacks. Atlanta again up uh, with an indication that they're going to blitz. Now they back off, but they still bring a bunch. Oh, that's Staber through. Brunson makes the reception. That might have just gotten him in the field goal range. Here comes Breach. Now, Brunson was with the Raiders earlier, a year ago, and this time they released him and brought him back with Bradshaw and Stewart, and everybody went down. Yes, they brought him back three weeks ago, and, and he's fit in perfectly because the Raiders needed a kickoff return man also, and Brunson has been able to do that plus the receiving part. I see that Rich Martini's out this half. The attitude's good, too, isn't it? His attitude's pretty good. He's a hard worker. He sure is. This will be 38 yards, 48 yards away for Breach. It's going to be enough. It's good. field goal for young Mr. Breach. That might be the longest of the year for him. Well, next week in the Sports Spec looks like another fine show. World Amateur Roller Skating Championships and the tough guys, strong guys, world's strongest men. 4.30 Eastern time. Mark Cole will kick it off for the Packers to our right as we look at Al Baker. It's been a busy man out there today. Showing a little fatigue. Calicut. Reverse Leonard Thompson. They got it on the left side. Thompson gets all the way to the 35, but flags are down. There's a mugging over there. Two <laughs> lions on one packer. <laughs> he had a little running room up that side momentarily. Gano made the stop. Holding signal against Detroit. They're getting a lot of excitement now in this ball game. A little reverse on the kickoff. 17 to 9. The Packers scoring here on the third period. Whitehurst to Kaufman, a 13 yard touchdown uh, pass. The first touchdown by Kaufman in the National Football League. Holding number 8 0 on the return, first down. Boy, if you're Bart Starr now, you're saying to yourself, we hold them defensively, we get the ball in good field position, we don't have to go far to put points on the board, we can wrap this thing up. Number 80 is Ulysses Norris, a reserve tight end uh, for holding. So they'll start at the 18-yard line of the Lions. Dexter Bussey, no running room there. Bussey had a good first half with 52 yards. Wingo and Gary Weaver on the tackle for the Packers. He got about two. It'll be second and eight from the 20. Buddy Scott brings in the play. You see that cast and padding on his left forearm. Wide left goes Leonard Thompson. Split right slightly is Scott. Bussey and King are the running backs. Bussey again. 
behind the blocking of Elias. Picked up about four more. Butler, the defensive end, made the stop on him. Butler, tackle. They spot it just inside the 25. It'll bring third and four for the Lions. The Lions are not straying from their game plan. There's Bart Starr. He's thinking quite a bit about this game. I know he wants it. Rick Kane in at running back. Bussy goes out. Remember, the Lions lost their starter, Bo Robinson, with bruised ribs back in the first period. Kane and King now the running back pair. Shot in motion. Rick Kane, number 32, trying for the first down, does not get it. The Packers closed up everything on that side. Wingo was there again, number 50. Steve Luke came up from safety to put the initial hit on. And Gary Weaver, number 52, good defensive work by Green Bay. The Lions are putting themselves in a hole, Tim. They continue to run the football. The Packers get good field position, put a screw on the board. Don't be difficult for the Lions to come back. Larry Swider. Standing at the 11-yard line, the deep man is Odom. At the Packers, 36. Maybe they're going to try that play again. It was a long count. What play was that? <laughs> the one that ended the first half. This is Odom. Got to the 39-yard line. He was stopped there by Dave Parkin again. He's been doing a good job downfield tackling on those kicking situations. 38-yard punt. Green Bay will start near their own 41st down. <laughs> Six to go, third period. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel in Milwaukee. Meanwhile, Oakland with a big lead over the Atlanta Falcons, 29 to six in the third period. Here it is, 17 to nine, Green Bay, and they have first down at their own 40. In motion, Andre Thompson, Landers, and Simpson are the running back. Fighters with time. Now the rush is on. Almost intercepted. The linebacker Weaver making O'Neill number 55. Had the ball in his hands, could not hold on. Well, I'll tell you, he got the pressure. That's the kind of ball you don't want to throw back across. There it is. There's Simpson running downfield, isolated on Charlie Weaver, the linebacker, and he's coming back. Once he sees Whitehurst in trouble, he's open, but Whitehurst elects to throw back to the middle, which is not too good of a decision. Second down. Whitehurst, the third-year quarterback from Furman, picked in the eighth round. His counterpart today, Kamlo, a ninth-round pick. Delaware, a rookie, two young quarterbacks. Simpson hit behind the line of scrimmage. No gain. John Brooks, rookie linebacker from Clemson on the tackle, number 53. Darrell Goforth, number 57, who went off limping, obviously bothered with an ankle, and he's showing us exactly where it hurts. It hurts right here. There's those boxing gloves the offensive linemen wear, too, that he has on his left hand to keep their hands from swelling up. Nell Jackson has been in to replace him, number 71, at left guard. Penalty against the Packers. Holy, Holy. 71. Offense, second down. The same Mr. Jackson, second and 20. Three wide receivers are in now for the Packers. Walter Tullis replacing the tight end, Hoffman. Tullis is number 87. He comes into the slot. Wide left is Andre Thompson. Wide right is Lofton. Tullis in motion. Whitehurst right has dropped Al Baker. Bubba Baker, number 60, got him around the ankles just when it looked like he might get out of there. All the way back to the 22-yard line. 
First sack that Baker has had against Green Bay in three games, two last year and one this year. That's Whitehurst looking over the coverage. He's forced out of the pocket right there by William Gay, and who's there to tie him up but Big Al Baker. Good tackle, good tackle. Diving to catch him just as he was about to get out and get himself some, some running room or some looking room. Third and very long, Green Bay. 5.26 to go here in the third period. They lead it 17 to 9. Out for Walter Landers hit immediately. No gain. Good defensive work by the Detroit Lions. I think that's Doug Jones who read that play very well. Yes, it was. There's Comlo trying to get some help from the press box. He's calling up probably the Bob Snelker. I hope he's talking to the coach and not any of the media people. He won't get any help there. <laughs> Checking on his stats. <laughs> Beverly into punt, standing at the five yard line. Calicut, Ellis awaiting it back at the Lions 40. Good defensive work by Detroit, helped by a penalty against the Packers. Forcing the punt. It's short, taken at midfield. Ellis. Ellis, good return inside the 40 to the Green Bay 38. Good field position for the Detroit Lions. Paul Rosinski, reserve linebacker, made the tackle. And with 4.27 to go now in the third period, Detroit is in good position. 17 to 9, Green Bay leading. That field goal by Breach was his longest ever. Set up by the catch by Brunson. Great guy really gets to put it. 75 yards in the air. Number one choice you made, huh? You said we need a guy that can kick it, keep us out of our own territory with the foot. That was a great choice for us. Uh, you know, there was no one else really available at that time that we thought was a legitimate first round draft choice other than Ray Guy. We thought that we wanted to help our defense in the draft, and the best way to help our defense was a punter of his caliber. A lot of people have followed suit since. It is first and 10 Atlanta. Albert Jackson. See what they did to Dave Payer. Okay, here is number 74 working against Van Note. You say his teammates have to get him psyched up sometimes and tell him it's going to be tough and everything? They have to get him psyched up. Pat Tume was telling me before the game <laughs> uh, that they both played in Tampa, and Pat started it there, and all week he'll talk about the other team center to get Dave Pear fired up. He looks like he's naturally fired up. <laughs> they had five blockers on him then. 60 minutes comes up immediately following football, except, of course, here on the West Coast. Here is Kane. Kane barrels outside the 35 to about the 38-yard line before Dave Pear, number 74, made that tackle. <laughs> Looks like he enjoys it. Barkowski back. Going deep for Alfred Jackson. And over his head and down goes the flag. Penalty marker drop. Mike Davis, did he put a hand on his back as he was heading for the turf? That's what it looked like. He looked like he that he was beat by a step, but then when he put his hand on his back is when the flag came out. I thought it only counted if it was Number catchable. 36, defense, first down. I suppose. He did give him a little shove. It's another defensive back from the University of Colorado. It's a long tradition there. First down Atlanta at the Oakland 24. Four minutes left, third quarter. The Raiders lead 29 to 6. But don't count out the Falcons as yet. Remember the finish of last year. Own set back is Mayberry. Markowski comes back. Wallace Francis struggling with the Raiders. 
after the completion. Good throw. There's Van Egan. Better get a standing eight count for him. That nose looks bad. Is it always that way, John? No, uh, he's too good looking anyway. He can <laughs> afford one of those. <laughs> you know, I was talking to Sid Gilman this past week, and Sid says one of the quarterbacks he's always wanted to coach was Barkowski because he thought the young man has such tremendous physical tools to work with. He sure does. I remember him at the University of California. He's 6'4", about 215. He can see over almost everybody. And he's got a good arm. That one was deflected and intended for Francis. With John Madden and Al Davis. And now Tom Flores. But Eddie LeBaron. General manager, Lehman Bennett. Kurt Mosier. A guy like Charlie Dayton. That's a good outfit. Barkowski. Till in Kane. And Kane gets his second touchdown of the day. This time, both backs checked and then swung out of the backfield. And Barkowski had a lot of time to pick him out, wait for him to clear. He had a lot of time, and that was the same play that they, they ran for a touchdown to the other side. It's the backs checking, coming through, and running crossing pattern. Makes a traffic problem in there, and almost a pick, isn't it? Mazzetti now, who's had a long day. Missed two field goals, missed an extra point already. I don't want to hex him. Got change to hold. And no good again. I'll tell you what, that's a long walk back to that bench. Here's a touchdown by Kane again. 29 to 12. Gary Renicki will move over to left field from his starting center field position, and Al Bumbry, who came on to pinch hit, he stays in the game and he's in center field. Earl Weaver has his best defensive outfield out there right now as they try to go to some weather here over the last four innings. This is Foley and the baby. <laughs> All way to lead it off. Low ball one. Tim is flying to center. And he has bounced to third. We flip the forward. Low ball two. Two and oh. That's all it takes. Get get these fans aroused. That's right there. That little baby. That's why Tim was so thrilled to get the new five-year contract. There's the strike, and the count goes to two and one. It'll be Foley, Parker, and Robinson. It's something to begin the season with the Mets and to wind up playing for the World Championship. That's the first ball three count that Flanagan has had on any hitter this afternoon. That shows you about what Mr. Flanagan is made of. There's a growing feeling in this ballpark now. The 3-1 pitch. He walks him. Flanagan not too happy with that call. Nor was Dempsey. Well, they've got themselves an American League umpire there. They don't have a lot to complain about. But Dave Parker, Bill Robinson, and Willie Stodgen. Sure did look like a strike, I must say. <laughs> Here's Dave Parker has struck out twice against Flanagan. Here's where the Bucks are hoping that they can get back to the form of Mr. Parker in game one when he had four hits off of Flanagan. Baltimore on top one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the six and time running out of the Bucks. You got their lineup done. Four innings to get one run. No. Plenty of time. There's plenty of time. There's a man right there that can also equalize anything that you might want to do in a hurry. Mike Flanagan. But he's human. Oh, yeah. Misses inside. There's the Baltimore bullpen. Stoddard on the left and Tiffy Martinez over on the right, the left-hander. Stoddard. Big game yesterday. And Baltimore also big come from behind win. Base hit center field. See what I mean? Foley to second, and he'll hold right there as Bumbery gets on it in a hurry. 
who can get Parker only so often. And now a tough hitter. Bill Robinson with 24 homers on the season who has already clipped Flanagan for that double to right center. Now there's nobody out. Robinson stands in one for two. You look at Parker again. And Parker after striking out twice delivering the blow here in the center field. So Parker with four hits off Flanagan in game one. Mike had his number the first two times up today. And now Robinson coming up first and second. Now Robinson has bounced to third. He doubled in the fourth. He was left stranded at second base. And here you put yourself in a position. If you're Chuck Tanner, runners at first and second, you're down a run, you're in the sixth. Do you bunt with Robinson? Do you let him hit? We'll see how they want to go. They're going to bunt. And it's out in front of the plate and a good one. Flanagan has but one play, and that's to Murray at first. The runners move up for Stargill. Chuck Tanner made the right play, the only play. Yes, sir. Got to tie this game. He's at home. You play the tie. You don't play around. And once again, Willie Stargill in a key situation. Runners on second and third. And, and Earl Weaver to the mound, Howard. One Hawkins back to the late Frankie Frisch and his classic maxim. Oh, those bases on balls. Oh, you hang around this game and you work games every day of the week throughout the course of the year. And I'll, it's amazing how many base on balls come back to score. Absolutely staggering. Well, what do you think he told them, Al? I don't know, but whatever Weaver says, Whenever he goes out, he knows exactly what's on his mind. You'll see some managers go out there, say a few words, maybe counsel with a couple of other players. But Earl goes out every single time and says, look, this is the way it is. Everybody listens. Away he goes back to the dugout. Well, you've got a great hitter up next in Bill Matlock. Two for two today. Seven for 16 on the series. Got a left hand to pitch. Here's Stargell. Misses a run. Do you pitch carefully to him? Give him nothing to hit. Put him on. Hope for the double play. Flanagan should walk him. Do you come in with a right-handed reliever? Hit hard. Well, the thing here, Stargell, if he just makes contact to any part of the infield, Pittsburgh is going to pick up a run outside of something hit hard to Desense at third. He's the He's the short man. Well, you saw Willie go for the golf ball. Hitting the low pitch again. A ball and a strike to Stargell. One out, two on. One to nothing Baltimore. We're in the bottom half of the sixth. Misses low. Two and one. Willie can atone for a lot with a base hit here. All else will be forgotten. Bumbery deep in the alley right center. Kiko Garcia is deep and behind the line at his shortstop position. Dower towards the hole between first and second. Hit well. It will score the run. There's Bumbery. Runners tag. Bumbery with a catch. Here comes Foley. Parker to third. It's a tie game at one. No quit in the box. No quit. Look at it again. Boy, Stargell stayed on that curveball night. Oh, they scratch and claw. Bumbery has no play on Foley. He's going to Parker at third, but no play to get the big man there. Now, now the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Bill Madlock already two for two. And the Buck fans come alive as they have tied it at one. One and all the count. And this guy can kill you. And the base on balls has come back to tie the game. The only man that Flanagan went to a three ball count on, he eventually walked him. That was Tim Foley. To center field, that's a base hit. Here comes Parker. It's two to one Pittsburgh. Again, he comes through. He is now eight out of 17 on the series. And with the Bucks to come on to win it, he'll be getting consideration despite some fielding lapses as the MVP. 
Oh, is he tough? Bill Madlock, he had already solved Flanagan twice today with a couple of hits. Picks up his third of the day. Madlock, and we said it before, the depth of the Pirate lineup, how they can hit. Best illustrated by the fact the man's won a couple of batting titles, yet hit sixth in the order. This is Nicosia. Madlock at first hit to the third baseman, Desense. The long throw. They got a hurry. And they're getting. Oh, what a great scoop by Eddie Murray. And for that matter, a good play by DeSensei. Today we're getting a beautifully played ball game. Look at it again, Al. Doug DeSensei making about as long a throw as you'll ever see a third baseman make, not only in foul territory, but well back of the bag. And a great scoop at first. So the Bucks score two and through six, it's two to one Pittsburgh. Oakland Raiders 29, the Atlanta Falcons 12. Tim Mazzetti set to kick off. Ira Matthews and Larry Brunson back for the Raiders. It will be uh, Matthews. After a brief collision with one of his own blockers. And finally taken down by Tom Moriarty. We did mention, though, that the Falcons are a good second-half football team. Whether it's the conditioning they go through under Lehman Bennett or whatever, they're beginning to come on, and Mazzetti has had, what, eight points that he could have had on the scoreboard. This could have been a very, very close game right now. It could be 29-20 for those two field goals and two extra points. 29-12 with three minutes, two seconds left, third quarter. Pat Summerall with John Madden and Tom Brookshire. First and ten. With the battered face, batters into the defense of Atlanta. Wilson from Lena made the tackle. Look at those pants. Like he's been running around the Georgia hillside. <laughs> Pittsburgh 2-1 to one over Baltimore. Six-inning score. The Orioles have been tough. The Falcons have two new safeties in there now. Of course, uh, Pridemore has been in there for some time. I believe that's Blaisbrook. Blaisbrook is the other, yes. This is Jensen. And the Raiders spinning back to the inside. Not enough for a first down. Three or four yards, perhaps. Fulton Kuykendall. One of the Atlanta linebackers made that tackle. Type of play. Gotcha. Here comes the Atlanta blitz. Oh, Asper. Almost broke it away. Blaisbrook on the tackle and Stapler under heavy pressure gets it to Casper. This is the simplest football pattern you can have. The Brunson goes straight through the outside man, the cornerback, and the tight end just checks out, drags behind the deep receiver. That safety man's almost got to be looking for that player. He can't cut him off. He came very close to losing Mr. Casper that time. Nothing fancy about it. And the quarterback can take a look at the play the whole way. Hawkins flanked up near the line. Van Egan is the long setback. Van Egan burrows down underneath everybody for four or five yards. Jeff Yates, the first tackler for the Falcons. How much has the game changed, John, in the 12 years? That radical changes have well, of course a lot of it had to do with the rules we're talking about the Chuck rule that changed the defensive play I think the biggest change has been moving the hash marks in so the weak side wasn't as drastic yes that made it much more difficult to play a zone defense Van Egan oh. you know, that's interesting John I was talking to Tom Kelleher who's one of the officials Yesterday, and he was saying if they took the best official they had in the NFL five years ago and sent him away and he completely lost contact with football and brought him back today, he would be the worst. He wouldn't know what was going on. That's how many changes they've had in the last five years. Have they been doing that? <laughs> well, Tom didn't say that. <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Oakland 29, Atlanta 12. We now pause for... Next Sunday, CBS Sports kicks off its NFL coverage with the NFL Today, followed by a full slate of regional games. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. One of these Ranger Ed girls was operated on, though, and she's uh, off the active list. She had a knee uh, surgery job. Raider Ed Quinn was her name, I think. There's Stabler. No 
flag this time intended for Brunson as the Falcons continue to blitz more and more and we'll see Ray Guy. Roland Lawrence really got away with a little bit of larceny that time. He made a good effort like he was going for the ball but he made some contact way beyond the five yard rule. We'll see Ray Guy's second punt of the day. Dennis Pearson back deep for the Atlanta Falcons, number 81. And again, we'll check that hang time. If he hits it, it might run off the top of the clock. His longest has been 62 yards. Must be coming, huh? Atlanta's got everybody up on the line of scrimmage, and they're trying to hurry. He got it away. Fair catch signal. Raiders down in good shape covering. Fair catch at the 15. The score at the Oakland Coliseum is the Raiders 29, the Atlanta Falcons 12. Sports spec next week, 4.30 Eastern time. Roller skating and strong guys. And uh, what the Packers don't need is another injury. Darrell Goforth just limped off to the locker room. And you're looking at Robert Kimball, a rookie wide receiver from Oklahoma, playing on the specials. He's limping off following that punt coverage. Well, Tim, the Lions in good field position. You would expect we might see some type of play action pass or some kind of pass. They haven't thrown the ball much in this second half at this point. 32 yard punt by Beverly uh, led to this good field position. Good return by Kenny Ellis. Oh. It was at the 38. Denver 17, Kansas City nothing in the fourth quarter. King and Bussy are the Lions running back. Slot formation left. Motion is Freddie Scott. Up the middle for Washington is complete. Oh, we got a flag on the play. Coy and Gray on the coverage. He had no opportunity to catch that ball. The flag is in the backfield. Offensive backfield. An apparent holding penalty against Detroit. They had it covered pretty well then. Comlo held the ball a little too long. He forced Washington to come into Johnny Gray to free safety. Took a good shot there. Rick Kane and Leonard Thompson come in. For Detroit, Bussy goes out. Washington goes out. Cal oh, 76 on a takedown. Offense, first down. Sounds like wrestling. <laughs> Carl Baldeschweiler with the wrestling move. Cal Lepore, the referee, with the call. There you see, we've had a few, 16 in all. Tom Lowe for Kane and complete. Another flag down. Kane was cut by number 52, Gary Weaver, as the ball arrived. Mike Douglas, 53, the Packers' right linebacker, jumped off sides. A little, little too edgy. Kane goes back limping. Lions with people hurt just like the Packers. Robinson left early. Gaines playing with a hamstring pull, and now Kane limping in the backfield. More like a hospital ward out there in this field today here in Milwaukee. <laughs> Offside, 5-3, defense, first down. Mike Douglas, linebacker number 53, offside to Green Bay. The Packers go back to a four-man front now. They were in a 34-man front. Last play, come back to the four-man front. First down, 15 to go. 418 to go, third period. Green Bay on top, 17 to nine. Pretty good hole up the middle for Rick Kane. Has the, the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. Charles Johnson, number 99, made the tackle on him. Not a bad call there either, Tim. A little trap right up over the center. Those tackles start an outside rush, expecting pass. That thing could split for a long game. Leonard Thompson bringing in the play. You can see him talking to Jeff Comlo. It'll be second and 11. Didn't quite get back to the original line of scrimmage. Lock formation left Lions. Tom Lowe up the middle for Thompson complete. Leonard Thompson, he'll score, touchdown. 
Leonard Thompson perfectly delivered ball from rookie Jeff Cumlo. And the Lions are right back in it. Well, you had both Fred Scott. Scott going to the corner, clearing out the underneath coverage. Let's take a look here. On the left side, Leonard Thompson coming in on a 12, about a 12 to 15 yard square in pattern. Fred Scott going to the corner, wide open. Johnny Gray a little out of position trying to go with Fred Scott. McCoy, the corner, started the coverage on him, and he was just outrun. Let's take a look at the pressure here. Kamlo, great poise for the first-year man. Smacked real good just as he kicks the ball. Danny Ricardo's point after is good. And we are back to a one-point ball game. 3.29 remaining. Third quarter, Green Bay 17, Detroit 16. Shakes in. Denver 17, Kansas City nothing. Denver starting to play tough. Jim Turner kicked his 500th career extra point. The kickers will love that information. Huh? Look, look at the Stork's hand. That looks like a Stork has a boo-boo. Light post. Will you break a thumb, did he, John? He, he broke his right thumb. He has to shake his hands left-handed now. <laughs> Seattle San Diego score 14 10 with Barkowski. Throws outside to Mayberry. Mayberry is out of bounds about the 23 yard line. Knocked out by Monty Jackson. Hit him. Just about have to throw on every down. Flag is down. Lynn Kane on that same crossing pattern out of the backfield. That's enough for a first down, but we'll check the penalty. Stopped by Monty Johnson. I'm sort of wondering how the Atlanta attack is going to work without a tight end that can get into their passing attack, John. Mitchell just doesn't get downfield much anymore. No, he doesn't. And I think the thing that they want to do to take care of that is to go three wide receivers. And I would anticipate when they get a little better field position here, if in fact they do, that we'll see three wide receivers. I bet next year in the draft that LeBaron and company leave a bit and come up with somebody about 6'4 that can run and play Legal that position. formation foul. Offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. Second down. Didn't have enough folks on the line. And right now they do not have a tight end, as a matter of fact. They are going with, with three wide receivers. That's the seventh penalty for 103 yards against Atlanta. Alfred Jackson, Wallace Francis, and Alfred Jenkins. All the game for Atlanta. Markowski with protection. The interception by number 56 of open is Jeff Barnes. Again, though, a penalty flag is down. Hold, hold everything. Just a minute. Looks like it's Oakland's choice and their choice, of course. Holding the football. Number 78, offense decline, first down. That's, that's big Mike Ken, the left tackle. He's working against Philia, the right part of your screen. It'll be 77 in black and silver. And we're going to see the interception here and maybe see the other from a different view. Another angle of that play. Now watch the left part of your screen. You'll see Philia and Ken. Well, we haven't quite seen it yet. Maybe it's not worth seeing. That was Jack Tatum that deflected the pass before it was intercepted. First and ten open at the Atlanta 23. Van Egan inside the 20 to about the 19. Robert Honeywell led the Atlanta defense. The team was rushing about what 91 or two yards now stable has got the rushing game going up to where he can he has it going and that's when he's a real surgeon the Raiders are playing with three tight ends now they have Derek Ramsey in the oh. game he's so you get three tight there. ends three tight ends and two fullbacks you ought to be able to get some running he's the big quarterback that used he, to play at Kentucky he was the quarterback at Kentucky yes 6'4 about 225 Hurdles down inside the 10. Robert Pennywell on the tackle. But Hawkins has a Raider first down. I'll never forget the man that used to wear that number. 
against the Minnesota Vikings that day. John Madden, was that a great day for you? Oh, it sure was. I'll never forget that day. In fact, I don't think anyone in this stadium will forget that day. Raiders worked over the Vikings in pretty good shape, and that ground game to the left side was dominating. That was in the Super Bowl, of course, at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where it's going to be again this year on CBS. Stabler looking and throwing. Touchdown, Brunson. Larry Brunson as Tom Flores, the head coach, looks on. Oakland touchdown. Oakland 35. Atlanta 12. Tom Flores has the team in healthy, good shape. With three games and seven days facing them, it's going to be pretty rough, though. It? Well, it sure is, but they've done a great job under adversity. They had a lot of injuries, and they were able to come back. They made adjustments, and they're playing as fine a football now as they have all year. That is Brunson's first touchdown as a Raider. at Oakland 36, Atlanta 12, as we have 13 minutes, 38 seconds left to play in this football game. From our helicopter, looking down into Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the Pittsburgh Pirates came up with two runs in the bottom of the sixth inning, trying to stay alive. First game in Baltimore, won by the Orioles, and the Buccos evened it up in game two, as one of yesterday's stars, Tim Stoddard. Yesterday's hero. Yep. Find out about him today. Stoddard on in relief in the bottom of the seventh inning. The 6'7", former basketball star at North Carolina State. Played on an NCAA champion Wolfpack team. Facing Garner, Bly Levin, and Marino in the bottom of the seventh inning. One and all. This is Phil Garner. Well, she's uh, it takes it easy now. Phil, they'll be walking in any of those fastballs like that. That thing. <laughs> Phil got to slap a little color back in his face. Ooh. He almost walked into a tailing fastball. This big guy can turn it loose. One ball and one strike. In yesterday's game, in the three innings that started work, he got in a good workout. He threw 44 pitches. That's not bad. Got his first hit in organized ball, drove in a run. That's unbelievable. You think that yep. isn't a storybook? Incredible. You dream about that. One and two. In the bullpen, the left-hander, Tippy Martinez, throwing back of Stoddard. I'm not going to worry about the amount of time Stoddard worked yesterday. Look at the size of it. Huh. I had to laugh after yesterday's game at the ending. You know how Dempsey, he gets so fired up, he'll go out and jump up on a pitcher. He jumped up, he just kind of went out and grabbed Stoddard. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't lift him up at all. <laughs> Three and two on Garner. Flanagan gave up two runs, six hits, in six innings of work. Walked only one, and that came back to kill him. Struck out six. Chopper. No play for Garcia. Phil Garner. An infield single to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, here, you may as well just pick it up, stick it in your pocket, and forget about it because Garner, who runs well, Garcia made a fine barehanded, the only way that he'd ever have any chance whatsoever. Look at how far Garner was by the bat. So now Bly Levin comes up, presumably to punt. Desensei will play in shallow at third. Murray wants to get together with Dower. Well, everybody in the ballpark knows what Bly Levin will be doing right here. The thing that you've got to think about on the artificial surface when you go to punt, you've got to make sure, you've got to really practice a lot. You've got to really deaden that ball just to 
get a bat on it and push it somewhere, that doesn't mean a thing because it gets to a charging infielder or back to the pitcher in a hurry. Third fly, Levin's white. So the first as Garner gets back. Tell you, on this artificial turf, Al, I think of the old Casey Stengel accent. Put your boy the ball. Put your boy. Hit Put your boy. It. Hit it down. That's just what Garner did when he got on first That's base. That's right. Put your boy the ball, and the ball goes 12 feet in the air, and it never comes <laughs> down. That's the way to use this artificial turf. That's Harry Walker's theory of hitting. That's right. Swing away and butcher it down. <laughs> Garner goes crawling back in. Now, I mentioned yesterday about Stoddard throwing the 44 pitches in relief. Only 35 of those were strikes. Hey, cut that ball over there well. He does. That's something about this Baltimore staff. Boy, every one of them, they come right at you. They don't fool around. They don't nitty pick. Garner, a very sizable lead as Blylevin takes a five ball one. Interesting, Stoddard does have a good move, does a good job, which is interesting for a pitcher who is so big. You see a lot of fellows 6'6 six, six, and 6'7 six, who have a lot of problems. Well, there's Miller going out to the mound, and he's going to probably tell Stoddard, now look it. Don't let him bother you over there to where all of a sudden you end up losing this guy at the plate. They're going to bunt, let him bunt, and we'll go about from there. Repeats on the football scores the stunning upset of the injury riddled Steelers by Cincinnati 34 to 10 Philadelphia keeps its record with only one defeat and of course the Giants crushing San Francisco New Orleans destroying Tampa Bay Washington over Cleveland 13 to 9 tonight the Rams against the Cowboys live from Dallas Texas nine o'clock Eastern time I'll make it Irving Texas Te technically Texas Stadium Tony Dorsett and the gang against the Rams defense fly 11 gets it down but Stoddard's gonna go to second and they get the fours whoa, whoa, whoa. well you've got to be impressed with Stoddard a man of that size fielding his position that well down off the mound in a hurry Throwing to Garcia, they erase the lead man, and with one out, Bly Levin's at first. Well, the ball has to be bunted. You got to take it off. You see Bly Levin getting his hands out there quite a ways, but here's Stoddard. He got off the mound very good. He wheeled, and right there, a perfect throw to Garcia. That's what he used to do to David Thompson. Wing the ball in. He had more assists that way. Here is Marino. Crowd really got on Omar after the fifth inning when he struck out with two men on. And the ever present <laughs> whistle of Mrs. Marino. You know something? We may vote in the booth for her for the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> she blows that whistle again. Stoddard's going to stop thinking the foul was called. <laughs> When you stop to think of the way Garner Butcher boyed the ball, remember started a 6-7. He got it over him. Do it all the count. Started not too happy with that call. <laughs> Marino waiting in the box, started taking his time. Bucks ahead two to one in the bottom of the seventh with one out. Two and one. One out. The count two balls and a strike on Marina. Hit foul off to the left and out of play in the count two and two. And the one thing you get. When you don't get that sacrifice down, and you got to have your pitcher at first base in Bly Levin, the main thing, one of the things that does, kind of clogs up the bases on anything that yep. might transpire with this man standing here with Moreno. Soft looper foul. Outside third and a broken bat, so Omar will get a new piece of wood. 
In the bullpen for the Orioles now. Stand the man unusual. <laughs> Bull pack. Houston has defeated Baltimore on the margin 12. Denver is pouring it on Kansas City. Red Miller's team holding together and New England has ripped Chicago. Green Bay has taken the lead over Detroit. Oakland is slugging Atlanta and San Diego in a toughie holding on against Seattle. Two balls, two strikes on Marino with fly 11 at first base. One away. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Grounded and a great stop by Garcia before it's second. What a play by Kiko. Exactly what Don Drysdale was talking about. In a situation like this, the World Series at stake. Isolated now on Garcia. You dive, you throw the body, you don't let that ball go through. And that's what you see right here. Now, look at that. And as circumstances would have it, he could easily execute the force play. A great play by Garcia that has the ripple effect of getting that man, Marino, on first base. Look for the attempted steal. Well, Foley, he knows one thing. He's going to get some heat. They're not going to be moving around and fooling around with any off-speed pitches or too many of those for this big guy out there. And Marino at first base. And there's a case of clogging up the bases again. Al, if that sacrifice is down, you got runners at first and third. Instead, two out. Marino at first base, a strike. Remember, the Pirates have not stolen a base in this series. Marino at 77 during the regular season. Well, this is the time to go. Don't you agree, Don? I got to try and do make something happen right here. They pitch out. Nothing doing. You know what Baltimore's thinking. The guy's got to go. I'd pitch out again right here. And Jackie Robinson would have come up and slugged it. <laughs> There's a thing, Stoddard. That's, that's not a bad move. It's a good move. A man on first base that has good speed. Make him stop. Make him stop. Don't let him get that walking lead and go on you. Don't let him stay on his toes. Try and make him hold on his toes if he wants to. Pretty soon he's got to get a little tired and go back on his heel. That's when you pitch. Stoddard, good move to first base. Marino, average size lead at the moment, now stretching it out. And again, he drives him back. I tell you, Stoddard keeps his poise. He's got a good move, too. It's quick, like you said, Al, for a big guy. The key to it, it doesn't really make any difference how big you are, honestly. It's how quick you can move your feet. That's the key to any mm -hmm. pickoff. That was your problem. No, I didn't have that. Problem. Either have a quick, quick feet or a quick knee. <laughs> and again, the move, and this time it gets by Murray, who picks up the carom and throws the second, and it's not in time. Just when I said he kept his balls. Well, here's a tough play for Eddie Murray. That throw down into the runner. And boy, that is Death Valley. And actually, it hits Marino. Murray almost came up with a super play because he got on that ball in a hurry. A good, strong throw to Garcia. And Marino had to hustle to get down there safely. The error to Stoddard. The first Oriole error of the day. And the 1-1 pitch to Foley is lying in the right center field for a base hit. And more as it'll roll all the way to the fence. Marino scores. That makes it three to one. Foley is on his way to third. Dower will just eat it in the outfield, and it's three one. Bucks. Now the folks are seeing their Bucks the way they played all year. 
Foley again. The contact hitter. The guy who virtually never strikes out. The guy who uses the infield to get hits. And then he'll hit you with one like that. Perfectly placed. And look at those fans. And here comes Earl Weaver. He's going to go to the left-hander right now. The outfield playing extremely shallow, and Foley couldn't have just taken a two-iron and hit it out there any better than that. That ball is just over the glove of Dower. Now it's slicing away from Bumbry, and by the time they roll it through and pick it up off the wall, Moreno scores easily, and Foley on his third with a triple. Quite a World Series, ladies and gentlemen. The Quite a World Series. Two evenly matched teams. As I said, clatching and strong. We'll be back. Well, they were still playing the old Camp Town Races theme on radio this morning. The fans held together, and so apparently has the team. But between these two teams, this game far from over. The Cobra. Next to it, Foley's followers. Bill Mazeroski throwing out the first ball, reviving the memories of the home run he hit against Ralph Terry. The high fastball in the bottom of the ninth of the final game. Parker swings and misses 0-1. And they have visions of that all over again here in Pittsburgh. Singing the Bucks are going all the way to the tune of Camp Town Races. Parker, you see the sign in the upper deck, hit it here. He can, gets his pitch. But to hit a home run against this kid, it would be the first one since Aurelio Rodriguez hit one off him in May of 78. Since then, Martinez has not given up a home run, an incredible statistic. Big run out there at third for the Pirates. 1-1 one, one pitch to Parker. He'll get the run in with a drive into the gap in left center field. Foley scores to make it 4-1. And Parker will stop a check-in with a double. So the Bucks have exploded. They are looking like the team that drove to the pennant. Earl Weaver has spoken his piece. I'm not a genius. If they produce my players, then I'm a genius. Here it is again. He gets the pitch out over the plate, and he just goes right with it beautifully. That ball hit to the gap. No one had a chance whatsoever to catch a big run scoring the score now four to one. Don't you love to see a hitter go at the pitch that way, Al? Remember the way Parker closed the season? Next to the last game, five for five. Going with the pitch, outside to left, hitting inside out. Robinson takes inside, and that's part of the reason that Parker is no stranger to the batting title. A man that big, everybody thinks of him as a dead full hitter. It's not the case with Dave. He uses the whole field. 2-0. Why fight location? If they're going to work you that way, go with it. Sly Fox, he hasn't given up yet. Mm -hmm. One hopper to the sensei on a broken bat bouncer. And that'll do it in the seventh. But the Pirates come up with two more runs, three hits, and they'll go to the eighth. It's 4-1 Pittsburgh back after this word from our local station. Jim Ryan and Roman Gabriel in Milwaukee, where it's now back to a one-point ball game. The teams have created touchdowns here in the third. Packers lead it 17 to 16. Benny Ricardo teeing it up. Deep man for Green Bay is Odom, standing at the seven-yard line of the Packers. Bummy, ball afternoon. Sunshine all day today, and of course now the field only in shade. Ricardo's good kickoff to the five, Odom. sideline out of bounds at the 32 yard line good return by Odom another injured Packer that is Kimball you saw him hurt on a pass on a punt coverage play a few minutes ago he's got the ice on the knee will not be playing anymore today 28 yard return for Odom two plays 37 yards 38-yard touchdown pass, Kamlo to Thompson to get the Lions back in it. Packers. 
Take Andre Thompson off the wing in motion. Nate Simpson flags down. Simpson. Good running, picked up about six on the play. O'Neill, the middle linebacker, stopped him. Looks like motion against Green Bay. 42 Landers is at fullback now, Tim, and he was moving before the snap. Walter Landers from Clark College in Georgia. Making his first appearance as a Packer this year. Missed almost all of last season with a knee injury. How about this stat? 11 penalties for Green Bay, but only 49 yards. <laughs> We've had a lot of penalties this afternoon. Illegal motion, 42 offense, first down. First and 15, back now at the 28-yard line. Out left comes Andre Thompson. James Lofton, always dangerous. Number 80 is wide right. He can move it. Simpson. Purifoy has him. Purifoy came in unimpeded from the left defensive end spot and arrived at about the time Simpson got the ball. Baker up limping number 60. Let's see it again, Roman. Well, they got Lofton in motion back to the left side. A little pitch back a play they were successful with earlier, but somebody doesn't get Purifoy. Tough running when nobody blocks for you. That'll make it second down back at the 22 yard line. About 25 yards to go. Hellas in motion, 87. Fighters up the middle, Landers incomplete. Charlie Weaver, the linebacker, picked him up. Had he caught the ball, he would have gone no farther. Now Baker's limping off the field. That's going to be a big miss for the for the Lions. William Gay, number 79, comes in, a second-year man from USC who came to the Lions as a tight end, been converted to defensive tackle. Now we might see a safe call here. The pack might go to a screen pass, being that they're ahead and they have what 20 yards to go for first down. Defensive end, they should say, for William Gay. He's in there now. Third down. Hot left, Green Bay. Simpson coming back the other way. Nowhere to go. Well, that's almost like a screen. It's a safe call in the old Statue of Liberty. English made the tackle. There is Baker favoring his left knee. It'll be fourth down, Green Bay. Lions fans can only hope that uh, this is not a serious hurt for Baker. He did not limp off in any apparent real serious pain. It's awfully hard to try and figure out, of course, the extent of an injury, but let's hope that it's not serious. Beverly standing at the 10, and here are the deep men for Detroit. Ellis and Calicut. Excellent punt. Good one to return, though. A low kick. Ellis at the 39. Racked up. At the 44-yard line, John Thompson, that rookie tight end, has been down there in the action on punt coverage, does it again, along with Jim Gano, reserve linebacker. Now we got flag down back near the kicker. And Jimmy Allen is down and getting up slowly at the 20-yard line. Oh, Baker has a bruise to the knee, but nothing serious. He'll probably be back in the ball game. Allen is up, but limping. Holding is a preliminary signal against Green Bay. On the fourth down punt. Now Detroit had a pretty good return to the 45. Move them back. 45. Move them back. Make them punt over. Make them punt it again, and that's what they're going to do. We've got 134 remaining here in the third period. Tim Ryan and Roman Gabriel in Milwaukee. Teams have traded touchdowns here in this period. 17 to 16, Green Bay lead. Holy 89. Offense, fourth down. Andre Thompson is number 89. Beverly will stand on the goal line. Calicut and Ellis are at midfield.
Ellis. Well, they gained on that. They're now at the 43-yard line of Green Bay. Picked themselves up about uh, 12 yards on that penalty against the Packers. A 38-yard punt. And Detroit in good field position. They trail by a point. Saturday night here on CBS, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Prime time special you won't want to miss. Celebrity challenge of the sexes. Lots of the biggies. Including Bill Cosby, Phyllis George, Bobby Vinton, The Temptations, and many more. First down, Lions. Comlo, number 19, the quarterback. Lawrence Gaines, and his blocker was knocked right back into him. Gary Weaver tripped him up. The blocker, Russ Bollinger, was knocked right back into the running back. Well, the Packers diagnosed that play well. They had the linebackers coming from the inside. Nowhere to go for the... For the Lions offensive running back. Loss of three, second and 13. Well, there's Daryl Goforth walking back down the sideline. He might be ready again. Extra linebacker in for the Packers. They go to the 3 4. Johnson is out. Slot formation left Detroit. Gaines and Bussey are the running back. Incomplete, intended for Leonard Thompson. Underthrown. Well, Comlo had him, but he didn't get the ball up. Not sure whether it was tipped or not, but ball was thrown into the ground. Had Leonard Thompson on a 15-yard curl pattern. Third down against Detroit. Have to do something here to take advantage of the good field possession. Field the position that they received after the penalty on the Packers punt. Well, you know, on that last score to Leonard Thompson, Freddie Scott was open at the corner. Let's see what they do. They might come to the corner to Scott. Conlo out from the pressure and then drop. Douglas number to make it 63. Jones, the man to finally stop him as he tried to elude him. He fell down there and was covered by Jones. That pass rush always does it. Makes the secondary look very good when you get a good pass rush. Fourth down, Detroit. Wider standing at his own 34. Odom at the Packer 13. High punt. Bearcat signal at the 15. So Green Bay clinging now to a one-point lead will have to start at their own 14-yard line. And the Lions can hope that their strong defense will get them the ball back once more. 60 Minutes tonight features a story on borrowing money at low interest rates. Sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, we'll find out how to do it. At Where least, do I go? Where do I go to well, borrow I don't money? Know. At least you'll probably see some other people doing it or something like that. Should be interesting, and it'll certainly encourage everybody <laughs> <laughs> Trying yep. to make a similar loan. Well, Goforth's back out of the locker room now. Evidently, he's going to suit up and go again. Al Baker's also in the game. In motion is Lofton behind the ball. Picked up by Williams. They go back the other way with Simpson. Flag down. Simpson forced out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. Pick up of a couple and uh, see what the flag's about. That's going to bring the quarter to a close as well. We still haven't seen the infraction signal. Doug English is there trying to find out what it's about on behalf of the Detroit Lions. So we'll find out when we come back to resume the uh, play in the fourth period. So far, they've got to uh, render a decision. Looks like they're about to mark it off against Green Bay. Of course, if you turn it around, it would be against Detroit, which uh, they would do when play starts for the fourth quarter. But yeah, it does look as though they're going to mark it off against the Packers.
Well, they're going to come down and do it all at this end. That much we can tell you. <laughs> we haven't seen a signal yet. So that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, Green Bay 17, Detroit 16. We now pause for a word from your local station. Touchdown. Some good blocking in there, especially by Sylvester, the young offensive guard that has started three different positions the last three games and done a good job at all three. Ray Guy approaches and hits it and hits it well. Dennis Pearson at the two. Pearson cut down at about the 27. The scoring drive, the last one by Open after the interception. Three plays. 23 yards, took him 49 seconds. Tackled by Derek Ramsey. There's Big Filio. When I say big, uh, he's huge. 6'9, 290. Wears a size 16 shoe. David Hum. Starting to get ready. Are the Nebraska Hums? Yes, throwing to Jim Plunkett. And Plunkett, they say, has been superb. We might see a little of him next. I think that's who they would go to. That's that's what they've been. Jim Plunkett had a great uh, preseason for the Oakland Raiders, and in the early games, he was coming in in the in the fourth quarter and doing well. So we see Hum and Plunkett, and I imagine, in fact, Plunkett is really warm enough to go in. Right now is 18 of 29. The Atlanta quarterback for 233 yards and two touchdown passes, and he has battled up an awesome rush. Really, they've been some a lot of hurry ups on him today. There's a story on Tom Flores. He used to hit Art Powell about nine times a game. It seemed like, and the shortest pass was 50 yards or so. <laughs> Am I right, John? Those days. It was in the old days of the AFL, where really the Defense was a lot better than the defense, but those were some great football games and some great years. There's some high scoring contests, I remember. A goal line, goal line stand used to be about a 50 yard run. 36 to 12 score in this game. Penalty marker is down as Mayberry takes the pass from Barkowski. Jack Tatum made the tackle, but again, penalty marker around the pocket. They're having to really struggle with that Oakland rush. I noticed Matuzak's getting a lot of playing time today. That shoulder must be mending pretty well, number 72. It's and mending. He, he dressed last week and just played one or two plays, and they didn't start him today, but they wanted to get him a little work and get him back into the... Holding, number 66, offense, first down. It's Bryant's second holding call of the day, the big right tackle. Ray Chester and Mark Van Egan over on the open sideline. Reggie Kinlaw had been in the game. He was just replaced by Matusek. Kinlaw is another good draft by the Raiders. They got him from Oklahoma. Pass to Wallace Francis. we've done Pat so far this year I, I think the Raiders might be the best hitting team tackling team on defense as far as shocking people that I've seen they really pop you they keep you up long enough for three or four people to get a shot it'll be second down about 11 or 12 yards to go there's a turnover situation and that has really helped the Raiders and hurt the Falcons Markowski, who played collegiately at the University of California, firing, complete. Alfred Jackson, the receiver. Lester Hayes, the defender. That'll be enough for an Atlanta first down. A good throw. I don't know how Markowski got it off. He was actually, uh, I think, Matusik went by and was pulling his shirt as he made the connection. That's what being strong does, you know, where they can play off those things. And I hope that the grasp rule doesn't hurt that, where they're going to be back there passing, people are hanging on them, they're going to blow the whistle. I don't think that's the type of protection a quarterback needs. Atlanta still going with those three wide receivers. Two to the 
the left and one to the right. Next and good here is Kane, the intended receiver on that same pass pattern as he delays coming out of the backfield. He has scored both of the Falcon touchdowns. That's tough to do, take a win or a loss the same way. First down, Atlanta to own 44. The Raiders flips it. Picked off by Lester Hayes, and Lester Hayes should go all the way. Hayes, touchdown. He's going to spike it. He did it. That's the fourth interception for Hayes this year. His first touchdown, and of course, it follows Hendricks' touchdown run-in of last week. 51-yard interception touchdown. Lester Hayes makes it 42-12 to 12 in favor of the Oakland Raiders and Leland Bennett. Now it does look like he cares whether it's a win or a loss. showed something to Steve that he thought was one thing that was another. That's right. They had five defensive backs in the game. They brought two of them on safety blitzes, and he had a slant he thought that was open, but he didn't see Lester Hayes there. And the Raiders still had pressure on him, too. He was hit as he went down by Barnes. Ray Guy set to kick off the line drive. Goes out of the end zone. Yes, and the Falcons will take over at their own 20. Great guy. Takes care of the run back situation. Steve Bartkowski still the Atlanta quarterback. Celebrity challenge of the sexes Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Which should be a most entertaining time. Well, just to see Barbie Benton get in the pool and swim is uh, an outstanding event. How about Cheryl? Well, just to see her walk. Incredible. Red Fox, Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, Tony Tennille, and you. <laughs> Bart Kasky with plenty of time this time. Ball is loose. It's called incomplete. Incomplete. Now it's Willie Jones, the rookie from Florida State. Bart Kasky rushed by Jones. Deep. Intercepted by the Raiders by Charles Phillips. And Phillips hurls his body down to about the 41 yard line where Billy Rickman made the tackle. But the Raiders have got everything going their way. It's the day for the black and silver. Six turnovers for Atlanta, three interceptions. One of the great interceptions you're going to see all year. Barkowski really sets up and throws this baby. Straight play. Looking away from Wallace Francis. Back the other way. First and 17. It was a holding call against Green Bay. Paul Kaufman, number 82, the guilty party. And we are. Starting play in the fourth quarter now. Nate Simpson, good hole, bashes out over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Dave Purifoy coming back to get him. Good running by Simpson. Well, that's that trap up the middle that Green Bay ran effectively in the first half, the first time we've seen it in the second half. Doug Jones was there to assist on the tackle. That'll bring up second and about eight. Ball out at the 17-yard line of Green Bay. The Packers lead at 17 to 16. Wide left goes Andre Thompson. 
This fight is Lofton. Lofton in motion. Simpson back to the short side. He's got a hole. Jimmy Allen, sure tackle, but not before the first down gain by Simpson. Out to the 28-yard line of Green Bay. Now they bring the man in motion. Pitch back to Simpson. Fine block in there by Landers, 42, and also number 69, Leotis Harris. But Jimmy Allen playing a fine game from that secondary comes up and makes a stop. Art Starr and his staff hoping they can keep moving that ball downfield as they're now in the fourth quarter and have just the one-point margin. In motion, Thompson. Play action. Intended for Lofton, nearly picked off by Williams, and it could be interference against Lofton. Offensive pass interference, I believe. He saw that Williams had the angle on the ball and did all he could do to break it up. And that looks like it is going to be the call, but it may be against Detroit. It is, Tim. They call it against Detroit. What do you think, Roman? That looked to me like Williams was in perfect position, moved on the ball, and Lofton grabbed his arm. Well, that's the way I saw it, too, but uh, that doesn't count for anything. Pass interference, 21. Defense, first down. Well, let's see if the men in the stripes right. are right. Good camera work here. Might have pushed him. It could have been a bump from behind. Yeah, Williams might have pushed him before he got himself into position, and that might have been the call. That might have been where the infraction came. All right, nonetheless, first down, Green Bay. Their own 35. Landers. Pull down by O'Neill and Bradley. No gain. At Lion defense, they continue to play tough football. Week in and week out, they're always in every game. And they're missing John Woodcock, their outstanding defensive tackle, gone for the season. Gallagher, another good defensive tackle, has been hurt, hasn't played. Reserve linebacker, the veteran Dave Washington's out with a bad elbow. And today, James Hunter with a calf muscle, so they're really doing a job. Both these teams so badly hurt, and they're putting up a good, good effort out here today. Lock formation right. Simpson. Excellent defense. Jones, Baker, cutting him down a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the Packers playing a little close to the vest. Had second and ten. They go with the run. Of course, they're up by one point. Now they have to go to the air. Maybe. Well, here comes that nickel, that fifth back in, replacing Ed O'Neill, Ken Ellis. That's that sub-defense we're talking about. Five defensive backs and two linebackers. L. Jackson in at guard for Harris. Goforth has come back in. The Green Bay, the screen, the Landers running hard. Landers, he needs one more block. Bradley eluded the block. Landers is in. Touchdown. Walter Landers in. Guess what? There are no flags now. Hey, Tim, that's the same play against the same defense. The Packers came up with a big play earlier in the game. Brooks. And Weaver blitz in the inside, so that left only four, four defensive backs in the picture. They're taken out by the receivers. Watch this here, a little screen pass to the right side. We call it a quick screen. Brooks and Weaver take themselves out of the play by blitzing. There goes Landers, big play by the Packers. Bradley, the last man with a shot at him, had gotten away from his block. But by the time he got there at the one yard line, Landers just Put the shoulder down and got himself in. Mark Cole will attempt the point after. 55 yard touchdown play. It's good. Well, that brings the crowd alive here. A sellout crowd in Milwaukee. 11.56 remaining fourth quarter. Green Bay, 24-16. Kind what? of pretty, isn't it? Oh, what a sight. The sun going down. Three River Stadium. Make all the Pittsburgh jokes you want. I'll tell you, the shots we've had from overhead have been beautiful today. No oh, Pittsburgh jokes from this quarter. No Baltimore jokes either. 
My feelings are known. We've had some great shots from that hill. I'll tell you, in this whole series, we've had some great shots from the guy. Well, it's altogether possible that the Twin D will be having dinner tonight at <laughs> Danny's, at Pimlico Hotel, or any restaurant close to where we stay in Baltimore. But Al, unfortunately, I want to tell you right here and now, we've enjoyed having you so much, man. You're just a profession. I appreciate that, and I know I'll be getting a suntan out in California tomorrow thinking about you with your thermals. I'm leading up to the fact that there's game number six as we look at a call ball to start the inning from July 11. Kiko Garcia. I'm referring to the fact that Keith Jackson will be back from football and with us Tuesday night. One and one to count on Garcia. 92 mile an hour fastball from Bly Levin. And here's another big inning for Bly Levin. His team has just scored. You go back out again with a thought in mind. Shut the opposition out. Shut him down in a hurry. Two and one to count. Not Jackson sure. and Tacolby working in the Bucks bullpen. The thing to remember about Bly Levin is nobody, but nobody has a better curve in baseball than that man. Two and two on Garcia. It's always just amazed me of the good <clears throat> pitchers that I've seen that had the good hard curve, how they ever had it, how they ever got it that big and that sharp. The Ryan, the Ryans, the Kofaxes. Uh, well, when you don't, Erskine. when you don't well, have that, you turn to the spitter, Doc. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two of the count. Well, the great thing is, if we go back to Baltimore, we get to fly with Yuka. <laughs> Shatters his back, bounce down to Foley, and one short stop goes on the other. By the way, I'd like to have somebody check the record for shattered oh. and splintered bats in a series. Well, we've had a lot of them. Here's another one that just blows up on Garcia. Now he got it out on the end of the bat, and that's going to shatter a few right there. That was a pretty pitch in the clutch. There was little the batter could do with that. Al Bumbry pinch hit for Benny Ayala in the sixth inning and fly to left. Fly Levin in his first relief appearance in seven and a half years. This is the man who tortures Al Bumbrey. Al three for 35 against him on a career basis. I said the other night when I talked to Al about it, I was about to interview Bly Levin. He, he said, talk to him about it. If you find anything out, let me know. I need help. Well, here's a guy here. You want to? You don't want to put him on. You're up by three, but all of a sudden you put him on and you just asking for trouble. The 2-0 pitch is strike at the count two and one. <laughs> now questioning the call a little bit, but watch it for yourself. The 2-1 is low, ball three, and the count three and one. Bumbry inserted into the lineup. In place of Ayala, so hitting in the two spot. Singleton is on deck with one out of the bases empty. Four to one Pittsburgh in the eighth inning. Count full. I like the way this man is pitching. Should there be a seventh game somewhere, you'll see Blyla. And Bumbry is on. So he did exactly what Don Drysdale said you don't want to do right now, especially with Singleton coming up and Murray on deck. That's tough. But this man appears to have good stuff. Outstanding. And now you see what that double by Parker did right and how big a run that Foley scored, scoring the fourth run. 
If they don't do that, all of a sudden you put a man on, and every man that comes up there following, you're looking at the potential tying run. Exactly right. Singleton hitless today. The second time he's faced Bly Lemon. He bounced to second, facing Bird in the sixth inning. Ground ball off Bly Lemon's glove. Backhanded by Garner to folding one. To Whoa. Oh, what a double play. Now you see the Pirates, as I said, who drove to the pen. A brilliant double play at the exactly right time. That's one of the finer double plays that you'll ever want to see. This ball hit by Singleton. Bly Levin just got a 12 on it. Now watch this backhanded flip by Garner. He makes a play backhanded and then just flips it in the air over the bag. Foley's there to make the catch. Bumbery coming in and Foley fighting off the runner to double him up. So the Orioles are gone in the top of the eighth, and the Bucks come up with a score. Pittsburgh four, Baltimore one. Number 47, Phillips is a 215-pounder. What's his status? It's been changed a little bit around here, John. Well, last year he was a starting strong safety. He was a starting strong safety this year at the beginning of the season. And now they're starting Mike Davis, and Charles Phillips is a fifth defensive back. And he likes that because he gets to get in in situations where the other team has to pass. Gotcha. Jim Pluckett is now the Raider quarterback. With Booker Russell and Clarence Hawkins, the running back. Booker. Stabler's stats were 16 for 22 for 186 yards and two touchdown passes. And I thought Snake looked rather comfortable today. He did. And he's really happy with that, I'm sure. And his friend Waylon Jennings is here to see it. And that makes him even more happy. That was the real Waylon Jennings, wasn't it? That was the real Waylon Jennings. From Lukenbach, Texas. Second and six. This is Hawkins. Bucky might be thinking about throwing it or giving it back when he saw the Atlanta defense. Tony Dakin and Dewey McLean. The two Atlanta tacklers. Borkowski from California, of course. Speaking of schools that have produced great quarterbacks, we were talking about Alabama before. How about Stanford? Brody. Benjamin. Both offensively and defensively, both teams that were on the line of scrimmage. Atlanta was coming up in a blitzing situation, and the Raiders brought both backs up close to the line of scrimmage to, get, to be in a Number position 16, to pick it up. Offense, third down. Well, Plunkett probably said, look, who needs this? Let's, let's get straight on what they're going to do, you fellas. Said, if they have a whole bunch in there, I want a whole bunch in there. <laughs> down as Famuina goes out Jeff Burrow comes in for Atlanta it'll be third down about 12 Bucket will throw flag is down and Bucket goes for Raymond just there and the flag goes down down there going to be against Raymond Chester. That's going to be an offensive pass interference penalty. He and Pride more were fighting for. We've got two uh, flags back at the line of scrimmage. Nobody has any flags left. They're all on the field. This is going to be a caucus. <laughs> That's two against the Raiders. Ball was thrown pretty well. this play on the ball. Pride more on the right. Raymond Chester on the left. Well, look at that whole troop chasing down there. What were all those linebackers down there running around? <laughs> it's so funny. They're going to walk it off against Oakland. Let's see what Jerry Markbright has to say. No, illegal motion. Number 82, offense. Disregard. Offensive pass interference, number 88, offense, third down. Third down. Raider fans are hungry today. Boy. Third down, 22 they need. By the way, I think uh, earlier when we were talking about the games next week on CBS, the Philadelphia-Washington match is in Washington, not in Philadelphia. Is 
we said before. That's the game that they moved because of the Pope's visit to this country. So, it's at RFK. Falcons in a blitzing formation. Hawkins to the outside will beat that blitz and have the first down. He might have more than that. Clarence Hawkins. All the way down deep in Atlanta territory. the longest run from scrimmage rushing for the Raiders this year. They caught him in the safety blitz. They caught him in the safety blitz. They packed everyone inside, and there was nothing outside once Clarence Hawkins got around the corner. That's another way to beat a safety blitz. Everyone thinks of the, of the pass and dumping off and hitting slants and so on, but packing them all in and getting outside is a pretty good way to do it. Especially if that outside linebacker gets cut or misses, just like uh, the fellow did there, Joel Williams. up at the line of scrimmage by Jeff Yates. Now, is there a chance of having some hard feelings because the Raiders are not trying to run the score up, but they really are going for it? Uh, will there be any language there on the line of scrimmage, you think, John? Not there. I think when that comes is when you get towards the end of the game and the other team starts to take timeouts or they're, or they're prolonging the game. The Raiders aren't doing anything to prolong the game. They're just playing good, solid football. I think everyone expects that. Second and eight at the 17. Raiders lead it already 43 to 12. Bucket gets on the drop way to Hawkins. Again by Jeff Gates, the first man to get there. You know, people wouldn't believe this, but I think it's a lot cleaner game today than it was 10 or 15 years ago. Third and eight. Again, somebody moved, somebody jumped, and again the flags go down. And maybe you do see some fights. Gene Upshaw with a shot to Dewey McLean. Oh, if that upshot would hit you, he could really get your attention. We're just talking about the lack of fights, and we see one on the next play. And Gene Upshaw is a, the captain of the Oakland Raiders and a real gentleman. You know, 10 years ago, though, there would have been nine guys on both sides. That's the difference. Here, it's just, uh, oh, Upshaw. Well, he made a legal block with his helmet. He was just practicing blocking. <laughs> Boy, that's spoken like a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean anything by that, of course, did he? he Flag still down all over the place. John used to have, you used to have unusual run-ins with the officials uh, anyway, didn't you? Occasionally. We've got a false start, number 66, offense. We've got a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 62, offense. We've got a personal foul. Wright's got more air time than we do. <laughs> All that, and they're just going to play it over again. Yeah. Here's the elder statesman. Only 12 years as the best, huh? He sure has been, and sure is. This is his 13th year, and 13. he's not only a, a great player, but he's a great leader for this Oakland Raider team. Gene Upshaw is speaking. Of. You know, John, it's strange not to see you on the sideline. It's all, also strange not to see Otis Sistrunk down there somewhere. Yeah. Third down, eight. Where is Otis Sistrunk? He's still with the Oakland Raiders. He's oh. on the injured reserve. He was injured early in training camp and had a knee surgery, and he's still recovering from knee surgery. Eight seconds left to play. Bucket. Has time. They had Raymond Chester at about the two-yard line, but a penalty marker goes down again. Down at the goal line, it's against Atlanta. When teams get well, they can turn it all around and really in one week. And that's what the Raiders apparently have done from Monday night on. They seem to be hitting on all of them. Sure are, Defensive pass interference, automatic first down. Something wrong with 
Great Chester's left wrist. It appears. Looks like the uh, safety man making that tackle. Was it Pridemore? I believe it was Glazebrook. He might hit Chester right on the arm. Chester is being administered to Van Egan. Bang straight ahead and touchdown Oakland. Sometimes, John, do you remember popping champagne after something more impressive than this? After we get after we got 40 points and we had a 30-point lead, I always started worrying about the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Reach makes it a half a hundred. The Oakland Raiders 50. <laughs> 7.56 left to play. I don't know whether this fan's going to have to surrender that football, but we're going to show you how he got it. It looked like he was uh, just plucking a walleye pike out of these Wisconsin waters here. Watch that net go up there. All right. Boy, with that kind of hand, you don't need two. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still got it so far. I think they're going to encourage him to return it. Five plays, 81 yards, a 55-yard touchdown pass. Whitehurst to Walter Landers. Who's Walter Landers? Second-year man from Park College in Georgia. Hurt all of last year and so far all of this year until today. The kickoff is taken by Calicut. Calicut over the 25, and flags are down again. And yeah, we got a clip on Dave Park in number 44 of the Lions. Casey Merrill made the tackle. That's going to hurt the Lions. That's going to back them up even more than they are right now. 24 to 16. Green Bay in front. Clipping is the sign against Detroit. 11.48 to go here in the fourth quarter. Remember, 60 Minutes follows our game here on CBS. Always interesting. Personal foul, Clippy, 44 on a return to first down. Roman called it on Parkin. All right, there it is, Dave Parkin, 44. I think that was a blatant clip right in the back. That's a first down at the 10-yard line for Detroit. Bussy. Just over the line of scrimmage. Little fix up there on the turn by Comlo, and that slowed up the play. Well, the Lions aren't straying from their game plan. They continue to run on first down. Barber and number 99, Johnson made the tackle. Well, there's two great quarterbacks discussing the strategy, Bart Starr and Zeke Bradkowski. Both of them can probably still play. Well, they're in great shape. Man. They are. We caught Zeke running uh, jogging yesterday. Right, right through the Milwaukee traffic. Tom Lowe out for King. Tripped up by Wingo. Finished off. Trying to get to that first down marker, and he'll be close. Good effort by King coming out of the backfield. Isolated on the linebacker, John Brooks. Estes Hood came up to get him. But he got the yardage. That was pure second effort to get that yardage. Washington brings the play in number 18 for Detroit. First down at the 20. Well, that point is going to turn out to be a factor in this game. If the Lions can drive it up, time is now becoming a factor. Tom Lowe deep for David Hill, the tight end, and oh. incomplete. Nearly made a super catch. 
And David Hill is hurt. Remember, he came into the game with a bad shoulder. McCoy on the coverage with help from the safety. Actually, Tim, that was a prayer. He threw up a prayer. Dave Hill almost made the great play and saved the interception and almost made a completion. The Packers in a four-man rush. Combo has good time here. Just throws it up. There's Hill double covered. Second and ten. What a good athlete. He lands heavily, and he's over there favoring his shoulder on the Lions' sideline. Now you got Ulysses Norris in the ball game, number 80. Rookie number four pick out of Georgia. Lot right. Tom Lowe. Good catch. Leonard Thompson has the first down out of the 38. Has this hood. And Wiley Turner, number 20 on the tackle. Turner, the fifth defensive back in. 18-yard gain and a first down. A good throw and a good route. A little 15-yard curl pattern downfield. Tom Lowe has good time to get the ball there. Thompson up high to get it. And the Lions keep the drive going. Time's running out. David Hill is back in there. What a tough guy. Number 81. There's Norris going to the sideline. Monty Clark looking on. He knows this game's got a long way to go. Tom Lowe. Horace King does not get the block down there, but still pick up about five. Charles Johnson and then Luke and Gray, the safeties coming up, all in on the tackle. A little less than five. Again, the Lions isolate, or isolate their running back, Horace King, on Douglas. Difficult coverage for a linebacker on a good back. Norris just came back in. I suspect Hill might have put himself in the game on that last play just because he wanted to be out there, and they lifted him back out. I'm, I'm sure that they would prefer that he doesn't play uh, possibly re-injure that shoulder. We'll see whether he plays any more today. Around comes Thompson. He's got some room. He needs a block. And Luke, number 46, and Hood, number 38, stop him right near that 10-yard marker. So, well, yes, he got it. Got it by about a yard. So they're out at midfield with a first down. A little razzle-dazzle. Reverse gets him the first down. Washington brings the play in. 15 first downs for Detroit. Ryan Lesson walks the spot of the slot. Ryan driving. Dexter Bussey. Bussey has a first down. Good hole, good running by Dexter Bussey. Tom Lowe is now 11 for 24 and 159 yards unofficially. Well, they've got the Packers guessing now. Here's a little trap play right up the middle. Bussy with good running. Lions mixing up their passing and running, keeping the Packers off balance. Hood, Luke, Gray all in on the tackle. 72 yards rushing for Bussy now. First down, Lions, slot left. Dropping Tom Lowe back at the 48 of Detroit. They're going to mark it at midfield. Big Plus play. 16. Big play by the Lions or by the Packer defense. That's Mike Butler, 77, who's having a whale of a game. And Lions had it going. Butler lined up over here on the left 22. side of your screen on Keith Dorney, the rookie tackle. Butler just blew by. 7 5 to go. If the Lions do get on the board and get the extra point, remember that missed extra point by Ricardo that hit the upright. He doesn't miss it very often at all. Could still be a factor in this game. Right now, the Packer defense is trying to deny the first touchdown. Bussey shut down right at the 50-yard line. No gain. Wingo and Weaver. Tim, I have to feel that was an audible. Steve Luke came up in the safety blitz position from his strong safety. They moved the tight end in and went to a run. Evidently, they go to a run versus the tight, versus the safety blitz. Third and long at midfield. Big play here, obviously, for Detroit. 
They trailed 24 to 16. They had a drive going until the big sack. Three-man rush. Up the middle, complete. Short of the first down, but what a big play. They've got a shot at it from here. They're at the 30-yard line. Johnny Gray on the coverage against Freddie Scott. Boy, this is fine, a fine play. Packers in the 34 defense, three-man rush combo. Good protection. Right in the slot to Freddie Scott. Johnny Gray to free safety. Tags him. Good throw by that rookie Comlo. Continues to show a lot of poise. If things go badly for him, it hangs in there and plays the next play. That's what you want. Now this is a big down, fourth and about a yard and a half. Leonard Thompson in. He was not on the field in time to know what the play was. And Comlo has to take the time out. 5-24, remaining in the fourth period. period. Green Bay 24, Detroit 16. into focus. This is a great World Series. It has been from the beginning. Willie Stargell and Mrs. Willie Stargell. And here is the great man, the presence, the leader. You know what they're doing in this town through Willie Stargell and his efforts? They're building a great new Willie Stargell Foundation. And in the right field, and Stargell has his first hit of the day. So that his efforts to improve community life in the whole of the Pittsburgh area will no longer be limited merely to the magnificent work he's done with sickle cell anemia. But now we'll deal with all of the underprivileged, the disadvantaged. And here comes this man, Bill Matlock, as Weaver comes to the mound. He's already pointed. He's made his decision as he crossed the line. He'll go to, it appears, Don Stanhouse. What a marvelous man. You talk about candor. You talk about maturity. The man is a presence in this city. Wilbur Dornell Stargell. The captain of the Bucks, as you look at Bill Madlock, who is three for three today, drove in the go-ahead run in the sixth inning. The Pirates lead it four to one. The center, he has his fourth hit. Stargell is running all the way, and Willie will pull in at third. Four for four from Madlock. I don't know if there's a buck on Madlock. But they need to do something else with them. That's Mrs. Bill Matlock. Now in the background, the fans are going crazy. They're standing as one. They're waving the pom-poms as you look at this again. And Sister Sledges, the family. You'll be hearing it in Pittsburgh all night if you can get a Pittsburgh station. <laughs> Steve Nicosia, 0 for 3. Runners at first and third. The Orioles have the infield in. They can't afford to give up a run and go for the double play, not when you're down by three. Here's a case, too, where Chuck Tanner's going to stay with Nicosia instead of going to the left-hand hitting odd. He might feel that Nicosia and Bly Levin, he likes the way they're working together. One and go the count. 
And when you've got a three run lead and a chance to pick up some more. Uh, you certainly agree with what Chuck is doing so much. What an ebb and flow in this series. Stargell, the runner at third. Madlock, who now has nine hits in the series at first. The Pirates have 59 hits in the series, an average of almost 12 a game. The Orioles with four hits today. A strike, one and one. Well, that gives Baltimore 41 on the series. An 18 hit differential. And still Pittsburgh battling to stay alive. They don't quit on themselves, which is the key. The terrible, the saddening distraction of the death of the manager's mother. And coming out here and playing this game. The manager himself pulling out all the stops for his team. As you look at Chuck Tanner. Showing you why he led his team to the pennant. Outside ball two. Well, coming up on seven o'clock, and obviously you'll not be able to see out of the blue if the game ends before 7:30. You will get to see it then. It'll be presented from 7:30 to 8. Right. The sly old fox. <laughs> As he said before, he's looking for that one game winning streak. <laughs> But this has to hurt the birds. They went with their race. The best pitcher in the American League. Out of play off to the right of the count two and two. And Mike Flanagan did a good job. He pitched extremely well. Again the reminder nine o'clock Eastern tonight. The Rams against the Dallas Cowboys. Dorsett and Newhouse. And Billy Joe Dupree against the Jack Youngbloods of the world. And then tomorrow night. The Vikings against the Jets. Stargill to third. Madlock at first. Nobody out. Bottom of the eighth inning. The Pirates trying to stretch the advantage. They lead 4 1. Stan House has delivered a worker, as we'll see in either league. Three and two. Now there's nobody throwing in the Baltimore bullpen, so it's Don Stanhouse against the world right here. <laughs> well, Earl said he almost killed him during the season. He was on the precipice of a coronary at least 12 <laughs> times with Stanhouse. Now he's in another. 3-2 pitch, the runner Madlock goes as it's fouled away. Now what is it about Stanhouse when he's got the bases loaded? He goes three and two on the next guy, he's got him right where he wants him. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Weaver is beautiful. Uh, he's got some great expression. He does. Every time you look at him, you think there's something going on in there. He's got another trick up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> what a marvelous facial study. <laughs> what did we say, Doc? I don't know. <laughs> the 3 2 pitch, Madlock goes again, and it's popped up in foul ground and playable, and there was con some confusion initially, but Dempsey is able to make the catch. Murray came down the line and then retreated back to first, but then be able to make it look relatively easy. One guy. Well, you've got a guy here with a bat. It wouldn't surprise me. He had Stargell going with 
Madlock at the plate, and it wouldn't surprise me right here to see him start the runner at first base with Garner. Garner, a good contact man. He can move it around. I don't believe what Davis has wrought with Oakland. After a dreadful start, they won a fortunate victory over the Rams. They lost several. They came back. They beat Miami last Monday night, and now they are simply crushing the Atlanta Falcons. As you see the sign for Bill Matlock having himself a ball today. We may yet make three hours on this ball. <laughs> in the bullpen for Baltimore, there is Sammy Stewart, who was on in relief early yesterday. Garner hits a foul outside third, 0-1. Well, Phil and Tim, who had had a difficult series of times in the field in the first four games, they got to be feeling a lot better. They showed the nation how they played down the stretch tonight. Well, they've come back. They've played the caliber of ball tonight that the Pirates are capable of playing. We did not see the real Pittsburgh Pirates, I don't believe, in the first four games. Yeah, but Baltimore had something to do with that. You got to look at it both ways. The weather had a lot to do with it, too. Same for both teams. Right. Soft liner by Garcia. That will score Stargell. Madlock will stop at second. The Bucks have another and lead it five to one. So Garner is nine for 18 in this series. We keep going back to the way the little guys often become the heroes in the series. And that ball just over the glove of the leaping Garcia. And that's another big run for the Pirates. They now lead by four. They're 5 1. Garner, nine hits in the series. Madlock has nine hits. Parker has nine hits. Gargill has eight. A dozen today for the Pirates, and now 60 in the series. Bert Flylevin. <laughs> A most happy fella. Flylevin, bunting in the seventh inning, bunted into a force, runners at first and second. The Oriole infield expects him to lay one down here with one out. Murray shallow at third. And the Sensei, Murray Shallow at first, the Sensei moving it now from third as it's punted foul. That time Stanhouse was coming down to cover the right side, the Sensei moving in from third base, and Eddie was going back to first. They had to play on. Garcia was moving to third. That's why the Sensei was cheating so much and coming down the line hard. They looked for the ball at that particular time. The ideal situation right here with runners on first and second, why if you go by the book and you're bunt, you want to bunt down the third baseline to make the third baseman field it. But now with the different plays that they have on, the Sensei will charge, Garcia will go to the bag at third. If they bunt down the third baseline, then the Sensei can get on it in a hurry. They've still got the force play at third. We'll see how they play it here. This time the play is not on, and it's bunted down to Murray. And Eddie looked at third and then settles for the out at first as the runners advance. So Bert Flylevin, successful in his sacrifice. The Pirates now have men at second and third. Two down, and Omar Marino. You see manager Chuck Tanner and the kitten, the Harvey Haddocks, Pat Flylevin. He has become the Bucks' most compelling pitching figure, and he's doing more than that when he bunts like that and sacrifices. Boy, that's such a great help. A pitcher that can help himself out when someone puts a piece of wood in his hand. Not only sacrificing if he can make contact. Marino getting walked here, so they'll pitch to Foley and play the percentages righty against righty. Based on this series, I'd rather pitch to Marino. <laughs> I don't understand this. Well, Mark has struggled. Probably a relief for Mrs. Marino to see her husband walk with men on. So they're loaded up for Foley, who drove in a run with a triple in the seventh inning. 
This great little contact hitter who hit 288 for the season, who hasn't struck out in now so many times at bat. It's almost uncountable and has a way of getting key hits. Knocking in runs, advancing runners. I've called them the subtle skills of the game, and he's an expert at them. Now, Stanhouse will admit freely that he really doesn't like to throw a lot of strikes. He likes to try and nibble. Well, he's got a guy up there right now that he better throw some strikes or he's going to be down another run. Five to one, Pittsburgh, two down, bases loaded. Oh, and one. That was a beautiful pitch. Lovely curve breaking down and away. I think Timmy really had the key base hit in this ball game. Of course, when they tied it, that was also on a sacrifice fly by Stargill. Madlock had a key base hit to put him ahead. And then Foley with that triple to drive in a run. As you look at the runners, that's Madlock at third. What an afternoon he's having four for four. Garner at second and Moreno at first. The other thing Tim did is he drew that walk in the sixth inning to set up the two runs in the sixth. Scored the tying run. That's it right. One and one. Two and one to count on Foley. And you know, talking about that walk, as we said before, that was the first three ball count that Flanagan had on anybody. He had been breezing through five. He'd allowed only three, make that four hits, and that was the only walk, and eventually came on to score. Foley, Foley, chanting to the music. Stanhouse says he likes to pitch with men on base. He should. It's been his life. <laughs> That's his job. Foul away. Well, if he goes according to form here, he'll throw a ball to make it three and two. So Weaver <laughs> can puff on about six more. <laughs> That's Timmy's pride again. Two balls and two strikes. The walk, incidentally, outside of the intentional walk, just issued Marino. That's the only walk drawn by the Bucks today. Hear that? As you looked at Mrs. Foley, her eyes lit with joy. Ball players' wives live lives of sometimes quiet desperation, great insecurity. The moments like this one are very few. The 2 2 pitch. Foley hits a bouncer toward the middle. Garcia has it. Skip away from him. One run scores, and here comes Garner. He scores, and it's 7 1. I would think they'd have to call that a hit. And look at Mrs. Foley. Timmy has now knocked in four runs. As we've told you, he started things with a base on ball in the sixth. There is Garcia, the hero of the past couple of days, suddenly having the dejected face of a loser. Now look at that. That's going to be a tough play for Kiko, although he could have made the play. He had to go far to his left. He had to play it on the short hop, which was a little bit to his advantage. It didn't catch him on an in-between hop. He just couldn't make it. Seven to one, Pittsburgh. Two on, two out. Dave Parker, the eighth man to come up in the inning. Struck out twice, singled and doubled. They called it a hit, Don. I think it's a fair call. I do. Just yeah. for the simple reason of the worry how far he had to go get it. So Foley with two runs batted in and an infield single. And a total of four runs batted in today. The triple earlier. The blow that broke the game open.
Oh, and one. A change in pattern in what I call the ebb and flow of this series. Today, the Bucks not squandering the opportunities. And that graphic shows you what's next. Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern. And if a seventh game is necessary, Wednesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, both from Baltimore Memorial Stadium. What you must remember overall, though, in perspective is coming into Pittsburgh on the artificial turf, the attitude of the birds was if we win one, we'll win it by winning two at home. They have won two, and you mustn't forget. It. And they still have Palmer in game six, and if necessary, McGregor in game seven. So you have to say the pitching edge stays with the birds. Pickoff play is on, and he gets back in time, and it handcuffed Garcia. Kiko got there, and Moreno was almost picked off, but Garcia got handcuffed by the throw. That's exactly right. Now Moreno, Garcia's behind him, but Garcia, that throw is a little bit into the runner, and actually Garcia, as you say, Al, you had it perfectly. He was just handcuffed. His main objective at that time was just let me catch the ball. 1-1 one, one pitch coming up to Parker. 2-1. and one. Well, this game quickly paced at the outset. <laughs> he breezed through four, and here we go again. Yeah, apparently <laughs> going to make three hours again. <laughs> yep. About 15 minutes shy of that mark right now. They throw to first on a set play, and it's a wild throw that winds up in the seats. So Garcia is moving back of second base. Stan has looking there and then going to first to try to catch the back man napping and threw it away. And I believe that got Foley in the batting helmet. Here you see Murray trying to sneak in behind. Foley's okay, but that got him in the helmet. Tanner and Tony Barteron got him in the side of the helmet and ricocheted all the way into the seat. Thank goodness for the helmet. Mm. Marino moving over to third. Foley scratching. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do more than that to get Foley out of there. I'll guarantee you. Can't you see these guys all fired up now, the Bucks? <laughs> the error charge to Stanhouse. Another walk, Parker. Robinson on deck. And we'll see if Tanner might want to counter with Milner. Throw to third. Nancy trying to get Marino asleep. The intentional walk. The bases are loaded. And Robinson the back for himself. And I think right here the reason behind that they're going to they're going to stay with the leather. They're going to stay with the leather. As you look at Moreno again they tried to whip it down there in a hurry but Omar said no 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 come on now. <laughs> So the Pirates have hit around in the inning. Robinson, the ninth man to come up. One for three, plus a sacrifice. Crowd chanting P-I-R-A-T-E-S. Wild Bill has a clone in Pittsburgh. One and all. Wild Bill Hagee, you'll be seeing him again. A lot on that man's mind today. Oh, boy. A lot of memories. A lot of love. Popped up. And this will end the inning as the sensei gets underneath it and makes the catch. But in the inning, three more runs for the Pirates on four more hits. They have 13 in the game. And the Orioles coming up to face Burt Blylevin. In the top of the ninth inning, in game number five, the Pittsburgh Pirates leading the Baltimore Orioles 7-1. to one. Next Sunday, CBS Sports kicks off its NFL coverage with the NFL Today, followed by a full slate of regional games. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. 
Yeah, lots of action again next week here on CBS. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Right here, 5.24 to go, fourth quarter. 24 to 16, Green Bay. Tomlow got the play from Monty Clark. It cost him a timeout to get it. Lions were slow getting their man out of the field. Thompson didn't know the play. Leonard Thompson. Fourth and a yard and a half. Dexter Bussey. He didn't make it. Bussey's had a big day, but they really piled it up. Douglas Wingo. Pinching in from the linebacker spots. And the lineman at the bottom stacking it up. It would appear to be short. And twice the Packers have stopped the Lions in fourth and short. Early in the game, the Lions failed to score from the one-yard line. And this time, the Packers stopped them at a crucial fourth down at the 29. The Packers are overshifted to their left side. The weakness, weakness to the defense is back to the right. Ooh. Douglas for 53, and there's Wingo again. We'll be right back. Raiders have scored. No, nope, it's not. They've been over 50 a couple of times. They had one game in Denver. It was what, 59-48? Back in 63? <laughs> Most points in the last few years. 50 to 12. And still almost eight minutes left to play. Nine. This one low off the side of his foot. Newberry does not pick it up. Tidemore oh. finally does find the handle and down he goes. Tidemore struggling with the Raiders. week the NFL Philadelphia against Washington in Washington Green Bay Tampa Bay Chicago Minnesota and Detroit New Orleans regional games the others the Giants Kansas City St. Louis visits Dallas where it'll be old timers day for the Cowboys and Atlanta San Francisco June Jones the third is the Atlanta quarterback number 14 Side Mayberry. Mayberry is tangled up by Lester Hayes and taken down and out. June Jones, 6'4, 200. From Portland State is pursued by Willie Jones. And now another pursuer, but a flag is down. Reggie Kinlaw was chasing him as well, number 62. has uh, all the indications it's going to sort of break down now into some Offside, Sunday afternoon touch number game. Number 90, defense, declined, first down. Willie Jones offside, first down for the Atlanta Falcons. They beat Houston 52-49 in 1963. And the quarterback then was Tom Flores, who is now the head coach. George Blander was the quarterback for the Houston Oilers. Flores had six touchdowns that day. Six minutes and a half make it left to play. It's John North. The Falcons will remain on the West Coast throughout this week as they play San Francisco at Candlestick Park next week. Is that good? Is it better not to go back home and face uh, everybody for a week? I'd rather go home. June Jones uh, intended for Alfred Jenkins, but well over his head and out of bounds. It'll be a third down situation with June Jones leading the Atlanta offense. The other guy's having a good day. He had five turnovers today. That's Kane again. Lynn Kane. Banging away for an Atlanta first down. Monty Jackson.
Hendricks in the tackler. There's still a lot of action. This is out of the eye. Mayberry gets a good block. Matusi can't hold on. And there are still a lot of people jawing at one another after each play. Jack Tatum finally made the tackle. Look at the blocking. Lynn Kane is a very impressive rookie back. He, he played at USC from, from my friend John Robinson, who used to coach with the Oakland Raiders. And John always told me, he said, this is the one you ought to get. He'd be a great Raider back. Caught by Kane. Oh, and Kane still on his feet, still going. And still, Lynn Kane barrels his head into Charles Phillips. And he is, you're right. Very impressive. That's his fifth catch today. He's getting up rather slowly, but... It's all been the same pattern, too. It's that crossing pattern, and he's usually the second man or the least shallow of the two, and he's caught four or five, five of them on that one pattern, both right and left. 92 yards, and he's really hustled after the catch. He is 6'1 and 205. He got back to the huddle a little slowly, but he got back. First and 10. June Jones drops the throw and does. Overthrow. Intended for Wallace Francis. Really? Second down, a line of scrimmage is the open 17. 50 to 12. The Raiders lead the foul. Much of the crowd, many in the crowd, starting to leave as paper and swings to the outside. Mayberry out of bounds at about the six by Mike Davis. But enough for another Atlanta first down, I believe. Very close to it. Maybe not quite. As they bring the markers back. This is the draw. Pretty good blocking up. Mayberry's run pretty well. Of course, we haven't seen Andrews, the Young back who's fourth in the NFC in rushing and having such a good year, he has a strained knee. I think that has hurt the Atlanta Falcons today is not having William Andrews. Hi, Willie. He's a very good-looking young rookie back. Coupled with this fellow Kane that they have. That's a pair of youngsters that are not bad. Third, looks like about a foot. Mayberry and Kane behind June Jones. It's Kane. He has the first and more inside the five to about the two and a half. Dave Pear. Barkowski's final stats. Of course, June Jones is in there. Barkowski is 20 for 35 for 260 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. It'll be first and goal at the three as June Jones sees some confusion with 339 left to play and heads over to the sideline. Raiders are having some fun out there at home against Atlanta. Look at that score. All right, Green Bay leading 24 to 16 here. Stopping the Lions, they have first down, and Simpson picks up about four, digging it out to the 33-yard line. Hey, Tim, the big difference in this ball game today thus far is the Lions only able to convert four out of 16 on third down. Green Bay, five out of 11. Doug English. Made the tackle on that last play for Detroit, number 78. San Diego, in front of Seattle, 20 to 10. The Chargers, a serious team this year. Slot formation right, that's Andre Thompson in motion. Bradley picks him up. Nate Simpson. Simpson running hard, has the first down. Knocked out at the 42 yard line. Good block by Darrell Goforth. Darrell Goforth back in the ball game, just in the nick of the time, pulls from his right or left guard position leading this play. Number 57 on the left side of your picture. Watch Darrell Goforth lead Simpson right there. A big block on Luther Bradley. And you can see Walter Landers 
with a good block, too, at the line of scrimmage. And Landers has done a good job coming into this ball game. He's the third fullback. Smith out with a knee injury. Torkelson started, suffered a late cramp. Landers has been doing well, including a 55-yard touchdown, but he is nailed there by Charlie Weaver as the Lions really were coming. Well, Simpson has 107 yards in a ball game. He just lost a couple of those. Landers, that was that time. Oh, well, that was Landers. Yeah, and he was really decked. Oh, he lost his feet, tripped over his own toe. Second and 14. Second down, a loss of four. Almost four, a foul second and 13. Detroit trying to get that ball back, the clock working against them. 3.58 to go, regulation time. Nate Simpson. Stay Nowhere in, to go. Stay in bounds. Forced out by Doug Jones. And Nate Simpson with 107 yards rushing. His first 100-yard game. And he's coming in there replacing um, Turdell Middleton and Steve Atkins. So we're really down to two third-string running backs for the Packers today. And they have been doing a fine job. Uh, you, you would think they've been playing all year long the way they've been moving that football. Third down. Lost for about a yard there. Lions defense continues to be tough. This is Landers. Landers will be short of the first down, but not by a whole lot, about a yard. He made a real good effort. Well, the guy for the Lions who made a big play and slowing him down just a little bit was Ed O'Neill as he reached over the blocker. Well, the Packers will punt. They're fourth and about a yard and a half near midfield. 319 on the clock. They lead 24 to 16. The Lions will have to do something in a hurry. The Lions with only two timeouts because they had to use one earlier. That could affect them in the latter part of this game. Big fourth down play by the Packers stopping the Lions on that last series. Beverly to punt. Kenny Ellis, lone receiver at the 10. Beverly nearly blocked. Ellis at his 21 hit immediately. Andre Thompson, number 89 on the hit. And the Lions will start from their own 20-yard line. to 12 and you can understand why this game is a little bit longer than normal i'm wondering about the psychology of scoring so big and what what is the what do the raiders have to look forward to for next week how do you get them back with their feet on the ground that's a problem they have the new york jets to look forward to next week in new york pitches back to kane and kane scores his third touchdown of the day is all of them for Atlanta, accounted for by number 21. Johnny Robinson was right. You should have taken him. <laughs> he was right. If I were still there, maybe I would have tried, but he, he said it too late. It was when I was getting ready to retire, or had retired, but he was sure right. Uh, he's, he's really been impressive today, both running and, and receiving and everything he's done with the ball. And he looks small, but he's carrying 205 pounds around. Runs like a small back. Well, you know, he's a lot like Clarence Davis that we had. In fact, John told me, he said he's a typical Oakland Raider back. He was drafted by Atlanta in the fourth round. So they did pretty well drafting running backs, didn't they? Andrews, Mayberry, and Kane. 15 to 19. And the applause goes up as Mazzetti hits the extra point. division to four and three and the Atlanta Falcons will drop to three and four. But New Orleans Atlanta, has already won today so their record will be three and four. Atlanta has five of their last eight games back in Atlanta Georgia where the stadium is sold out for the rest of the season and where they are very tough. 
a nice feeling. That's one of the big things that have helped the Oakland Raiders. They've been having some problems, and then they've played three games in a row here at home, and they've won each of them. It's going to be an onside kick. As Mazzetti dribbles it off to the left. Somebody was offside. Let's see who got the football. The yellow flag is down. Mike Davis was the Oakland Raider who fielded first. Fielded it first. That Casper down there fooling around there, tugging and that was their onside prevent team or their hands team. They try and get all defensive backs, receivers, offensive backs in the game and get those linemen with the tape hands and so Kicking on. Kicking team decline. First down. We had some coaches that used to ask for volunteers. In those days, they were Democratic, and they didn't get any. So, so, they'd, have a, so they'd have a three-man return team. That's tough duty, because you get hit right in the back a lot. Oakland winds up with a football first and 10 right at midfield. They lead Atlanta 50 to 19. Actually, it's at the 45-yard line. That's the kind of thing you don't mention much to the players. Well, that was something that, that you never liked. First down, Lions. The rookie, Comlo. He's got time. He's got David Hill open. Short of the first down, but a gain of about eight. Maybe nine up to the 30-yard line of Detroit. Linebacker Jim Gano, an extra linebacker in there in these obvious passing situations now, made the tackle. Well, let's take a look at Dave Hill comes off inside looking for the open area. He's running this pattern on a linebacker makes a fine grab here. The Lions need more yardage. They have to continue to throw the football at this point of the game. They must score twice in order to win. Obviously 24 to 16 is the score. Lot formation left in motion. Freddie Scott quickly to Scott. Trying to get blockers in front of him. Do not do it in time. Loose ball. Barber hit him. The ball is loose, and it appears to be a Packer football. Yes, it is. Green Bay ball. Butler made the hit. The ball came loose, and one of the Packers came up with it. Scott didn't look as though he had time to pull the thing down before he got blasted. Looks like Gary Weaver with the fumble recovery. We'll see it again. All this is is a little quick screen out to the outside receiver, Freddie Scott. Ball is a little high. Well, he did have time to pull it down, but he just took a shot there Butler. By, by Butler, 77. So 155 remains in the fourth quarter, and the Packers are in command. That summer all with John Madden and Tom Brookshire at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum where the Raiders lead the Atlanta Falcons 50 to 19.
June Jones over on the Atlanta branch backup quarterback talking with Steve Barkowski. We were talking about bubbles and turnovers, Pat. Uh, how do you coach against them or for them? John, did you have any special secret about that? I tried to say as little as possible to the player. There's no one more aware of the fumble than the player that fumbled the ball. I think as long as they weren't doing something like holding it out or something like that, we would, wouldn't talk about it. Punt was partially blocked by the big Falcon rush. Ray Guy just really barely got it off. Out of bounds, the Falcons will take over. 155 left to play. The Green Bay Packers trailed in this football game 9 to nothing back in the second period. But they are now in control with a fumble recovery by Gary Weaver off a drop by Freddie Scott following a hit by Mike Butler, the tough Green Bay defensive end. 155 to go. First down, Green Bay at the Detroit 32. In motion is James Lampton, number 80. Nate Simpson, a 100-yard man today for Green Bay. Gets a couple to the 30. A flag is down. Dexter Bussey, 72 yards rushing for Detroit, has been their leading man today. Bo Robinson went out early with bruised ribs. Well, this is a time in the game when the quarterback tries to take as many seconds off of that clock as he can. Tell those running backs to hold onto the ball with two arms because you know the Lions are going to try to strip it. Penalty would appear to be against the pack. Next week, Green Bay is at Tampa Bay. If they can Holy win here today, they move to three and four. 82 offense, penalty declined, second down. The story from referee Cal Lepore. Detroit will be at New Orleans, and New Orleans mopped up on Tampa Bay today. Archie Manning must have had himself some kind of afternoon against that tough Buccaneer defense. Well, Oakland 50, Atlanta 19 now in the fourth quarter. Kansas City 10, Denver 24 in the fourth. Second and nine, Green Bay in the eye, Landers and Simpson. Simpson. Gets away from Charlie Weaver, and look at Nate Simpson run inside the play. First down, Green Bay. O'Neill finally got him. Nate Simpson having himself some kind of an afternoon. Boy, I wonder where this guy's been. Well, he can't get past Turdell Middleton, or hadn't been able to in the past. Middleton with a shoulder injury, not playing today. All it is is a draw play from the I formation. He fakes Weaver out. Weaver could have made the play. Simpson with great quickness gets by Luther Bradley and there's Ed O'Neill to make the tackle. Time out. He's Detroit score in the eighth the inning. Half. Pittsburgh leading Baltimore four to one. Pirates trying to stay alive. Look at Simpson running so hard and well here today. Cutting well. A great afternoon. Timeout called. 118 on the clock. Next Saturday night here on CBS, the celebrity challenge of the sexes. People like Bobby Vinton, Lynn Redgrave. Joan Rivers, Red Fox, Leif Garrett, Charlie Pride, many more. And uh, they're involved in some sporting events. Lots of fun on the Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, 8 o'clock next Saturday night here on CBS. And again, a reminder that the entire schedule for tonight on CBS will be seen in its entirety. We'll be going to 60 Minutes following our telecast, and you won't miss a thing. Uh, Tim, Tim, all the, all the Packers have to do here now is lay on the ball. The Lions with one timeout left. They cannot stop the clock more than once. Packers have the game if they just keep the ball. Don't fumble. Bonnie Clark, obviously concerned. His club facing uh, another defeat. Defeat today. They leave them at one and six. Pack to move to three and four. Struggling along without Gary Danielson. Number one quarterback. Yes, Tom Law, my dear, has been doing a good job under the circumstances. Lots of injuries. Waller Landers for the Packers. Landers. Gets to the 15 and. Timeout. Lions again. No, this Detroit time. The, has their last timeout for this half. Well, they signaled the timeout for Green Bay. The announce. They announced here that the timeout was taken by Detroit, but. One would have to assume that it was taken by the Lions. Yeah, I don't understand why the Packers would even think timeout. 
Well, they signaled it that way, and that may have just been a mistake on the part of the official on the field because he announced it uh, as being a Detroit timeout. But Detroit Whitehurst hustled on over there to talk to uh, Bart Starr and Zeke Kratkowski. What can they tell him with 113 to go in the ball game? Don't lose the ball. <laughs> Well, in 60 minutes immediately following our telecast, we we'll find out about borrowing a couple of million dollars at interest rates so low your banker would laugh at you. Do you need a couple of million? Want to get it at low interest? I need it. <laughs> Don't we all? Settle for even half of that. Let's find <laughs> out how you do it on 60 minutes next. Quarterback is going to take the ball from center and lay down on it. That's going to be the big play. 1.13 on the clock. Second down at the close to the 15 yard line. Clock will start when the ball is snapped. They've got three men in the backfield, as you can see. That's just to make sure nobody gets loose with a loose ball. Looks like Walter Tullis, number 87. Yes, it is. He's a very speedy wide receiver. They put into that kind of tailback position. And the clock is ticking away. They're less, they're down to less than a minute now. The ball resting at the 16 yard line. Waller tell us a wide receiver will sit back there just in case. The ball comes loose and the Lions starts to head downfield. Looks like the old short punt formation. Yep. 40 seconds to go. Third down. And the Lions have been scrappy in this game. Their defense is just never quit throughout this football game. Riders flies down on it again. Gets it down to 25 and counting. The Green Bay Packers coming from behind a 9 to nothing deficit in this football game are on the verge of a 24 to 16 victory over the Detroit Lions. Two teams struggling in the NFC Central but they certainly gave a lot of effort out here today and some new stars were made. Nate Simpson, Walter Landers for the Packers. And a valiant Detroit defense doing a good job again, and that's it. So it is all over in Milwaukee, and a sellout crowd at County Stadium watches the Green Bay Packers win their third game of the season against 40 feet. Detroit falls to one and six. Next week, Green Bay at Tampa Bay, and Detroit at New Orleans. So for Roman Gabriel, this is Tim Ryan thanking our entire crew here in Milwaukee. And you're seeing the names of just a few of the gentlemen responsible for putting the pictures on the air this afternoon. There are still a few minutes remaining in the game out at Oakland. And let's go out and join Atlanta at Oakland here on CBS. beat Detroit 24 to 16. Those of you who watched that Packer victory, welcome to the Oakland Coliseum where the Raiders lead Atlanta 50 to 19. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire and John Madden. It's going to be on Atlanta now. It looks like four or five thousand jump somebody downfield. No. It is going to be against Atlanta. Kane had enough yardage for the first down. This may take another five minutes to interpret this. Referee is Jerry Markbright. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 89, offense, first down. Wallace Francis. Final score, San Diego 20, Seattle 10. San Diego's record goes up to five and two. Fouts had three touchdown passes. Jefferson had two oh, receptions for TD. Much of the crowd has departed. 
With a minute 33 seconds left to play, Oakland 50, Atlanta 19. They have to straighten out the dark, the down markers here. What happened? It was a dead ball foul. Atlanta had the first down, then they had the unnecessary roughness after that, so the down remains first down, and then they mark off the 15-yard penalty. I'm still trying to figure out why the fumble by Jones wasn't recoverable. It was recoverable, but you can't bat it. You can't bat it. As simple as that. First and seven. If he had just fallen on it, it would have been open ball. Ooh. Monty Jackson put the wall up on Alfred Jackson. Jones is throwing that ball pretty well. He gets a deep drop here. Now the pressure comes on. It's a good tackle here and a good reception. First down with the clock running with a minute to play at the Oakland 35. Jones taken down by Willie Jones. June Jones tackled by Willie Jones. Jones is really quick making the pass rush, isn't he? He is, and he plays better on the right side. And he, after John Matusak was hurt, he started at left defensive end for the Raiders, and now he's playing right side, and he's a better pass rusher from there. Alfred Jackson, the intended receiver. I'd always heard that 40 seconds left to play. This one belongs in the W column for the men in silver and black. The open Raiders, Jim Jones, is hit by Filio, but flags go down all over the place again. 60 minutes, right after football. 290 he is. They said he's over 300, really, but... Bigger than 290. Gotta <laughs> take him to the meat market to weigh him. Our scales only went up to 300, <laughs> so we'd say 290 or 300. We never did have a scale to weigh him. Where does he sit on a charter? Wherever he chooses. <laughs> Jones to Mitchell. Just out of bounds. The big tight end has not caught a ball today. The Raiders will take it over now and run it out. Seconds left on the clock. A very dejected June Jones, and there is Charles Filio with a big grin on his face. Casper continues to want to play. I guess you really can't tell him that it's over for you. Sit down. Not Dave Casper. You know, there's no difference uh, with Dave in any type of game, whether it's professional football or sandlot or softball. He just wants to play, and he really loves it. And he wants to get paid for it. Well, I don't know about that. I'm sure he does. But to him, it really is a game. They talk about people liking to play and loving to play. He's one that truly does. Should just about do it. Handshaking has begun, and the clock shows four seconds. And that will do it as both teams. So that's the final Oakland 50 Atlanta 19 for John Madden, John Brookshire. This is Pat Summerall saying so long from Oakland. The NFL on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. the parrot and there they are as Chet Forty's cameras pan over the people standing as one sister sledge in the background we are family and the sign corroborates it a people in unison this is what I meant when I said in an earlier game what a successful sports franchise can do for a people it's no different in Baltimore they brought pride to cities that like all cities have been troubled. But now there is elation and their bucks are still alive. Very much so. Seven to one Pittsburgh. Bert Flyleven going to work in the ninth inning on Murray, Renicky, and Desense. The Orioles scored first in the fifth inning. 
But the Pirates with two in the sixth, two more in the seventh, three in the eighth, 7-1 Pittsburgh. Eddie Murray, 0 for 3. In the bullpen, just in case, hit the Kobe, the right-hander, and Grant Jackson, the left-hander. Give a lot of credit today to Jim Rooker. Rooker working the first five as the surprise starter. Gave up just one run. And then Blylevin out of the bullpen. He's allowed only one hit and no runs through three. Murray hits a fly ball to left center field. Omar Moreno is waving Robinson away. One out. And he was right to wave Robinson away in a situation like that. The center fielder captains the outfield. The point Don Drysdale has often made. Well, that's true, Howard. The center fielder, let him, he's the captain out there. He's going to take anything with, that he can get. And that is to his right or to his left. And when you've got a guy like Moreno out there that can go get him the way he can, why it makes it a lot easier job on Parker and Robinson. Gary Renicky, one for three. Oh, and one. Al, I'd just like to comment, too, on what you said about Jim Rooker. You couldn't ask for a man to give you any more at a better time. Rooker today retired the first 10 men he faced. Did not allow a hit until the fifth inning. Just what the Pirates needed from their starter. Popped up in a shallow left field. And Foley, two down. So we are on the verge of going back to the city by the bay, the other bay, the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> and don't forget tonight, a special Sunday night edition of NFL football with the Dallas Cowboys and their great weapons against the Rams and their great defense. And tomorrow night, the Minnesota Vikings. Holy Foley is what the sign says. Tomorrow night, the Vikes being held together by the wizardry of Bud Grant against the Jets. On average, going into today's games, the best running team in the NFL. Doug DeSensei hits it deep but foul down the left field line and out of play. He got all of that, just hooked it. That had plenty of home run depth. Oh, look at that. What a shot. Billy Sullivan, our cameraman up there taking these shots all day long from our helicopter. Boy, that's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, and two. So they're one strike away from celebrating in Pittsburgh. I think, and rightfully so. You know, the fans have saw, they've seen two losses over here. They've had a great year. They go out with a win. And Earl Weaver sitting there says, well, when do we get you in Baltimore, pal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. Yes, you're right about Jim Rooker, but this man, Bert Blylevin, has become the compelling pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. His well, excellent the... effort in the second game, and now this, his first relief effort since 1972. This is the man they used to say couldn't win the big one. Well, I think you can erase that right now. He could not have pitched any better than he did in game three of the playoffs against Cincinnati. And a relief roll today, magnificent. The one-two pitch fouled away. That is such a phony statement. I've never understood how anyone could make a statement like that. How you cannot win the big one. First of all, Bly Levin's never been on a winner until this year. That's right. Here's where all the big stuff is in the playoffs in the World Series. Or the other fallacy. Stay close and you'll beat him. <laughs> The one two to the sensei is hitting the left field and Robinson coming on has to short hop it. So the Orioles stay alive barely on a single to left by the sensei and John Lowenstein will come up to pinch it for Dower. John Lowenstein who delivered the two run pinch double yesterday. Let me 
tell you something about that man, Bly Levin. Again, to show you the nature and character of the people on these two teams. It's for the second year in a row, Bert and his wife, Patty, gave the Pirates a $1,000 check each month of the baseball season to buy tickets. Lowenstein hits it into right field, and Parker is able to keep it from going to the wall and get it back in. And Lowenstein has suddenly come hot. And his running tickets for others to attend the Bucks game. Really a remarkable thing. He's trying to close him out here as Terry Crowley, who delivered the other two-run double yesterday, comes up to pinch it for Dempsey. And as Crowley can keep it alive, we'll see yet another pinch hitter with Stanhouse due up next, and Lee May has come out of the dugout. When's the last time you saw a seven-run rally with two out in the ninth inning to overcome a six to seven to one lead? Well, it would certainly foul up my dinner plan. <laughs> <laughs> a strike, one to one. This will not, no gift could leave in Chuck Tanner's bereavement today, but. Bouncing ball is fouled, fouled at the plate off his foot. But as much as one could do for that man has been done by his players today. He's quite a guy. Probably the toughest thing he's ever had to do in his life today. Absolutely. Oh, of course. strikes again Bly Levin within one strike of closing out the Orioles in game number five <laughs> I love him sensation oh two pitch is hit in the air to left field this should do it Robinson says I'll take care of it and they go back to Baltimore the sign reads, there was no doubt about it. And Timmy Foley will remember this day. But that man may be above all. And Bert Lye left. There's Timmy. And the signs again come into evidence. The fireworks go off. The Bucks are still alive. There have been a lot of great World Series. The one between the Reds and the Red Sox, memorable. Pods and Tigers. But I think they're going to remember this one, too. From Irving, Texas, just outside Dallas, tonight it's the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams, two perennial division winners and bitter rivals in the NFL's National Conference. The Cowboys' high-powered offense is spearheaded on the ground by number 33, Tony Dorsett looking for his third consecutive 1,000-yard season since his Heisman Award-winning days at Pittsburgh. And when the NFC's leading passer, Roger Staubach, looks downfield, he can find Drew Pearson, Preston Pearson, Billy Joe Dupree, but the home run man is number 80, Tony Hill. The Rams' defense, however, causes mistakes. Pat Thomas is not big in stature, but he's big in talent. Number 27 at 5 feet 9, the cornerback for the Rams. Nolan Cromwell roams the outfield for the Rams at free safety. And Jim Youngblood, a linebacker, is always around the football. Let's see how they stack up. Statistically, after six games, the Dallas offense on the left, third in passing in the NFL, second in rushing, and first overall in the NFL, while well, the Rams are second defensively in the NFL. A high-powered offense, a super defense, the Rams and Cowboys. 20 seconds to air. Stand by all cameras. Ready. Stand by in video tapes. Ready. Stand by slow mo. Ready. Step on open your mics on the field. Ready. Stand by in graphic. Ready with your open super. Ready. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And roll tape. Roll. Three, two, one. Take tape.
Saturday from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. A special Sunday edition of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Let's take a look at the standings in the National Football Conference Western Division. The Los Angeles Rams have a comfortable edge over Atlanta and New Orleans, but that's not necessarily new. And as you see, the Dallas Cowboys, they are need a win tonight to stay abreast of the high-flying Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles winners today, 24-20 to over the St. Louis Cardinals. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. And one thing when the Rams and the Cowboys get together, well, you know they don't really particularly care for each other. They have... Well, they've met many times over the past few years. Only last year, during the regular season, the Rams beat the Cowboys 27-14. to They went to the NFC Championship game. It was all Cowboys, 28 to nothing. The Cowboys on their way to a Super Bowl meeting with the Steelers, where they lost that one, of course. Three times in the last six years have the Cowboys knocked the Rams out of the playoffs. There is a lot of conversation between the two teams, so we are really looking for quite a football game. Howard Cosell will not be with us. Of course, if you watch the World Series telecast today, you know the Pittsburgh one is now Baltimore three and two, and they go back to Baltimore on Tuesday night, where Howard will once again be teaming up with our ABC crew to bring you the telecast of the sixth World Series game. But I've got a couple of good old boys with me, a couple of quarterbacks from years past, but I'm a former Cowboy. Don, why don't you talk first about, well, tell us a little bit about this Dallas defense. Yeah. The armor of America's team last week, they went to an area where they said all along, we don't do this. We like to draft our own. The Cowboys went to the trade market. They went, they traded a number one and a number two draft choice in next year's draft for a defensive end who really won't be activated for a couple of weeks, and that's John Dutton from Baltimore. Now, why would they do that? I mean, the Cowboys are not bad. They've won five, and they've only lost one. But they lost two tall Jones and Jethro Pugh. They're trying to replace those two guys with Larry Cole and Dave Stalls. They've had some success, but not exactly what they're looking for. The Cowboys are tough. They've got a good offensive team. You know, they've, they've won 18 of their last 20 football games here in Texas Stadium. And now the last guy that quarterbacked the team that beat them was none other than our new colleague, Sir Francis. Francis, how in the world do you do that? And what kind of shot do the Rams offense have tonight? I, I don't know what offense you're talking about with the Rams. You know which one I'm talking about. You know, about. nothing's changed in L.A. All they want now is an offense that the defense in L.A. can be proud of. And, of course, they don't like the present quarterback, Pat Hayden. They never liked the quarterback out in the L.A. They always wanted the backup guy. Here's a little piece of trivia. In the last 30 years, there's only been one quarterback, and that was Bob Waterfield, who both started and finished his career in Los Angeles. Now, four of those quarterbacks went to other teams and won championships for them. Now, of course, they say Pat Hayden is too short, and I resent that person because he's at least as tall as I am. Of course, James Harris, he was too tall. Now, I don't know what was the matter with uh, Ron Jaworski, and, of course, they got Paragamo and Rutledge and whatever. I don't know what their answer is, but I think they got a pretty good offensive team, and I think Hayden's pretty good, too. All right, Frank. All right, a capacity crowd, some 65,000. Those are the tickets that have been sold. We'll be ready for the kickoff. The Rams and the Cowboys in just a moment. Texas Stadium, the stadium sold out for tonight's game. Looking down on the field from the opening overhead, a beautiful night for football as we look at Drew Hill of the Rams. The Cowboys lost the toss. The Rams will receive Raphael Septian, a former Ram, puts the ball, and it will be Drew Hill at the five-yard line. And the rookie from Georgia Tech picks it up out over the 25-yard line, pounded there by Larry Brinson hustling down for Dallas. And let's meet the offensive unit for the Los Angeles Rams, a quarterback, Fran Tarkenton, talking about Hayden a moment ago, coming off a three-touchdown performance against Tampa Bay only last week. The setbacks will be Wendell Tyler, number 26. He's added speed to the outside, and Cullen Bryant. And Preston Dinard, number 88, one wide receiver, along with Billy Waddy, number 80, the other wide receiver. You saw the offensive line. We'll tell you more about it. It is a banged-up offensive line. Both wide receivers have replaced the two starters from the beginning of the year. And quickly, it's Wendell Tyler. Looked to the inside, broke it off to the outside. Gain of five, out close to the 30-yard line. Hit there by Benny Barnes, defensively for Dallas. He plays that left cornerback. And let's meet the front four of the Dallas Cowboys. It will change considerably over the left side. Cole will come out, and Bruce Thornton, a rookie from Illinois, will come in during pass situations. The linebackers in the middle, Bob Bruni, playing the best football of his career right now at middle linebacker. And let's meet the secondary. There they are, Benny Barnes on one corner, Aaron Kyle on the other. And, of course, Randy Hughes has replaced an injured Charlie Waters for the Dallas Cowboys this year. And Randy Hughes is performing well at strong safety for Dallas. Second down and five. And off the big man, Cullen Bryant. And Bryant booms out over the 35. He has a first down close to the 37-yard line. Cliff Harris coming up. Randy Hughes up there defensively for Dallas. So the Rams, who are not necessarily noted for their explosive offense, 
as a first down on their very first possession. Frank, I think a point here. Dallas has historically been a very good defense against the run, but this year they haven't been. They've given up 4.3 tenths yards every time somebody's rushed the football, and they need to correct that. That might have been one of the reasons for the John Dutton trade, hoping to get somebody to play the run better. The motion man, Wendell Tyler. Quick toss, Cullen Bryant. Gets a block from Tyler, turns to the inside, but meets a hustling cowboy defense. As he turns the corner, the line of scrimmage, well, give him a yard. Dave Stalls was there early, and he got help from big Randy T Hughes, who goes 6'4 and 207 pounds back there at strong safety. Uh, Sir Thomas, he's over on the sideline. He's going to get him together. You saw right the last there, Fran, they did a, a late shift into their flex defense. I've heard you say on any number of times you like the flex because you could read it and know when they were coming. But that last time, they shifted right into the position to stop the run on this side, and Randy Hughes was in position to make the tackle. Second down, nine. The ball at the 37-yard line. Wendell Tyler, who missed most of last year with the Rams in motion. There's a screen to the flanker. This is Preston Denard. And Denard is met there quickly by Aaron Kyle. Little or no gain. Aaron Kyle, a first-round draft pick a few years ago. A strong little man on that right side corner for the Cowboys. This is exactly the situation that L.A. did not want to get in. They've got uh, a long-yarded situation. Dallas is coming in with their prevent-type defense. And uh, their pass rush is good in this situation. They're going to really be coming, and they didn't want to get caught in this situation. And now they're in it in the first series of downs. Now you quickly, Preston Denard is filling in for an injured Ron Jesse, who was hurt last week against Tampa Bay, broken fibula. Also out, Willie Miller, the beginning of the season, early in the season for the Rams. They would be in there were they not injured. On third and ten. Trying to go to Denard, and Denard slipped as he cut to the inside, incomplete, and the Rams will have to punt. I think that was an unusual offensive set. I don't think I've seen that before. They set the two wide receivers out real wide. Waddy came on the inside, back into the slot. That pass was open, Fran, if uh, Denard had stayed on his feet. It was a big hole across the middle. He really had both outside receivers open. They had single coverage on both outside guys. In that situation, that's a quarterback's dream. Somebody should have been hit. Ken Clark will do the punting for the Los Angeles oh, Rams. Now look at that little two-step out there. <laughs> Alice, a one and a one, two, three. Dropping ten men on the line of scrimmage. Clark hustles it. This is taken by Steve Wilson, a rookie from Howard. And he gets to the 31-yard line, tackled there by Ron Smith. 37-yard punt. The Cowboys' first possession will begin at their 32-yard line. Texas, of course, knocking off Oklahoma here in Dallas yesterday. We heard it all over the city when we arrived. Arkansas is undefeated. That's one regional telecast that you will be getting. Consult the listings for the game that will be seen in your area following the SC Notre Dame game. First and ten, the Dallas Cowboys. Ball inside their 32-yard line. Roger Staubach, of course, the quarterback. Tony Dorsett, 33. Newhouse, 44. Those are the setbacks. Dorsett has the oh, ball. Finds oh. an opening. And Tony Dorsett looking for his third consecutive 100-yard game. No Cowboys ever done that. As a first down, he's out of the 43-yard line. But, friend, this man can move. He can, and you'll see here's a handoff to Dorsett. This is what makes a quarterback great. When you have a man on first down that you can hand the ball to and he gets you 10 yards, and you'll see Dallas going to Dorsett mostly on first down because they don't want to come up with a second and eight situation. Newhouse comes out. Newhouse playing on an injured leg. Scott Laidlaw is in there. One setback now, number 35. Dorsett adjusts to the tailback in the eye formation. First and 10, the ball at the 43 of Dallas. Dorsett. And just great senses on this little man. The play not designed to go there. He brought it back, picked up five, his second five. And let's take a look at this Cowboys offensive unit. It is explosive. It leads the National Football League over 405 yards per game. Starback, of course, spearheads it all, but Dorsett had a big game last week against Minnesota, 145 yards, three touchdowns. There's your offensive line. They are solid. And your outside receivers. They're not slouches. Tony Hill has five touchdowns on one side. Drew Pearson on the other, number 88. He's a threat anytime he's in the area. Newhouse. The midfield, maybe across midfield, where he gains a couple of yards. It will be third down and two. Let's meet the defensive unit of the Los Angeles Rams. There they are. Some familiar names not in there. Cody Jones out for the season before the season began, even a defensive tackle. Best pass rusher, perhaps, Jack Youngblood. And the linebackers in the middle, Jack Reynolds, a very busy middle linebacker. He's everywhere. They're strong at the linebacking position. They use a lot of blitzing. And let's have a look at that secondary in a moment. Small on the corners with Pat Thomas and Dwayne Osteen filling in for Rod Perry. Third down, three. Scott Laidlaw in there for Dallas, number 35. Little play back. Billy 
Joe Dupree wide open. And Billy Joe yes, Dupree sir. takes it down around the 42-yard line, driven back by Dave Elmendorf. But they'll mark it at the 42, another first down, Dallas. I always get a kick out of talking to Roger before a ball game. He try, he's so low-key on everything, and he says, you know, I've got a feeling they're going to try to trick me tonight. I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, I think they're going to give me some looks and then take them away. And uh, I said, like what? He said, well, I think they're going to fake a blitz and not come. That time they <laughs> did come. I said, oh, Roger, you're catching on, man. It's working. First and ten. Cowboys in a strange set, but they immediately change it by their motion man, and they take too much time in doing so. Oh, boy, that really makes Roger hot, too. He says, that's something I know would never happen if I called the plays, but how can I argue with it? Center. Got a good point on both cases. Actually, the time had expired, but they called that against the Cowboys' center, who moved. Illegal procedure, five yards against the Cowboys. It'll be first down, 15. Don, you know when you talk? All right, let's illegal record. procedure, number 62. Right. Number when you, talk, when you talk about calling the plays, Don, you know, people say, well, look, the Cowboys, they're successful. They would be successful if uh, the center Fitzgerald called the plays. Is that good? Yeah, he's good at that. <laughs> Our referee tonight is Fred Wyant. We'll be hearing from him, hopefully not too often. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Rams. Tony Dorsett did not oh. like it on the inside, didn't like it on the outside. Squirts to the 45-yard line for a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and 13. Frank, that's three times on first down Dorsett has carried the ball. I think Landry and Colin plays. As long as Dorsett can make a lot of yards on first down, he'll stay with the run with Dorsett on first down. He will very seldom run the fullback on first down. If Dorsett cannot get good yardage, five or six yards on first down, then he'll start throwing on first down. Frankly, he does not really have a healthy fullback to run. Robert Newhouse trying to come back from an opening season injury against St. Louis. They just discovered that he had a stress fracture of a fibula. But he's in there trying to go tonight. Second and 13. Stop back. Drew Pearson oh. complete. Inside the 25 at the 23 yard line. Drew Pearson and Wayne Osteen over in the right corner, filling in for an injured Rod Perry. There's nowhere in the area with Drew Pearson. All right, from the end zone. Here goes Roger back. They have a blitz on the outside. If you blitz, you have better get, get to the man. They did not get to him. They got Pearson over Osteen. Mismatch. Nobody can cover Drew Pearson man on man all over the field. Roger sticks it right in there. We got it going, Dandy. Oh, it is. They had five defensive backs at that time. Uh, friend may have had a little something to do with it. They were trying to play, looked like to me, some sort of a deep umbrella zone back there. They didn't have a middle linebacker. The ball at the 22-yard line of the Rams. No score in the game in case you just joined us. Cowboys in possession. Billy Joe Dupree in motion. Stop back oh. with the option down the line. <laughs> and this oh, is Good nifty pick up there by Scott Laidlaw. <laughs> that, that's a play that's definitely been inserted since 1968. Uh, the, I've got to tell you a funny story about this. Here's the best defensive end in football right here, Jack Youngblood. My goodness, Roger, that's dangerous. He just well, froze him, though. You know, uh, Jack you know, didn't make a move anywhere. He did, and here's a good game. Last year, I did that against Detroit with Dave Purifor, and I got 60 stitches. <laughs> Last time I called that play. <laughs> I guess Roger hadn't had that experience yet. One of the best in the game. Six straight Pro Bowls. Jack Youngblood confused by that option. There was a gain of four. It'll be second down at six. The ball at the 18-yard line. Here they come. Let's look at He's got him. man open, Tony Hill. Oh, that is good. Right. Pretty, oh, pretty. First time they worked on number 27, Pat Thomas, but the Graham mentioned before, when you go with the blitz, you've got to cover man for man. And with Tony Hill and Drew Pearson on the flanks, well, you can forget it if you don't pressure the quarterback. Well, he could not draw that one up any better than it was. Here it is from the end zone. Here's Roger back. They come with the blitz again. Again, they didn't get there with the blitz. Tony Hill, no, no, can't do it. Oh, he, he put a good move on Thomas, too. He was he in did. that inside, gave an inside fake. We'll see it again here, friend. Well, he has some good moves and a lot of speed to go with it. You know, it was just a kind of that little hesitant, a little slide into the inside, and he came back out and never broke his stride. He does have the good speed. And the point is, Pat Thomas is as good a man on man covers there is in football, and he couldn't do it. Raphael stepped in. Oh, good. And off the crossbars, incomplete. He missed a couple in Minnesota last week. He was kicking it low. He may be just a little bit psyched out, but again, we have seen it so many times. A misconversion early in the ball game so often comes back to haunt a team later. All right. Last week, he was kicking it low. I think you saw that game, Fran, up in Minnesota. Yep, I did. And he kicked that one 
crooked. <laughs> that one low into the left, didn't it? Well, the Cowboys with 6.53 remaining in the first quarter. Draw first blood. They lead 6 to nothing, and we'll be back in Irving in a moment. There's, well, now, how about that? Oh, well, you know, I missed that. that. That's exactly that. true. They tied your record, Don. That's what they're for. <laughs> and, and, of course, Uncle Don is right up here in the booth with us. Well, I tell you what, if anybody's going to break it, I can't think of anybody I'd rather break it than, than Roger. Is that what you're supposed to say? One of those sorts of deals? <laughs> yeah, Roger, Be humble. So, yeah, that's a little it. East Texas yeah, that was That was it. Roger's a good man. This is Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith and Fran Tarkenton, and we are going to be leaving right after this game. We're going up for our first Monday night telecast from New York. It'll be the Jets of Minnesota. And Fran, Minnesota with Tampa Bay coming back to reality for the last two weeks can get right back into the race. They, they really can. You see the standings there. They win tomorrow night, and they are only a game out of first place, and Tampa Bay struggling, and, 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 and Minnesota's pretty good for the long haul. Uh, Bud Grant keeps them in it all the way, and they'll be in it all the way. It'll be a great game tomorrow night, and a chance for the Vikes to move up. And that will tell you how the first quarter has gone for the Rams. Offensively, they've lost 17 yards attempting. They have a total of four yards, while Dallas has rolled up 86, and of course, they have the touchdown. 18-yard TD, star back to Tony Hill. Third down, a little less than two. The ball inside the 30-yard line. Dorsett gets the Whoa. call. Quick opening, uh, and Dorsett explodes out to the 40-yard line, and oh, can he hit it fast. Boy, he Thomas made it. the stop out there. Skip through there. Might see it better from the end zone. I think it might have been a little trap block. Let's take a look. Pretty good job with Fitzgerald coming out right there on Reynolds. You see, he's got in pretty good position. Fitzgerald's really beat up, got a bad shoulder and an ankle and all sorts of things, but that Dorsey just jumped right through. And they just did it with zone blocking. They just, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, and Scott, the strong arming the Ram defense. First and 10, the ball at the 40 yard line. Quick toss, Dorsett cuts back. Oh! <laughs> and perhaps if he could have got around one of his own men, Breaking it back to the left, he might have picked up a lot of yardage. As it is, he gets a couple. It'll be second down and eight. As good as he is, he's not pleased with himself. He's so upset he hasn't broken what he calls a long one. Last week, he <laughs> ran for 30 yards, and he says, man, I'm just so close. I'm so close. He's got to break one. It's my opinion from that kind of move that he's sure looking for that long run. He sees that thing kind of closed up, so he's going to try to break it. Scared the Cowboys this past week. Fell off a horse. Yeah. All bruised up. All right, second down now. They mark it inside the 44. Call it second down seven. Draw back. Oh, oh. Tony Hill is open. Tony Hill has the ball. His third reception of the night. First down at the 29-yard line of the Rams. Dwayne Osteen again at that right cornerback. Filling in for an injured Rod Perry was victimized. He goes Roger back in the pocket. Now, again, they've got Osteen in single coverage against Tony Hill. They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't leave him out like that. He can't cover Tony Hill, and nobody else can either. And normally, the Rams will double the outside. Here's Tony Hill again isolated. You can see Osteen's not even in the picture. It's impossible for him to be in the picture, man on man against Tony Hill. And their normal coverage is to double the outside receivers, and they're not doing it tonight, and they better start if they want to stop Tony Hill. All right, first and 10. The ball right inside the 29-yard line. We're in the second quarter. Cowboys out in front, six to nothing, and moving it will. Dorsett. Oh, that's moves to the outside, fake, and then duck to the inside and gets, well, give him four yards. He's inside the 25 to the 24, hit there by Elmendorf and Larry Brooks defensively for the Rams. It'll be second down and six. Frank, last week in, in watching Minnesota play Dallas, really the one difference in the game was Tony Dorsett. I think if you'd put Dorsett on the other side of the field, then Minnesota could have won the game. Mr. So you played at Minnesota, right? Right. Okay. I just want to get that straight. <laughs> All right. Second and six. Two tight ends are in. Doug Cosby looking in Santa Clara. Where's number 84? Hand off Newhouse. Newhouse moves ahead to the 23 for about a yard. It'll be third down and five. Harry Brooks defensively for the Rams. And we'll see the specialty teams come out on the field. And it blows me away, Frank. I did, hey, yeah, here you got this third down. Now we get four new players. They play third down players, second down players, fourth down players. It's and, wild. And the Rams only made one shift. They bring in Eddie Brown in their nickel defense, and out comes Jack Reynolds. They would have brought in more, but most of their guys are hurt. They don't have any, have any players left. They have to call Blue Cross to get a backup offensive lineman. Watch a double safety blitz. 
Third and five, and they step out of it. Oh, he's, got back. he's got Preston Pearson, but he's going to run. Callback hurls oh, his wow. body with little regard for it inside the five to the three. First and goal, Dallas. Wally Roger, the Badger. He didn't want to do this, I don't think, friend. No, he really did. He had a choice. He wanted to throw it. No, he, he really he really wanted to find somebody open. He's still looking, looking for somebody. Please get open, somebody. I don't want to run. <laughs> he had Preston Pearson about that point, but he saw that open field, and he just tucked it away. And look at him hold on to the football. You know, I think this is what he was talking about in there, showing a blitz and then back out of it. It looked like they were going to send everybody there. And right the last, they backed them all off. Third and goal. Or rather, first and goal, the ball up to three. Set. Okay. <laughs> a little play action to Newhouse. Graham bought it. They tried to get out there with Jim Youngblood, but Tony Dorsett is just too quick. Right, that's not hard. That's probably not fair. It looked like Youngblood had him dead to right out there. We'll see it again. He man. did. He did. Youngblood had him out. Jim Youngblood was right with him. Watch this. And it's just all over. <laughs> he gave him just a little head fake and just froze Youngblood. A little fake in the line. And he'll just flip it out to Dorsett. Isn't that nice and easy when you got a guy that fast, that quick? Woo. Well, that broke the record, you see. That's that what they Yeah, that did it right there. Tony Dorsett, he got three last week against the Vikings. He did that in 76, but he did it for the University of Pittsburgh. Raphael Septien, a still low. Huh. Septien again gets it low, but it goes to the uprights, and the Cowboys have a 13 0 lead. Dallas has the football, their own 20 yard line. They have moved at ease on the ground in the air. Defensively, they have been overwhelming. They need 13 to nothing. 8-15 remaining in the first half. And it goes to Jay Saldi, and Saldi is out of bounds at the 34-yard line, hit there by Dave Elmendorf. We haven't said much about it, but Roger, after he's been completing these passes, he's been getting hit pretty good. Young Bud got him a while ago. There's old Raymond Malabasi trying to figure this thing out. Ray's a former defensive coach of the Rams, now the head coach, of course. Got a pretty good record there in his second season. You know, the, the Dallas offense is just hitting on all eight cylinders. I mean, they're really doing it. And, and Roger, there's Harvey Martin, Talon off. He's been hot tonight, and there's Randy White right next to him. All right, the first down is at the 34-yard line. Rayfield right And now an offensive tackle. And off goes to Scott Laidlaw, and Laidlaw bounces out of a pile. Oh, still keeps his feet, goodness. and he's got some running room. <laughs> Scott Laidlaw got stopped in the middle of the line of scrimmage, broke out to the left, gets another Cowboy first down, and everything is going right for Dallas. Oh, it seems to be. A Ram player down on the field as we look once again. He hits the stack, he pops up, Brzezinski misses him. He hits another couple out there. Pat Thomas, little Pat Thomas, the littlest man on the field, had to come over and get him down. All the big boys couldn't do it. The Los Angeles Ram is down on the field. He's not been able to pick up his number. Well, we will not speculate. It is Dave Elmendorf. We'll be back. The USC at Notre Dame will be followed by a doubleheader. Texas versus Arkansas will be one of them. Consult your local listing for the doubleheader game you'll get in your area. Texas with their big win over Oklahoma should move up in the rankings. USC, of course, played to a tie with Stanford. First and ten at Dallas Cowboys. They have a 13 to nothing lead. They have the football right at their own 45 yard line. Handoff goes to Robert Newhouse and Newhouse pounds close to midfield. A gain of five. It'll be second down and five. We're waiting for a report on Dave Elmendorf. He walked off the field. And they appear to be working somewhere around the neck area. That last play, you saw a heck of a shoestring tackle, as they say, by old Larry Brooks. That's a pretty good way to tackle Newhouse. Get him around the shoestrings, not up around his shoulders. How do you get him down there? <laughs> the Cowboys now with 186 yards of offense. The Rams have generated just 12. Drew Pearson in motion. Starback. Good. Goes to Pearson. Is that amazing? 
and he holds on to the football. He was juggling it, but he got it under control before he went out of bounds at the 45-yard line of the Rams, short of the first down by less than a yard. Frank, a couple of things here of interest. Roger is eight for eight tonight. <laughs> is he really? The third down efficiency, which means the times that the Cowboys converted third down in the first down, they're 75 percent tonight. But for the year, the Cowboys are 51 percent. And 40% is usually the standard. So this offensive team of Dallas has been playing well all year. But tonight, they have been unbelievable. There it is. They've rolled up 191. Their average for, for the previous six games played has been over 400 yards. So that's why they're ranked number one in the NFL on offense. Third and short. Less than a yard. Dorsett gets the call. Good Big call. Oh, 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 they got a holding call. He got his long run. But they will probably bring it back. <laughs> That's too bad. Boy, he scooted through there, didn't he? Looks like everybody else is standing still while he's running. Brother. Unbelievable quickness. Pat Donovan over on the left side along with Herbert Scott. And the flag is down. They're going to bring it back. That's the Rams' best play of the night. A holding penalty on Dallas. Oh, that's too bad. Well, you're not supposed to hold, though, guys. That's what they say. Holding number 44, offense. Oh, uh, Robert. Robert Newhouse. Locking out in front of the play. Let's take a look at it again because it's fun to watch. All right, here he goes. Just a power play of the guard leading coming off the left side. Good blocking by Newhouse. And there he is blocking on Brzezinski. They say he's holding. Maybe he was, but there he goes. And he is a jet going down through there. Nobody can catch him. Nolan Cromwell with a half hearted pursuit. He knew he wasn't <laughs> going to catch him. Third down and 10. The ball moved back to the 45 yard line of the Cowboys. Out of the shotgun. Good rush. Good rush. Carback oh, goes down. And another hold. flag goes down. That was Jack Youngblood on Sawback. But again, a flag is down. Here's Jack Youngblood leading lead the Rams in sacks again this year. He's had four this year. Really a premier defensive end. Going against Rayfield. Rayfield right there. He's right around him. He's got Roger. In number seven, the offense declined. The Penalty against Rayfield Wright. Well, Big Cat Wright tried to hold him and still couldn't keep him out. Yeah, I would really, he's going to really get in trouble about that because they say if you can hold him, son, hold him. I, <laughs> I just don't hold him, then let, me, let him hit me. There's old Jack. Roger sacked back at the 38. Penalty declined. Fourth down. Here's Danny White. Eddie Brown drops for the Rams. You don't think that holding penalty is a big play? Instead of 21 nothing, they're kicking right now. 13 nothing. Rams got a chance. White hangs it high. Eddie Brown calls for and makes the fair catch at the 23. Good kick by Danny White, who's been kicking superbly all year long. That's there's, the other young blood. There's Big Jim Young Blood. Frank, the last three games, he's had an interception in each of the last three games. That's quite something. Brought him for a touchdown. Relationship to Jack Youngblood. 6:33 remaining in the first half. The Dallas Cowboys with an explosive offense. We told you at the very beginning of the telecast tonight we did not anticipate it would be a strong against the Rams, who are ranked number two in the NFL defensively. But they have been explosive tonight. On first down, Hayden's going to put it blitz, in the air. Safety blitz. Safety blitz. It was Randy Hughes coming up. You see Hayden point to Hughes. He says somebody's <laughs> got to block him. But uh, all he's got to do is count around on. He comes up one man short. That's right. He doesn't have anybody to block him. He says that's your man, Pat. You pick him up. Billy Waddy is still not back in the lineup. Ron Smith is in there, second-year man out of San Diego State, a number two-round draft pick a year ago. He had one reception last year, one reception this year. Did Ron Smith? He's in there wearing number 84, along with the other wide receiver, Preston Denard, number 88. Second and ten. Hayden. Oh, that's right on the Denard, money. first down. Steps back and gets a, away from one cowboy and then goes back to the 42-yard line. First down Rams at their own 42. D.D. Lewis back there defensively with Bob Brunig for the Cowboys. Right, that's, that's, well, that was open. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna help old Pat out. He got a he got a he got a nice completion down there. Here's Denard on Aaron Kyle. Let's watch it. I don't see Aaron Kyle yet. I still don't see Aaron Kyle. Well, you saw D.D. Lewis come in there late. It's amazing what a little time will do when you uh, throw that ball and he had good protection that time. Rams at their own 42. Wendell Tyler gets the ball and oh, he is pulverized. Number 65, <laughs> Dave Stalls was there early right at the line of scrimmage. Then he had a lot of help from his friends. But, that, 
Ernie Stoutner is really pleased with Stahl's work, particularly against the run. He says that uh, he thinks he's made more progress than well, really anybody. Well, I shouldn't put it that way. He likes what he's doing against the run. He's still trying to improve him, uh, improve his pass rush. But uh, you saw there a good, uh, a good example of him stopping the run. Tyler was able to squeeze a yard out of that. Second down and nine. Cowboys threatening again the safety blitz, and they yeah. come with it. And they pick it up. He's got him. Preston Denard. He got it. Yes, he stayed in bounds at the 34-yard line. Pat Hayden uh, really got popped by Tom Henderson just as he released the ball. The crowd doesn't like it, a partisan crowd, but the, the official was right on top of it. He said Denard had both feet in bounds. I bet you it's so close that we're going to say uh, you pick them after it's over when we see it. You saw a safety blitz, but you see Thomas Henderson coming in, and that's one of those duck balls. Uh-oh. And y'all won't call that one? Uh-oh. I guarantee you. He wasn't in. No, he wasn't in. He was uh, out. That is a very difficult call. Well, yeah, we know that, but he was out. The Rams down 13 to nothing. Have the ball inside the 35. You can hear that the crowd doesn't like it. On first and 10. Hey, got him. Over the middle. Smith. Oh, that was a nice, nice move by Pat Hayden to pick him up coming across the middle. And Ron Smith has another ramp first down. We'll look at it again. Professional rules. You have to come down both feet inbounds. There's one. He has not got the ball yet. There's one. And there's two. No chance. No chance. Well, nobody's perfect. And the Rams have another first down. Nifty catch there by Ron Smith. He was traveling in a little bit of traffic. You know, he's been throwing very effectively here. He's down to the 25. Not a bad place to stick a little run in there, Don. Not a bad place for a run. He's got that wide set by his back, so Fred looks like he's in that passing uh, right. offensive formation. And Quick, watch out. Ron Smith. And he bobbles the ball incomplete. Hit there by Benny Barnes. who will really attack you. He can really lay it on you. Then he's had foot trouble down here for the last three or four years. He really has had it operated on a couple of times. And he's just one of those guys that seems to always be around here. Picked up a fumble earlier this year. Ran it. Was that last week against Minnesota, though, wasn't it? He yep. picked up a fumble. Ran it. 33 yards for a TD. Yeah. All right, here come the uh, situation team uh, for the Cowboys. You know, that's been the biggest change in football the last few years. You have people that play the long yardage situation, the short yardage situations. And Dallas has got their long yardage situation team in now. That means Bruce Thornton coming in, number 77, the rookie from Illinois. Two extra defensive backs are also in there. Second down, 10. And off Cullen Bryant, big right. opening. Good Cullen right. Bryant lunges forward to about the 17-yard line, short of the first down. The flag is down, however. Harvey Martin's tendency is to go outside. He's long, tall, got the long legs. He usually goes to the outside. When you see him run this way, they usually try to go inside of Harvey. They either try to kick him out with a one-on-one -on -one block or try to finesse him a little, pick him up with a trap block from a guard coming in there that time. I think that's a good play, second. Oh, yeah. Holding, you heard. Holding, number 75. John Williams holding once again for the Rams. I don't knee or ankles hurt. He, of course, limped out early in the game, came back in there. He could be playing hurt. And he's across from number 54, Randy White. So it's tough if you're healthy. Second down, 20. Three wide receivers are in. Drew Hill, a rookie from Georgia Tech. Another flag is motion. down. He's got, he got him open. Uh, and the attempt to Drew Hill, incomplete. Benny Barnes was covering, but again, a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Can't fault the throw. Nope. That ball was right there. Good throw by Hayden. They're going to refuse this penalty, I would imagine. Legal motion being indicated against the Rams. We have motion number 88, offense decline. Preston Denard illegally in motion. The consideration on the Cowboys, do we want to move them back to keep them away from field goal? No, they decline. And now it's second down and 20. You know, this situation, Third. Frank, is best. Third down 20, rather. Third down 20. This is best situation is to hit one of those outside receivers down over the middle. It's hard to throw it outside. Let's see if he gets any right in the middle. He's he gave him a lot of time and Ron Smith again. Far short of the first down, but he gets inside the 25 to about the 26-yard line where it will be fourth down. Dennis Thurman defensively there for the Dallas Cowboys. Quickly a report on Dave Elmendorf. He has a bit of a back problem. 
don't know whether he will be back or we don't know the severity of that injury. You know, that was a very good play. They didn't try to get the whole thing. They got enough to get them back in field goal position, and they need to get on track. They need to get some points on the board. And maybe this can do it for them. It'll That's be it. a 42-yard attempt. A holder, Nolan Cromwell. A kicker, Frank Corral. Five of ten on the year. He's kicked one of 49. He certainly has the distance. Just did get it up. Right through there. Almost blocked it, but it's good. A 42-yard field goal for the Rams. They get on the scoreboard. You know, I'll tell you, Frank, that center... I don't know who's snapping, but who's snapping for them, Dandy? He snapped every snap on punts low, and he snapped for the field goal low, and, and he's going to get him in trouble. Rising can snap, and he's going to get him in trouble before the night's over. Everyone's on the, on the ground. I started to say grass, but that ain't grass. No. <laughs> no, that's not grass. We have 355, 353 remaining in the first half. You know, it really is, if you're going to do it, better than low than that high one because that high one really throws everything off yeah, it and goes over them. But you are right. That's uh, really so important for that overall coordination of snap time, put the ball down and kick it. I want to tell you people that this is still a ball game, 13 to 3. It ain't going to be like this forever. LA's going to play better than they've been playing. That's a pretty good little surge they had there. It's going to be a good second half of football. And this could be a man can make a lot of difference. Frank Corral, he can boot it from way out. Led the league in scoring last year. He's the reason Raphael Septian is with the Cowboys. Frank, tomorrow night we're really going to see an aerial show between the Jets and the Vikings. We're going to see three of the best wide receivers in football, Wesley Walker, Ahmad Rashad, and Sammy White. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is going to be fun just being in New York. There's Steve Wilson, number 81, a rookie out of Howard, son of a touchdown Tommy Wilson used to play for the Rams back there with him Ron Springs a rookie out of Ohio State fifth round draft pick Wilson was a free agent Corral along the ground uh oh uh oh and it's bobbled there by Wilson uh -oh. well, you take it I'll take it this is Wilson not sure all right and Wilson gets it back to the 18 yard line where Dallas will have it first and 10 13 to 3 all right, Dandy, is Tom going to play it close to the best here and uh, just run it out, or is he going to throw the ball up? I think the history of that is that little things seem to bother the Cowboys. Little things like not returning a kickoff. You're back starting on the 17th. They don't like things like that. They work all, awfully hard trying to get those kinds of special teams worked out. The Rams special teams have really outplayed the Cowboys. I'd say he's just going to try to do the same stuff. He won't really open it up any, very much. Not bad. Not bad man. Eight for eight. Oh, boy, he a couple is of something. TDs. Billy Joe Dupree in motion out of the backfield. Tony Hill is complete, short of the first down, but he moves to the 24-yard line for a game. And nine for uh, nine. Eight. It'll be second down. Well, second down and three. That's nine for nine now for Roger. Well, they get him a lot of room on the outside. Uh, <laughs> they're backing off a hill. It's amazing you have a little success as a wide receiver, and those defensive backs start reading newspapers too. They think, man, this guy's tough. So they play him a little bit looser. They don't want to get burned deep. You know, Burt Jones, I think, has the record for consecutive completion. I think it's 17. So Rogers only eight away. Second down, a long two. Ball inside the 25-yard line. Jay Saldi in motion for the Cowboys. Hand off, Tony Dorsett. Look at him. Pick the opening. Short of the first down, good defensive play. Coming up quickly was Eddie Brown getting help from Brzezinski. And they captured Dorsett short of a first down by about a yard. A pretty girl is like a melody. What is it? Third and a little bit? Third and a little bit. The Rams haven't stopped them much on third down tonight. Three tight ends now for the Cowboys. Drew Pearson moves to the sideline. Billy Joe Dupree's in there. Doug Cosby's in there. Jay Saldi is in there. And so is this man. Newhouse gets the call. Gets the first down. Flag is down. Newhouse had moved out holding for the first down and it's going to be negated by a holding call against Dallas. That's right. We gave this thing up. Old Newhouse just looks like he just kind of stumbles around in there, picks his hole, rolls around, gets him some yardage. 
very underrated back. I've always enjoyed, enjoyed watching him play. Floating number 67, third down. Pat Donovan left tackle for the Cowboys holding. So they'll move it all the way back to the 17-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Pat Donovan's alma mater, Stanford, tied Gift's alma mater, Southern Cal, yesterday, 21-21. A good way to be going in against Notre Dame as they will be this week. Third and ten. Preston Pearson is in there, number 26, dangerous receiver for Dallas. Uh oh, Roger. Oh! Drops the ball. He can't find it. And he falls on it back at the five yard line. It just slipped out of his hands. And you see the Rams trying to call a timeout. 241 remaining in the half. We'll look at it again. One of those omens I was talking about. They never did make that first down when he started on that 17-yard line. Roger, we saw him drop a ball after he had recovered a fumble up in Cleveland during that game. He just lost the handle on it. I tell you, two holding calls have really hurt them. Yep, they brought back a Tony Dorsett 45-yard touchdown run. This has put the Cowboys deep in their own territory. And I think Freddie Dreyer ought to get an assist on that. I think he jerked his arm a little bit and uh, got it loose. And Danny White will punt with Eddie Brown of the Rams standing at the Cowboys 45-yard line. Whoa! Danny White it. just nailed this one. And oh, no! Eddie Brown cannot have it all the way back at his 30-yard line. Now he's trying to get out of trouble. A 54-yard punt by Danny White. And you can look wow. the first man down most every time is Thomas Henderson, number 56. And he almost made a spectacular play there. It got the boy a little too fast and couldn't hold it together. That is really an unbelievable punt. Watch this. It's a late guy type punt. Danny White, who really is a quarterback, just punting. It's a secondary type thing. He just caught it. It's he good. kicked one from the other end zone at 52 yards. Just one went late 54 yards. And there's Tom Henderson. He just about captured Eddie Brown all the way back there at his 20-yard line. If they're giving him credit for a 73-yard punt. <laughs> How would you like to have that for your backup quarterback? And let me tell you, he's good. He yes, can he throw is. the ball and is going to be a good quarterback. Well, he is a good quarterback. First down, Rams. Uh, unexpectedly, more yardage to cover than they thought they would have. Yep. Well, Hayden, and I think the wind don't. just whistled over Pat Hayden, knocking him to the artificial turf. It was Dave Stalls who roared by Hayden, downwind Hayden. As a loss of four, it'll be second down and 14 when we return in just a moment. News. It will continue Tuesday night in Baltimore. You'll see it right here on ABC. Baltimore with a three to two lead in the best of seven of this classic. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Rams have a second down, 15, the ball at their own 22 yard line. Three wide receivers in now for the Rams. Drew Hill, 87, Preston Denard, 88, and Ron Smith, number 84. Ron Smith in motion. It's out for Harvey Martin. Oh! Harvey just oh. got to Hayden as he released the ball in the general area of Denard. And Hayden is down, getting up slowly. I want to tell you, that's scary when you're back there in that pocket and somebody's coming from your left side behind you like that, as you know, Dandy. I never liked that hard rush from that left side. That's right. You can't really see over that direction. He's moving those rib pads around a little bit. I saw him talking to that offensive line. I looked around at Butch Cast in Sundance. He said, who are those guys? They're talking about the injuries of the guards, but what's really happening, Doug France, who's their most reliable lineman, he's the one getting beat the most tonight. And he usually has good games against Harvey Martin. Third and 15. 155 remaining in the half. Denard coming oh, yeah. from wide to the left across the middle end. Uh oh. He retains his feet, gets out of bounds, and stops the clock up at the 45 yard line. Now, that's tough to do, but you got to go to that open field. That was Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris, both that kind of got their feet tangled up and couldn't get a good shot at him. And uh -oh. another flag is down against the Cowboys' and personal this foul. This time it's going to be a personal foul against Dallas. Would it have been roughing the passer? I didn't see it, actually. I followed the ball that time. I bet it was. 146. The Rams have the football at the 45 yard line, their own 45. If that's the penalty, it'll go from where Denard went out of bounds. They'll add 15 more to it. And I think that's the penalty. But we'll listen to the referee and let him tell us. Rams trailing 13 to 3. And if they could put some more on the scoreboard, oh, this will make nice. a major difference. Here's the call. Personal foul, unnoticed, necessary. 
unnecessary roughness, number 76. First down. Larry Bethea defensively for the Cowboys. Unnecessary roughness. He will hear and about this advance from the 45-yard line of the Rams to the 40-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. And they've got time, a minute and 46 seconds, and I think they've got at least two timeouts, maybe all their timeouts. The three wide receivers are in there. The motion is Denard. Hayden coming back with the play that worked earlier, but he's going for Smith. He had him open, but he just threw it up too high. Cliff Harris back there with Ron Smith. It's really the ideal thing you want. The free safeties are not the best man-on-man -man covers in the world. Cliff Harris is a free safety. They had Ron Smith, an outside receiver, on him. If he throws the ball lower, it could bring him back. He's got a completion, and they're down to the 15-yard line. Good opportunity that was wasted. Cowboys thinking fast. They bring in Bruce Thornton defensively now. D.D. Lewis goes out. Bruni goes out. Aaron Mitchell comes in. Rookie from Nevada at Las Vegas. He's been doing well for the Cowboys. Dennis Thurman is also in there. Second-year man out of USC. Cowboys in their pass prevent defense on second and ten. Oh, he's got the back. He's got him. There it is. Wendell Tyler. Tyler. And Tyler gets another Ram first down inside the 25, close to the 23-yard line. 134 on the clock. And they're open. They're open, man. They're getting them. They have their timeouts remaining. I tell you, Don, Wendell Tyler looks almost as quick as Tony Dorsett. The real speedster out there at, uh, at UCLA. He still got it. Rams looking to get closer than the 13-3. That's on the scoreboard at the moment. Hey. Oh, plenty of time. Get rid of time. He has to unload it. He was looking again for Smith. And again, it was Smith and Cliff Harris. Deep downfield. Smith not unable to get open. Hayden had to throw it away. Oh, he had the time, though. Yeah, it's that kind of time that the Cowboys are really trying to eliminate because they, we said in their Monday night game against Cleveland, well, they really didn't have a very good pass rush at all that night. They felt they'd been trying to shore up that, but I still think that the trade they made for John Dutton is the biggest tip to what the Cowboys really feel. They can tell us that, hey, the young guys are coming along. They're doing better here. They're doing better there, but... They just don't trade the number one and number two for a guy who can't play for three weeks. Quick count, second down and ten. Hayden firing oh, in the middle. Flag. Flag. Intended there for Tyler. Tyler. There is no flag. Right. And Tyler right. was looking for one, and so was Hayden. And so was I. Tom Henderson and Aaron Mitchell with Wendell Tyler. Covered him like a rug then. Right, here he goes. Now he's starting to get some pass protection. He's got Tyler man on man on Henderson. Thomas Henderson plays it very good. Might have been interference, but it was a good play anyway. Couldn't see his right arm. That's nope. where the interference would have occurred on that right side over there. 122 remaining in the half. Third right. down and 10. Big play for the Rams on third down. So far this year, they have not converted their third downs very well. They've only converted 37% of their third downs in the first downs. This is a very important one in this football game. Hayden has the time again, it. and he has... Oh! wide open he does not hold on to the football Ron Smith had it inside the 10 yard line incomplete and that will be fourth down and we're going to see the ice kick team for the Rams unforgivable on third down for a receiver to drop a football and this Ron Smith dropped a pair of this is a critical play look here oh my goodness do you go talk to him after that friend what do you say to a guy like that I don't know if you can't what? find him <laughs> <laughs> Ron Smith of course in there because well they've had Tremendous amount of injuries. Billy Waddy is out. He pulled a hamstring. We don't know if he'll be able to come back. Earlier in the season, they lost Willie Miller. And just last week, Ron Jesse had a broken fibula against Tampa Bay. So the Rams are hurting at their offensive line and their wide receivers. Fourth down, timeout called. We'll be back. There's Ron Smith, and nobody feels worse about it than Ron Smith does dropping that ball on third down, forcing the Rams to kick a field goal. A touchdown would have been nice for him. Fourth down, Pat Hayden, who would have liked to have seen Ron Smith hold on to that. We're going to look at Frank Corral, a 41-yard attempt. Ron Rysick has been centering the ball. Corral hit from 42 yards out earlier. He hits from 41, and the Rams have shortened the gap. Cowboys, of course, missed the conversion with their first touchdown, so it's 13-6. to six. Dallas over Los Angeles. We have 114 remaining in the half. 
halftime. Sure and stay with us. We'll be going to our studios in New York where Chris Schenkel is standing by to bring you highlights of not only the World Series, but action around the NFL. Tampa Bay, of course, lost in an upset, as did the Pittsburgh Steelers. You may have heard about that one. Cincinnati over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh with nine fumbles in that game. They lost seven of them. It's a good way to lose it. saw Jack Youngblood. Jack Youngblood's one of the most intense football players I've ever played against. He's had some fisticuffs with most every quarterback in the league, including this one in this booth tonight. And he had uh, he's had a couple with Roger Staubach, but he's a quality player and a quality man. And I don't know of no player that I respect any more than number 85, Jack Youngblood. He is a just a regular on the Pro Bowl squad every time you show up. Last year was his sixth straight trip to the Pro Bowl you something about his quality. Corral hits it. And out of bounds, they'll bring it back and they will kick from the 30. Cowboys defensively, if you think about it, we were talking earlier about that John Dutton trade, who, by the way, has not been activated. They, according to league rules, will have, they really do not have to activate him even for next week's game against St. Louis. They have another week before they have to activate him, but a year ago at this time, through six games, they were giving up only seven. They, they had only given up 75 points. They've given up 113 thus far coming into tonight. They were averaging against them 257 yards at this time last year. This year, nearly 300 yards. So they have been, they feel at least, that they have been hurting defensively. I didn't hear a word Frank said, did you? <laughs> I heard I'm it all. sorry, Frank. I was watching the picture up there, and we had a shot of all those cowgirls. I'm sure that folks at home did, though. You know, Frank, at this point here, you've still got a minute and 14 seconds. They're having to kick from their own 30-yard line. Dallas has not finished for the half yet. Uh, we're going to see some more offense. Have their three timeouts. Five-yard penalty assessed against the Rams, and it will be taken here by Steve Wilson at the three-yard line. saw it right in front of you, a clip by the Dallas Cowboys, number 71, Andre Frederick, trying to get his body in front of that ram. I don't believe he did. He saw the flags fly. Even if he had a Frank, of course, with the new rule, they cannot block below the waist. But this one was a clip, and you called it right. So any plans the Cowboys had will be in trouble. It is 71, Andy Frederick. He reverted back to... Ooh. Yeah, he's getting into that area where, boy, you can really hurt him. That's the dangerous kind of block. You roll over those knees. Here's the call. Personal foul, clipping number 71. And that could throw a crimp into the Cowboys' plans. The ball now back inside their 15, close to the 13. 106 remaining in the half. The Cowboys on top, 13 to 6. Frank, if Dallas tries to sit on the ball, I would be surprised to see L.A. try to use their last two timeouts and make them pump them out of there. But let's see. Tony Dorsett. And Dorsett gets out of the 15. Close to the 17. Again, a three. It'll be second down and seven. Rams do not choose to stop the clock. We are inside one minute. You saw him you saw Dorsett's hanging right close to Herbert Scott there for that last one. He was just tippy toeing right behind him. He said, I'm going to hide behind this big fella, and maybe something will open up. The Rams close it off, but he's set right, right ready to spring. Looks like Dallas is going to try to play it. I'm telling you, Danny, the second half is going to be fun. You're right. The Rams getting those last three points. It made all the yep. difference in the world in this extra point. Dallas' first touchdown. As beat up as they have been, they have hung in there tough. Second down and seven. Staubach looks it over. To Dorsett. And Roger will run it again. Boy, Stepping out of bounds Whew. at the 19 yard line, stopping the clock with 15 seconds remaining in the half. Some of the action around the league today. Philadelphia, of course, they're watching this game tonight very intently. If Dallas wins, they stay abreast of Philadelphia. Washington over Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Going down to Cincinnati. You'll see that at halftime from New York with Chris Schenkel. San Diego rolls over Seattle. Denver continues to win. Look at Oakland over Atlanta, 50 to 19. And, and New Orleans over Tampa Bay, 42 to 14. You'll see part of that at halftime. Third down, five. 
Newhouse gets the call, finds an opening, and he gets out over the 25 to the 27. Seconds ticking away here in the first half. Yeah, they're going to let them have it going in a half. Regroup. And there it is, the end of the first half. One our halftime highlights now are going to be brought to you by Metropolitan. And in our studio in New York, Chris Schenkel. Let's go there now. Take it away, Chris. All right, thank you very, very much, Frank. And you know, watching that perfect performance, passing performance by Roger Staubach only recalls uh, back 16 years when he led his Navy midshipmen to a 9 and one season and he personally went on to win the coveted Heisman Trophy. Well, today, elsewhere in the National Football League, they reached their seventh weekend, one short of the halfway mark. At the beginning of October, Tampa Bay was the league's only undefeated team. Well, today, the Bay Bucks were beaten for the second time in two weeks. But the biggest upset of the day involved the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers. So, let's have a look. At Riverfront Stadium, winless Cincinnati hosted the champion Steelers. The Steelers were leading 3 to nothing in the first quarter. Cincinnati with the ball, Kenny Anderson completing a 38-yard pass to two-time Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin to the Pittsburgh 10. Two plays later, Anderson drops back, looks into the end zone, and hits number 89 rookie tight end Dan Ross for the touchdown. Bengals 7, the Steelers 3. Moving to the second quarter, Pittsburgh quarterback Terry Bradshaw was looking to pass. But as you'll see, he's forced to scramble out of the pocket. Then he fires to number 82, John Stallworth, at the 47. Stallworth hit hard by Dick Duran, the defensive back, and fumbles. Ken Riley, number 13, scoops it up and returns it to the Steelers' 31-yard line. Four plays later for Cincinnati, number 46, Pete Johnson, plows in from the two. The extra point was no good. Cincinnati led 13-3 in the second quarter. On the ensuing kickoff, Pittsburgh's returner, Larry Anderson, hesitates in the end zone and then brings it out. He's nailed by number 59, Howie Kernick. Anderson fumbles. Kernick picks it up and scrambles into the end zone. It was now Cincinnati 20, Pittsburgh 3 in the second quarter. On Pittsburgh's next possession, Bradshaw hands off to Franco Harris. He's hit by Ross Browner and fumbles. Number 55, Jim LeClaire, grabs the ball and prances across the goal line. The Bengals 27, Pittsburgh 3, and the Steelers coach, Chuck Knoll, is furious. In the second half, nothing improved for the Steelers. Here, Franco Harris seems to have good yardage in Cincinnati territory, only to fumble again. The ball recovered once more by number 13, Ken Riley. Pittsburgh had nine turnovers, two interceptions, seven fumbles. Cincinnati 34, Pittsburgh 10. At Tampa Stadium in Florida, Tampa Bay scored first. On this 22-yard pass from number 12, quarterback Doug Williams, he hits wide receiver number 81, Isaac Hagans. Tampa Bay, seven, New Orleans, nothing. But the Saints came right back on a second and nine from the Bucks 30. Archie Manning lateral to number 34, Tony Galbraith, who then threw the option pass to number 89, Wes Chandler, good for 22 yards. Three plays later, Manning rolled to his left and scored from six yards out. A beautifully executed play. Scores tied, Tampa Bay 7, New Orleans 7. On their next possession, the Saints scored again on this six-yard run by number 34, Tony Galbraith. The Saints take the lead 14 to 7. Following an interception, Archie Manning passed 15 yards to tight end Henry Childs. And the Saints had scored twice within 43 seconds to make it 21 to 7. Moving to the fourth quarter, number 34, a terrific rusher. Missouri star Tony Galbraith ran 20 yards through the Tampa Bay defense. And the score was 28 to 7, but the final score was New Orleans 42, Tampa Bay 14. The Miami Dolphins needed to win to continue to share the lead with the Patriots in the AFC East. Rusty Jackson is back to punt for Buffalo on a fourth and five. To receive for Miami is the rookie from Alabama, Tony Nathan. He moves from his own 14 up the left sideline, and when it's all over, Tony Nathan has gone 86 yards for the touchdown, the longest punt return in Miami Dolphin history. Tony Nathan, the rookie, continuing his career that began at Alabama in Bear Bryant's wishbone attack. 
Following Nathan's touchdown, Buffalo is unable to move. Miami starts to drive on their own 36-yard line. The star is Larry Zonka. After the handoff, blasting for 12 yards to the Buffalo 10. Larry today carried the ball 22 times and rushed for 92 yards. Miami wins 17 to 7. Denver played Kansas City today at Arrowhead Stadium. We pick up the action with Denver leading 3 to nothing. Kansas City has the ball on their own 15-yard line. There's a fumble on the handoff, and Denver's Bob Swenson recovers. He laterals to Lewis Wright, who fumbles the ball forward. Bill Thompson scoops the ball up, going in for the score that put Denver ahead 10 to nothing. As we look at the replay, Swenson picks up the fumble, and when he's tackled, laterals to right. The ruling is a backward pass can be advanced by the team who makes the backward pass if it touches the ground. In this case, Denver. In the third quarter, Denver's ball, third and 21 on their own 28. Craig Morton quarterbacked all the way for Denver. He finds Haven Moses for a 56-yard gain all the way to the Kansas City 16. Two plays later, Morton finds Moses again, this time for a 16-yard touchdown, putting Denver up 17 to nothing. They went on to defeat Kansas City 24 to 10. Country music star Waylon Jennings was on the sidelines as the Atlanta Falcons faced the Oakland Raiders at Oakland Alameda Coliseum. Following a first-quarter field goal by Oakland's Jim Breach, Raider quarterback Ken Staber threw 23 yards to tight end Dave Casper, and the Raiders were on the move. A pass interference call in the end zone put the ball on the one. Mark Van Egan ran it in. Oakland 10, Atlanta nothing. In the second quarter, the Raiders added another field goal to make it 13 to nothing. And with just over a minute remaining in the first half, Staber threw 20 yards to rookie running back Clarence Hawkins. It was Hawkins' first NFL career reception and, of course, touchdown. The extra point was missed. Halftime score, Oakland 19, Atlanta nothing. Second half kickoff. Any hopes that Atlanta had were dashed when Larry Brunson takes that opening kickoff and finds a gaping hole in the Atlanta coverage. Brunson went 85 yards to the Atlanta five before place kicker Tim Mazzetti caught him from behind. Mark Van Egan scored his second touchdown on the very next play to make it Oakland 26, Atlanta nothing. But the final score was Oakland 50, Atlanta 19. Yes, 50 to 19. And today at Three Rivers Stadium in baseball, Baltimore versus Pittsburgh, game five. Baltimore runners at first and third, none out. As Rich Dower grounds into a double play, which scores Gary Renneke for an Oriole one to nothing lead in the fifth inning. In the bottom of the sixth, with Pittsburgh runners on second and third with one out, Willie Stargell hits a sacrifice fly to Al Bumbrey, scoring Foley to tie the game at one apiece. Dave Parker had moved to third on the play, and Bill Madlock drives him home with a single to right field to give Pittsburgh a two-to-one lead. But the scoring wasn't over as we move into the bottom of the seventh inning. Oriole reliever Tim Stoddard faced Foley with two out and Moreno on second. Foley hits a line drive over Dower's head to score Moreno. Ken Singleton gets to the ball, but not before Foley pulls up with a triple. The Bucks aren't finished as Dave Parker greets new reliever Tippy Martinez with a double to score Foley with the fourth Pirate run and a commanding 4-1 to one lead. Here it is. Reliever Burt Blylevin sets the Orioles down for the third straight inning, and the Pirates go back to work in the bottom of the eighth as Phil Garner hits a Don Stanhouse delivery over Garcia and into left to score Stargell, who had singled ahead of Bill Madlock's fourth hit of the day. After Blylevin sacrifices runners to second and third, Moreno is intentionally walked to load the bases. Tim Foley's grounder bounces off Kiko Garcia's glove to drive in Madlock and Garner for a final 7-1 Pirate win that sends the series back to Baltimore for Game 6 on Tuesday night. And that game will be seen right here on ABC television beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. Starting for the Baltimore Orioles, it'll be Jim Palmer. John Candelaria will be on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll go back to Dallas for more professional football after this 30-second message. We're going to shake all its costs comfortably in our studio in New York for his highlight coverage. And, of course, tomorrow night, as is our custom, we'll have further highlight action at halftime of the Jets-Minnesota game. And 
That should be quite a football game. We are expecting a very interesting second half here. The Dallas Cowboys over the Los Angeles Rams 13 to 6. Frank Corral hits it. Deep for the Dallas Cowboys will be Ron Springs, a rookie from Ohio State. Springs has an opening. Uh -oh. And he can fly. Uh -oh. Ron Springs returns it all the way to the Ram 28-yard line. Fifth round draft pick out of Ohio State. Let's look at it again from the end zone. Do you think Mike Ditka had anything to say to this kicking team at halftime, guys? Well, he will. <laughs> Frank, as you know, and Fran, I'm sure you do too, the Cowboys think they've really got a find here in Ron Springs. He did. He was kind of a sleeper. He didn't hurt there at Ohio State, came back, but he really did all he played for. When uh, Tony was hurt a little bit, first rookie to start for Dallas a long, long time, Ron Springs. He got it, though. He was a sleeper. He had a great junior year and then tailed off as a senior a year ago at Ohio State. Led the Bucks in rushing as a junior. Cowboys, good field position. 28-yard line of the Rams. Long count. Dorsett yes, <laughs> glides along the line of scrimmage, looks for the little gap, fires that little body into the breach, and he picks up five yards. It'll be second down and five. Again, Stahl back at quarterback number 12. Dorsett number 33, and Robert Newhouse alternating with Scott Laidlaw at setbacks. Drew Pearson, wide receiver number 88. Tony Hill, the other wide receiver number 80. The offensive line, Fitzgerald in the middle, Rafferty, Scott of the guards, Cooper, and Donovan are the tackles. Billy Joe Dupree is the tight end. Defensively for the Rams, we'll run it down in a moment. Second down, five. Staubach puts Drew Pearson left, Tony Hill to the right. Rams opened this game with a lot of blitzing. They got burned a couple of times, and here they come again. Oh, good pick up. Pick up. They got up. A, oh, they had an opportunity to get burned once more as Drew Pearson does not hold on, but the Rams. Again, coming back with their blitz. Brzezinski got close to stop back that time and made him hustle the throw. Defensively for the Rams, it'll be Brooks and Fanning at tackle. Jack Youngblood, Fred Dreyer, the quick defensive ends. In the middle is Jack Reynolds, number 64, on the outside of the linebacking spots so of Brzezinski, 59, and 53, Jim Youngblood. Secondary, Osteen at the right corner, replacing an injured Rod Perry. Eddie Brown is back there. And Pat Thomas on the left corner with Nolan Cromwell at three safety. Staubach's first miss of the night. Third down five. He didn't miss. Out of the shotgun. Looking for Jay Saldi. He's there. Oh! Oh, right. Staubach's third TD of the night. Yeah, Jay yeah. Saldi, they were trying to cover him with Jim Youngblood. You cannot do that. He's a very fine athlete. Came up as a free agent. Did Solly four years ago. And he does an awful lot of things for the Cowboys. Super on special teams. Good receiver. Good blocker. He can even play wide receiver. Frankie was really well thrown. The ball that uh, the only incompletion Roger had. Tony Hill could have caught it. It was a long one. Look at this ball. Not even a ripple. Pretty well covered defensively, and Solly's right there. Solly had a birthday last week. He said, my mom and dad were coming down. She broke her collarbone and wish her speedy recovery. And the Cowboys open it up winging. Raphael, Seption, good on the conversion. And the Cowboys move out to a 20-6 lead over the Los Angeles Rams. 13-54 remaining in the third quarter. Usual look at Texas Stadium. Our resident humorist, Don Meredith, once commented, why didn't they finish it? Well, it's actually the Texas Stadium is to Clint Murkison what the unfinished symphony was to Beethoven. Damn packed with Cowboy fans. They love what they're seeing tonight. The Cowboys over the Rams, 20 to 6. The Cowboys, first and 10. The ball of their own 32, second possession of this half. Drew Pearson in motion, star back. With a little roll, dumps it off to Tony Dorsett, who could not find the handle. Jim Youngblood really popped Tony Dorsett. It'll be second down and 10. Frank, by the way, Fran, All this right. telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Uh, any any rebroadcast or really any other use of this telecast without the expressed uh, written consent of the National Football League, you can't do that. It's prohibited. <laughs> All right. Why do they want to use it anyway? I don't know. Second down and 10, the Cowboys. Drew Pearson in motion. Tony Dorsett oh, finds a little opening, makes the most of it. Close to the Cowboy, first down. Out over the 42-yard line. And they mark it 
over the 42. It is a Dallas first down. He makes a lot out of very little. A little trap block there, folding. Herbert Scott in behind it. He leads it. Dorsett pops through. Dallas first down. You notice all the great backs, and as we look at Tony Dorsett, they're able to break a tackle somewhere around the line of scrimmage, which he did there. He had good block. He broke a tackle and got nine yards. Looking for a third consecutive 100 yard night. No cowboy running back has ever done that. Tony is up to 58 yards on the night. Billy Joe Dupree in motion. Uh oh. Roger gets it off to Dorsett, who was looking over his shoulder, drops the football, and Roger got pounded once again by Jack Youngblood. Jack Youngblood working against Jim Cooper, who's done a pretty good job on him tonight. And that's not a bad job there. He's pushed him out around Roger. He still got a hold of him a little bit. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah, Young both Jack Youngblood and Harvey Martin, they, they can take that long route around a blocker and still get back to the quarterback. They're just so quick. He got that split second jump, too. He really got off the ball that time and got to the Cooper's outside. Cooper never could catch up with him. Second down, 10. at the 42-yard line. Scott Laidlaw out over the 45-yard line to the 46. A gain of three. It'll be third down and seven for the Cowboys. Jack Youngblood sliding over there defensively for the Rams. You know, you keep looking for the Ram defense to force some turnovers. Last week against the New Orleans Saints and Archie Manning, they intercepted five passes. Uh, they have uh, averaged turning over the ball for their offense three, three turnovers a game. And tonight, uh, no interceptions. That's right. That is their game. They started out big. They liked the blitz. They started with the blitz tonight. They got burned by it. They came back with it here in the second half, but they have not been able to force the turnover. Third down, seven. Butch Johnson in, wide receiver, Cowboys, number 86. Oh, that's Butch Johnson. He has a first down, close to the 40 yard line. Butch Johnson just activated last week after having a great preseason, but just before. The season began, he broke the little finger on his right hand, and he was just activated last week. Preston Pierce is trying to do a little help back there this time. Block it. I don't know how they're getting that wide open, uh, Fran. I really don't understand, because he, I thought he would probably go to Saldi again. Saldi was one-on-one -on, -one on the on the linebacker, but that time, Butch just worked at the inside. Looked like Thomas hung a little bit late on the outside. I guess they were in those zones. The first and 10 inside the 41-yard line of the Rams. We're inside 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Dallas looking very machine-like here in the, the beginning of the second half. Look at Dorsett, and look at him accelerate. Oh. He has another Cowboy first down, and an ordinary back would have been stopped back there about the 35-yard line. But Dorsett carries it to the 26, another Cowboy first. One thing he is, is not ordinary, I guarantee you. He's going to have another pretty good block in there. Well, actually, he did, all he did was just move him out of the way. You saw Fitzgerald sit. Finally got him with a big first. I'll tell you, at 190 pounds, Tony Dorsett is also very strong. You saw him carrying Jim Youngblood that time. He's up to 73 yards thus far on the night. First and 10. Staubach gives it to Dorsett again. Looks for an opening, doesn't find it. Goes down in the arms of Larry Brooks. Lose about a yard. It'll be second down and 11. And a worried Malvese, Malavese in his second year now, the Rams. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our stations along the line to identify themselves. <laughs> Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas. Frank Gifford, along with Don Meredith and Fran Tarkenton. Howard Cosell, of course, covering the World Series. We'll be hearing from Howard Tuesday night when we resume coverage of the sixth game. Baltimore out front three to two. It's been a Cowboys football game, but the Rams have hung in there close. Back. Looking a little audible, he says. Look at here. Hangs it up for Tony Hill. Oh. Just off the fingertips. <laughs> he was in a foot race with Dwayne Osteen, and Roger laid that out there perfectly. Roger thought he saw a blitz coming that time. You saw him kind of change the play right at the last. Newhouse kind of hustles back in there to that blocking position. Cowboys call this a brown formation. The tight end doesn't go out. He stays in and blocks. So you try to get one-on-one -on -one over here on this sideline. Man, that's just awfully close. Really good defensive coverage, would you say, X? It, well, you, did you play uh, quarterback, Frank, or safety? I safety. played a little of both. I played cornerback when Tom Landry was playing safety. Well, I, he, I'm sure he had first pick. He wouldn't have picked quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third down and 11. Brooks Johnson stays in the ball game. 
Three wide receivers for Dallas. Star back. Oh! Running room. Uh, and Roger, the 37 year old youngster, gets inside the 15 to the 14. First down, Dallas. He is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, that guy's too much. He even got a couple of guys, Ram guys, hurt. You don't fool around with Roger down here in Dallas. He had Pearson, as a matter of fact, that looked like he, Preston Pearson, I'm talking about. Looked like he might have been open deep, but Roger says, I'm not going to really take a chance. I'm going to go in here and pick us up a good first down. Pat Thomas comes in. And I believe Thomas may be the guy that was kind of shaken up a little bit. Picked up a first down, though, friend. You know, it's the kind of game you like to play in your quarterback. Everything Roger's doing is working. His running game is working. His short passing game is working. His long passing game is working. And this is the best I've ever seen Roger Staubach look. And that's saying something because he's been great for a number of years. He's off to his best start that he's ever had the, uh, in his career. And he is really a premier quarterback at age 37. He's never been better. That Thomas comes out, that means the Rams now have neither one of their starting cornerbacks. Rod Perry was hurt early in the season. He's been trying to come back from a bad knee. We get Sid Justin, a rookie out of Cal State of Long Beach, defensively for the Rams. He wears 29. First and 10, the ball at the 14-yard line. Drew Pearson in motion. Paul oh. goes to Dorsett. Oh, good defensive. Yeah. Uh, see those kind of moves at Studio 54. He is really something special. <laughs> He's even exciting when he loses a yard. Pat Thomas comes back into the lineup. He had himself a big day last week against New Orleans. Picked off three. Is it Plano, Texas, Don? He's Plano. Plano. He's Plano. from Plano. And yeah. According to one of the newspaper articles, he was around town trying to hustle tickets for his friends. Yeah, he has about 50 out there. He's a Texas A&M guy, and uh, Plano is just right outside here. Right outside the Second down and 11. Ball at the 15-yard line. Dorsett. Power sweep. Little gap the inside, and Dorsett gets back inside the 15. A gain of a couple. It'll be third down and nine. Jack Youngblood defensively. And most of the Rams' defense in pursuit made the stop. Right, as, we, as we come up to third, third down again, I think it's interesting to note as we look at the scoreboard and the clock there, that in games prior to this, the Los Angeles Ram defense has been so good that people have only converted 24% of third downs in the first down. Tonight, the Cowboys have converted seven out of 10. And Dandy, Let me you figure know, that out for you. That it's, is something uh, around 70%. Between 65 and 75%. Not Third that. and ten, shotgun for the Cowboys. Three wide receivers. I don't blame him. Ron Springs, he can pass. Left-handed. Oh. Fires into the end zone. Incomplete because Eddie Brown could not hold on to it. He surprised the Cardinals, I believe it was, with that one. They didn't know he could throw. They didn't know he was left-handed. And that will bring on Raphael Septian. He could erase that misconversion from the first quarter. Cowboys leading 20 to 6. Fran and I have both been a little more nervous than you have, I think, Frank, about that mixed missed extra point. It seems like so many times when you miss one of those, they have a way of coming back and figuring in in the final result. So maybe this is a shot for him to make up for it. Septian, 8 of 12 this year. 32 yard attempt. Holder, Danny White. He's a quarterback. And it's good. Raphael Septian. The Cowboys out in front, 23 to 6, a 32-yarder. And we'll be returning to Texas Stadium in a moment. And as good as Charlie is, you don't miss him that much. Get well, Charlie. We all do. He is popular. You saw the sign, get well, Charlie. Third down, 10 Rams. Again from the end zone. Hayden. Look out. Pat. He just oh. hangs it up. Fair catch. Call for. And missed. And picked off by D.D. Lewis. Ah, uh, D.D. Rick Harris could not handle it. It bounced out of his hands. Just trying to avoid the safety there. And he turns it over to the Rams out at the 30-yard line. In all fairness to Pat, you see Randy White come in. That's Harvey Martin coming around. He didn't really have much of a shot, but that one is a fair catch one if I ever saw it. <laughs> and a good play by D.D. Lewis. They were all around it. Somebody had to intercept that ball. Watch at the bottom of your screen, 79, Harvey Martin coming in on little Pat Hayden. And I don't care if you're 5'11 or you're 6'4, when a big Harvey Martin hits you like he's going to hit Hayden, it hurts. Oh, oh boy. That's paying the price. First turnover of the game, and the Cowboys have the ball at the 30-yard line of the Rams. There he is. Rod 
Dodger hangs it up. Billy Joe Dupree's in the end zone, oh. and he does not hold on to it. Yeah, he would have loved to have caught that ball. He was back there with Nolan Cromwell, and Roger just hung it high for his six foot four inch tight end. It's a good example where, if, again, you talk about the split seconds. I believe that Roger had another split second before he had to throw. He could have had a little bit. Let's watch it again. I didn't see who the main rush was from. Oh, they have a little blitz. And that's Young Youngblood blood coming in there. They were really coming from both sides. He had to throw it really before Billy Joe was clear. And you see the ball was not really thrown over the proper shoulder. So that was one of those near misses. A couple of gentlemen linebackers, Brzezinski and Youngblood both. They could have unloaded on Roger. They did not. Second and ten. Dorsett. Josh. Play is designed to go outside. Dorsett read it, cut back to the inside, did it on his own, getting it down close to the 21 yard line. Gain of nine. Bob Brzezinski finally corralled him, but he had a hard time getting, getting him down. Pickup of nine. It'll be third and one. Watch Freddie Dreyer come across. They're going to come inside him on the trap. He came out very wide. Brzezinski makes the tackle, but look at Dorsett, little 190 pounder. He drags him on for another two or three yards. I think he's just trying to say, let's find a nice soft spot and sit down over here. The ball marked at the 21 yard line. The three tight ends are in now on the short yardage play. Cosby, Saldi, and Dupree. Roger. Oh, <laughs> quarterback sneak. First down, Dallas. Inside the 19 yard line. He'll have, he'll have him back there returning punts. You know that? And that he would back. love it. Yeah, he'd do it. There's, there's poor Pat Hayden. You know, poor Pat has had a difficult time in the second half. Both times he's gotten the ball, he's been on his own three-yard line. The two times Starbucks gotten the ball, he's been on the 28 and the 30 of uh, L.A. That makes a tremendous amount of difference. And the question people ask is, you know, should I put Ferragamo in over Hayden? Probably now wouldn't be a bad idea. Dorsett again turns back to the inside. This time he's pounded to the turf after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Frank, the reason I say it wouldn't be a bad idea to put Ferragamo in, not, is, not because Hayden has played badly, but sometimes you make a, a, a change. There's Ferragamo there. You make a change, it might pick up your team. Hayden has got to be frustrated, and it's really not his fault. And Ferragamo says, I can do it, coach. Put me in. Ferragamo has not seen that much action, did a little cleanup. Tampa Bay was cleaning up on the Rams a few weeks ago. Second down, nine. Dorsett, a big hole. Dorsett goes inside the 13-yard line, where it'll be third down and four, hit there by Nolan Cromwell and Bob Brzezinski. Really, the only time L.A. has stopped Dallas on third down tonight, Dandy, has been with a penalty. Yeah, that's right, as a matter of fact. Tony needs 13 more yards to have his third consecutive 100-yard game. And that's not counting the 45-yard touchdown that was called mm -hmm. back. He had 145 last week against the Vikings. Frank, last week, his 145 yards were the fourth highest uh, rushing anybody's ever done for the Cowboys. And uh, he did it. Out of the shotgun. Third down four. Ron Springs, 20. Preston Pearson, 26. Are in there for the Cowboys. What a oh, oh, oh. Preston Pearson. Oh. I'm telling you that oh. He stopped inbound short of the goal line, and Roger Staubach took something off of it, hung it up there. Preston Pearson was up to it. Let's look again. Well, it's what I've been hearing Drysdale and Howard talking about. This is a change of pace. But that's exactly what was called oh. for. He just dropped that one in a bucket right over his head. That's good defensive coverage. Keep in mind that Youngblood was between Starback and the receiver, but what a catch by Pearson. If he's not Mr. Clutch on this team, I don't know who is. He and Roger together, I guess. A leading receiver of a year ago. They don't use him that much this year, but they used to bring him always on third down, get him in there. He was the man they went to. First and goal. Robert Newhouse gets the call. Does not crack that plane. It'll be second and goal. Ray, there's always tomorrow, my man. They've been doing a lot of struggling out there in the L.A. city, trying to get this thing on 
on the road, and I really think one of the major things is, they, is what we've really been talking about all night. They've had so many of their frontline players hurt. They haven't been able to. It's, it's what training camp's for, is to get that coordination, everything in sync. The Rams just haven't quite got it yet. Rams four and two coming into tonight's game. Stop back looking over second and goal. Oh, Tony V. Dorsett. It's his second touchdown of the night. Oh, and does he hit it quickly? All right. Just a little bold and lightning. A little quick trap. A little gap, and Dorsett's in the end zone. What they call a little 90 trap. All that 90 series, they can fake a pitch out to the law, come back in, a little quick trap up the middle, and there's Tony. He hits it in a hurry. And where are you, friend? I'm right here looking. Turn out the lights, my man. It's time. Tapiel, Septian, Danny White holding. The Rams have exceeded their wipeout in the NFC Championship game, and they beat the Rams 28 to nothing last year. Uh, Septian is good. Cowboys over the Rams 30 to 6. There's a little quick trap. And beautiful it is. We'll be returning to Texas Stadium right after this message. And having a difficult night. He really blaming on Pat Hayden. He's been sacked four times and he's been hit many more times than that, just as if he released the ball. Rams first and ten, the ball at the 44-yard line. Wendell Tyler in motion for the Rams. Look out. Ron Smith does not hold on. Would have been a Ram first down. Hayden put that in rather well, but he again was pounded just as he released it. Randy White was right there close. Friend, it's 30 to 6. Three, Dallas. Six. What do you think that this is a time that you could insert a Paragombo into the offense and not really uh, you know any blame on Hayden? I really do. I don't think it's Hayden's fault tonight. The, the, the defense hasn't played up to its normal self. The, the special teams have broken down. And I think it's a good time to. Pat wants to. I, I'm sure the times you're frustrated, let me out. Let Farragamo get a little experience. And I think it'd be a good move to let Farragamo play it out. I think Dallas has got the game in the bag. Let Farragamo play, get some experience. Second down and 10 for the Rams. Inside handoff, Cullen Bryant. Big hole, and Cullen Bryant scrambles into Dallas territory at the 47 yard line, up into there by Aaron Mitchell defensively for Dallas. Short of the first down. I would think that it's a good time to use not only uh, Ferragamo, but also Danny White for Dallas because yep. it's an opportunity not only to play, but to play against two really good football teams. The Rams are, are a good football no team. Question about it, right? And so it's a good opportunity to do that. I agree with you. Third down, two. We'll see if Tom agrees with both of us in just a minute. No. Malabasi does it right now. Denard in motion. Hayden. Rolling out. Tries to go to Denard. Off his fingertips. Had to be very careful with that because Aaron Kyle was moving up quickly from his cornerback spot for Dallas. It'll be fourth down, Rams. Again, it was not a badly thrown ball. No. Out comes Ken Clark and dropping deep for the Cowboys. Sensational free agent find out of Howard, Steve Wilson. Don, it's interesting statistic here. L.A. has converted one of ten third down situations, and they say that you've got to convert on third down. That tells the story, too. And they only had the ball a little over three minutes in the entire third quarter. If you don't know all that sort of stuff, look at the scoreboard. It's 30 to 6. <laughs> Steve Wilson, he drops the ball at the 9, finds it again, and slithers up over the 15 to the 16-yard line. Uh, we have timeout with 14.02 remaining in the game, and we'll be back in just a moment. On the sidelines, came up. 77, fourth round draft pick. He's thrown the ball 48 times in those three years. And he's just staying warm on the sidelines. I'm fairly well convinced we're going to see more of Pat Hayden tonight. Dallas has the ball, first and 10. The ball at their own 17 yard line. Newhouse. Or rather, Laidlaw gets the call over the left side. He rolls out close to the 20-yard uh, line. It'll be second down and seven. Skyline of Dallas Big on team. a 72-degree night. Beautiful night for football. And, of course, we'll be looking at a different skyline tomorrow night. Uh -huh. It's the Big Apple, the Jets <laughs> and the Minnesota Viking. The Jets with the best ground game in the NFL after six games. But they have a little man named Wesley Walker you'll see tomorrow night. And, of course, Minnesota can answer with the likes of Ahmad Rashad, Sammy White, you should see the ball in the air a great deal tomorrow night. Second and seven. 
Robert Newhouse over the 20 to the 22 yard line. Of course, it'll be a bit of a reunion for you, Fran, tomorrow night. The old boys up in the. Yeah, and I'm going to tell the world the real truth you are? about Harry Peter Grant, better known as Bud Grant. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. I don't want to know about that myself. Yeah, the real inside story. I've got it. And oh. I'm going to tell the world tomorrow night. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> I'm going to hang around for that one. Oh, yeah, really? Man. Yeah, the world is waiting to hear about Harry Peter Grant. Third down five. Cowboys, their own 22-yard line. They have been nearly perfect tonight on offense, but not bad on defense. Starback, Jay Sully, <laughs> Dallas first down at the 34-yard line. You know, it's just not that easy. People it's out not. there watching, it's not that easy. Dallas is making this look so easy, and they're playing against one of the great defenses in football. It was always tough when I played against them, and I know it's tough for every other quarterback to play against them. And Dallas is just walking down the field against them, and it's you know it's a proud defensive team, and they don't have many nights like this. But I'm not sure they can do anything about it. Dallas is so sharp; it's really unbelievable. Roger is 13 of 18 for three touchdowns and 176 yards. Jay Saudi, who caught that ball, has got three on the night for 49 yards. One of them a Roger Starback touchdown. Starback, Dorsett. Dorsett, somehow he always gets another yard, another two or three, and in this time he moves out to the 42 yard line, and he now has 95 yards on the night, five yards short of his 100-yard mark, and that would be a new Cowboy record. No Cowboy runner has ever put together three consecutive 100-yard games. Donald, it's interesting to me that Tom Landry, the 30-3 to lead with 12 minutes left to go in the game, is not taking any chances. He's keeping the big boys in there all the way. Well, I think he'll go one more series, one more drive. Dorsett, that is just a nice twist. <laughs> Stop. Very close to another Cowboy first down. Larry Brooks defensively for the Rams, along with Jack Reynolds, the middle linebacker number 64. And in comes the short yardage offense. They're going to give a measurement here, I believe. However, I do believe they're a little short. Landry has sent his two tight ends in to join Billy Joe Dupree. Doug Cosby's out there, Jay Salty. And did you notice Danny White edging closer to Tom Landry and saying, please, Tom, let me have a shot at this? Yeah, Danny's one of the guys that, you know, they've been saying he's waiting on this. In fact, all of us say he's, he's just chomping at the bits. And I think anybody, any quarterback I've ever known wants to play. They don't really like sitting on that bench. And he has a great deal of respect for Roger. But he knows that sooner or later his time's going to come. And I think for Danny, it's just as soon as it be sooner. Had a little bad luck early in the season, right before the season started. He broke his thumb banged it off Larry Bethea's head in practice and he's only been able to play for the past couple of weeks. You saw how short just a few inches it'll be third down. The Dallas Cowboys five and one coming into tonight. Philadelphia of course beat St. Louis today. They're six and one. They're looking in tonight. Frank do you realize that the two wild cards might come from the NFC East. Philadelphia and, 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 and Washington and Cowboys all with good records. Jack Pardee doing a tremendous job with the Redskins. They're five and two. They had a win today over Cleveland. Third and short. Newhouse gets the call and he gets to the 45. He has a Dallas first down with 11 20 remaining in the game. Dallas coming into tonight averaging over 400 yards of offense leading the entire NFL and they have it done anything to take the luster away from their <laughs> there offensive is. show. Oh, there he is. Another Roger. He says, I'm going for a world record tonight. I'm after 2,400. I can play for anybody. Look Roger Owens, the peanut man, going for world's record. He said his peanut elbow is much better tonight. He should be able to go all the way. On first and 10, Scott Laidlaw gets the call. And collects some rams after a gain of a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. Almost get the feet in there trying to run out the clock with 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes left. Everybody's kind of just saying, well, let's go ahead and get this thing over with out here. Son of a gun. Well, New, Newhouse brings the play in from the sidelines. Goodness, goodness. He's alternating with Scott Laidlaw. Yeah. 
mark it at the 46, so it's actually second down and nine. Dorsett adjusts to the tailback in the eye. Newhouse gets the call, and down he goes. Mike Fanning defensively for the Rams. Another telling statistic. I was really impressed. I saw the Philadelphia St. Louis game today, and I was impressed with both those teams. They made some mistakes and came back. The Cardinals come in here next week to play Dallas, but those high flying Eagles, man, they've got them a good football team. We'll have them right here November the 12th on Monday Night Football, and that could be quite a showdown. I think it will, too. I really do. Ron Jaworski injured his leg in that game today, but he stayed in there, was limping a little bit. Curious to see how he comes out of that. Third and nine. There's Hill. Just scrambles out once again. And Roger over midfield in the Ram territory at the 49-yard line. Short of the first down, the Cowboys will punt. Now, if I were landing for sure, I wouldn't let him go back in there and play anymore. I wouldn't either. At 30 to 6, I don't want him, so I don't want to see Roger running if I'm the head coach over there. I wouldn't want to see Roger hurt or Dorsett hurt, and I'd be sure both of those guys are sitting on the bench the rest of this game. That's a moral victory for the Rams. They stopped him on third down without a penalty. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Danny White may not be playing quarterback, but he's not putting so bad. He's yeah. averaging 52.3 <laughs> yards. A couple of weeks ago against Cincinnati, he set a Cowboy record averaging a little over 47 yards. So here's Danny White with Eddie Brown waiting back around his 10-yard line. White hangs it high, and he has Cowboys down there. That is really it. Fair catch called for and made by Eddie Brown inside the 10, where the Rams will begin once again deep in their own territory with 8.30 remaining in the game. Four points, they have the ball at their own 8-yard line. First and 10, they have a new quarterback, Vince Farragamo. I've told you that he is in his third year, a fourth-round draft pick at 77. Six of 13 this year, one touchdown, one interception. 22 of 48. During his Ram career, has thrown three touchdown passes. This is Elvis Peacock. And Peacock gets out over the 10, close to the 12-yard line, before being hit there by Bob Bruni. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Here's old Scott Laidlaw out of Stanford, and he and uh, Robert Newhouse have been shutting the plays back and forth tonight. A little hot and sweaty, but it's been a good night for Mr. Laidlaw. Yeah, Elvis Peacock in there, along with Vince Ferragamo. He came up as a number one draft pick a year ago. He hurt his knee in the third preseason game. was out for the entire year. What do you think Malavisi told him, Danny? Go out there, Fair Gumbo, and win this thing for us, huh? Uh, on second and seven, he has the time. He finds his receiver, Ron Smith. Ram first down at the 26. Benny Barnes there to defend against Ron Smith, but it's a Ram first down. Fair 6'3", a 207-pounder. Banning, West Banning High School in Wilmington, California. A local boy who made good. <laughs> There's Danny White. Hey, he says, I can throw as well as kick. You see his thumb wrapped there. Again, I told you that was fractured right at the beginning of the season. He was able to punt, but until a couple of weeks ago, he could not take a snap from center. And off. Peacock. And Elvis Peacock gets out over the 30 to the 31-yard line. A gain of five. It'll be second and five. There's that thumb. He... Heard it in practice, banged it against Larry Bethlehem's head. I was teasing Danny before the game. He's also got on a set of rib pads, which uh, you can kind of see coming through the jerseys there. And Roger didn't have any rib, rib pads, nor did uh, Carano. I said, what is this? I said, you know, you, uh, that's supposed to protect yourself like that. You got to learn to go out and play with pain. Yeah. He says, I ain't dumb, man. He says, I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. It's one of those. Protect myself. Ferragamo with a safety blitz has to unload it as... He was looking right into the big number of 42, Randy Hughes, who came on the blitz. Incomplete. Third and five. Randy Hughes, Frank, we were talking about earlier, but he's six foot four, 210 pounds, and is fast. You just go see guys like that. Money is pouring into the press box all along to help re uh, replace that there. We now have 30 cents tonight. I've got That's a quarter so. and a nickel coming in. We're going to fix Get that up. Get here, America, high overhead. Looking down at Texas Stadium. A little over 64,000 showed up for tonight's game. Third and five. Ferragamo. Gets it to Ron Smith. And it's almost there. Cliff Harris trying to get the deflection, and Ferragamo got pounded rather thoroughly. 
I think you could see, Frank, that what Harris was really trying to do when he couldn't intercept it was to tip it back up in the air, knowing that more of his guys were around in the ramp. Let's see if that didn't happen. I know they have a drill like that. Watch Bruce Thornton come in here. He put him pretty good. Now look at it, Cliff. See, he tried to bat it back up. Thornton could come along and pick it up. Those are the things you do with a 24-point lead. Ken Clark to punt for the Rams. Steve Wilson is deep for Dallas. And he'll have his tenths from his 30. And hustling down there defensively is Joe Harris for the Rams. Steve Wilson gets back to the 36-yard line. Cowboys have the football. 39-yard punt by Ken Clark and we'll be back. Danny White is the quarterback now for the Dallas Cowboys. Roger Staubach leaves the game. 13 of 18, 176 yards, three touchdowns. He also rushed for 38 yards. But Danny White, the quarterback now for the Cowboys, wearing number 11, hands off to Tony Dorsett. And Dorsett picks up a quick three yards. Wait a Moving minute. Close to the 40-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Can you believe Dorsett is still in the game, Danny? Well, it's... I, I, the only thing I can think of, and it's really not like the Dallas organization to try to get him a record or whatever it is, but he, he doesn't have 100 yards yet, does he? He Frank? just got it right he there. Just got 100. Well, it's a new Cowboy record. Tony Dorsett at 100 yards. First time any running back for the Cowboys has ever put together three straight 100-yard games. Second and seven. 547 remaining in the game. Dorsett gets the call again, and... Ekes out another three yards. It'll be third down. They're called a third and three. Bob Brzezinski in there on the stop. And what a night Roger Staubach leaves with. You know, people always ask me as we look at Roger, is Roger really as nice a guy as he appears? And let me tell you, folks, he is. He's everything he, he seems to you. He's that nice, and he's a lot more fun than you'd think, too. Yeah, yeah. He's I mean, a, you can be nice and be a real and yeah. a lot of fun. Too. He's got a great, dry sense of humor, and I really do appreciate that. Yeah, he's a fun guy to be around. I talked to him this afternoon, and he talks candidly about things. And uh, hello, Danny White, the quarterback, out of the shotgun, third down, three. That's Jay Saldy, <laughs> Saldy's fourth reception of the night. A Cowboy what first a down, throw. forty yard line of the Rams. Now yeah, that's something, Danny. You can bring him off the bench and do like that. Frank, <laughs> I think we guessed right. There's a thing on the uh, scoreboard now announcing that Tony Dorsett is the first Cowboy to rush for 100 yards in three straight games. Watch this throw. Danny White is uh, his first throw of the night, I think, and he's going to put it right on the numbers. Oh. To Jay Saldy cannot throw it any better than that. And there's poor old Jim Youngblood. He's been a it's only a, a step second. short every 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 time. Only a second attempt of the season for Danny White. Threw the ball 64 times last year. Completed. 37 of them. Now in his fourth year with the Cowboys out of Arizona State. On the first and 10, Ron Springs, a rookie from Ohio State, gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. You know, as Malavese, in a way, it's kind of a shame that Jay Saldy is, I think, is a very good tight end. He has to play behind Billy Joe Dupree here because Billy Joe Dupree is so good. As we look at Malavese, uh, any other, most, a lot of teams he could start on. They've actually got him listed as a third tight end behind a rookie that he found out in Santa Clara, Doug Cosby. I know it. Solid on the night. Four reception, 66 yards. Danny White looking over a second down and 10. Changing off. This is Ron Springs. And down goes Ron Springs. Again, Bob Brzezinski. Immediately after this game, we'll be taking a charter flight into New York. Mind you again, tomorrow night, our first Monday night telecast ever from the Big Apple, New York City. By the way, it is a sellout at Shea Stadium, the Jets of Minnesota, and the blackout is lifted in New York. That is, some of us are going to take a charter flight to New York, yes. All right. <laughs> Third down, 15. Ron Springs, number 20. A rookie set back in there with Preston Pearson, number 26. Not quite a rookie. Preston's been around 13 years. Came up in Baltimore, made it to Pittsburgh. Cowboys got him as a free agent. White over the middle intended for Butch Johnson. And Butch Johnson was in a battle there with Sid Justin, the rookie from Cal State of Long Beach, for the football incomplete. Butch Johnson, who really had a great preseason. We talked to him during the course of that preseason. He was catching the football in every game, doing just everything perfect for the Cowboys. And then right before the season, he broke the little finger in his right hand. And 
really disappointed. And meanwhile, a Ram player is down, Pat Thomas. You know, they really cannot. They have really had a tremendous amount of injuries this year. They could ill afford to lose this young man, Pat Thomas. We'll be back. The Goodyear Blimp America hovering around Irving, Texas. There is Texas Stadium. And the Hall of Fame circle here at Texas Stadium. Uh, One of those up there, number 17, Don Meredith. Do a burning ring of Went fire. through the early years, and they were not all that comfortable, as yeah. I recall, Andy. Now, the, the Cowboy fortune certainly took a different direction after I left. You can figure it out. Pat Thomas has left the field. He had to have assistance as he left the field. Danny White now out of front. He hangs it high, looking for the corner, and he doesn't get it. But Pat Thomas has been taken from the game. Rod Perry, we told you earlier, the other regular cornerback, is already out with a bad knee. Dave Elmendorf was hurt tonight. We don't know to what degree. He is on the sidelines, Dave Elmendorf. How much Rams beleaguered with injuries. How much can you take? They really cannot afford to lose Pat Thomas. They just lost too many players to compete against a team like the Dallas Cowboys. However, this loss isn't going to put them out of it because in their division, they're still boss. They're going to have a 4-3 record. The closest to them is L.A. and New Orleans with 3-4 records. And neither one of them look like a threat to the Rams. And Vince Paragamo remains the quarterback. First and 10, the ball at the 20-yard line following the touchback. 17 remaining, and Paragamo is being pursued and tripped up by Larry Bethea. Inside the 15, it'll be a loss. Back to the 12-yard line, a 7-yard loss. Over the years, the story of the Dallas Cowboys. They didn't have a winning season until 1966. Since then, they have been in the playoffs every year but one. They've been in five Super Bowls. When they put it together, they really put it together. A team of Tex Schramm, Tom Landry, and Gil Brandt. Gil Brandt, great personnel evaluator. Second down, 17. Ferragamo lays it up beautifully. Oh, and Dennis Thurman. Dennis Thurman comes up with it, an interception. Well, I meant it was a beautiful spiral. And it was a pretty pass. No it really was pretty. Dennis Thurman. All right, here comes Ferragamo. He's the people's choice in L.A. They think he's tall enough to play quarterback. He throws it out here and leads Dennis Thurman perfectly. Well, Dennis ran a better route, I think. He don't did. you? When you look at it, he really he ran a little bit better route. Hello, Dennis. He was definitely open. Yeah, and Wendell Tyler had a man covering him, so I wouldn't do that. You know, we've talked about the Dallas organization. We look at Dennis Thurman many times. But... Hello, Dennis. The significant thing about him, the people you mentioned, Frank, have all been there in their jobs for the 19 years that Dallas has been in business. Gil Brandt, Tex Ram, Tom Landry, running the fortunes of the Dallas Cowboys. Stability is there. Wyatt hands off to Scott Laidlaw. Flag is down. Laidlaw is down at the 42-yard line after a pickup of about four. It has been, a, really, this is the 20th year of the Cowboys, and it has been a very successful story. I think that, you know, it's going to be interesting. I just can't believe the Cowboys don't have something else in mind when they traded away their number one and number two. So I'm not going to be terribly surprised if somehow before next year's draft they don't figure out a way to get somebody else's number one or number two. Somebody I, was speculating that Ed Too Tall Jones might not be so happy with his boxing career after he fought a couple times. If he came back, could you imagine that front four? Dutton. <laughs> and you move right along. Randy White, Harvey Martin. And they were, <laughs> yeah, there's would something be. right now. You know, I really think it was an excellent move. The Cowboys could afford to make that move because they've got plenty of football players as we listen to the official on this call. Personal foul, crack back, 81. Cracking back was Steve Wilson. But as you two know, you went with great football players. John Dutton has been a great football player for a number of years. He's, he's young at 28. They can afford to give up a first or second round draft choice. But I agree with you, Don. I think they'll make I think they'll get a number one draft choice next year and make a trade to get that. Penalty moves the ball back to the Cowboys 23-yard line. First down, 25 to go. Cosby, the tight end, rookie uh -oh. St. Clair in motion. And Danny White popped it up when he was hit by Mike Fanning. And there's a scramble inside. The Cowboys five yard line. You know, if on this play, I really think Danny was trying to throw the ball. It would have been intentionally grounded the ball, but I think they could have called this intentionally grounded rather than a fumble, but it was a judgment call. The official called it a fumble. I, 
I think he did it intentionally to put himself in a better punting position because he had so much success coming out of the end zone. All right, watch his right arm. He's getting locked up here pretty good, but he's going to make a move to throw the ball. Let's watch him. No, he didn't. Well, it was Sorry, Danny. I tried to protect you, but I just can't. Wait a minute. I didn't even come. I think he's getting in a punting position is what I think he's doing. Well, he wants to make a 95-yard punt now. That's what you're saying. He had 73 already. Oh, boy. Burton Lawless covered the fumble for the Cowboys, but they are moved all the way back to their own three-yard line. The original line of scrimmage was up at the 38. The uh, Cowboys over the Rams, 30 to 6, two minutes remaining to play, and not a whole lot of <laughs> the number people one have left. Number one rated TV, made-for-TV movie in 1978 was a movie by the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Think about that one. I'm going to think about it a while, too. Meanwhile, Danny White is thinking about a second and 45 from his own three. I'd run off tackle. Ron Springs gets it out to the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and 38. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arley. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is produced by Dennis Lewin. Tonight's telecast directed by Andy Sedaris with Chet Forty, of course, directing the World Series. He'll be in Baltimore on Tuesday night, along with Howard. Our technical director is Joe Nisi. Our associate director is Rob Miner. Our technical manager, Vern Carrick. Unit manager is Marshall Lopez. Our spotter, Steve Bazika. Statistician, Mike Swanson. You know, John, there's John Dutton, uh, big, fine-looking farm boy from Nebraska. John Dutton uh, just was unhappy in Baltimore. He had a contract. Cowboys kind of saved him because just before the gun of the, the trade deadline, they gave up the one and two draft choice in 1980 for that big man, and they're expecting big things from him. I think he's going to come here to Dallas and play great. Uh, he's coming to a good organization, a team that's a Super Bowl contender every year, and he's hungry for that. He's going to be similar to what Ahmad Rashad has done for Minnesota when he'd been kicked around the league a little bit, unhappy in his you know, play. You know, Fran, if I could, I'd, play like, great. I'd like to point out, too, that he has a left-handed stance, a defensive end, even though he played right end for Baltimore, and so he's not going to have to change anything when he comes to Dallas. They think he'll be a natural defensive end on the left side with his left-handed stance. I think he's going to really help the Cowboys. Third down and 38. Danny White. Just as good as a punt. Comes up with it, Steve Wilson, the rookie from Howard, a little better than a punt. At the 45-yard line of the Los Angeles Rams, Dwayne Osteen back there covering. Let's look again. All right, here comes Danny White off the eye formation. He comes back to throw to Steve Wilson. He has got now the longest punt of the night and the longest pass of the night. And touchdown Tommy Wilson, that daddy is so proud of Steve Wilson. Touchdown Tommy played in Minnesota, too. Hello, Steve. Not bad. You better look at your dad. It's been exciting. He ran a kickoff back against the Bears for 84 yards and a touchdown. They called it back because of a penalty, but he has really put some spark into the special team of the Cowboys. There's Freddie Dreyer. Uh, Freddie is just disappointed. What a great competitor, Freddie Dreyer. He's a free-spirited guy, but he is really a competitive football player and a great football player, and he is down. First and 10, Dallas. Inside the 46-yard line of the Rams. 137 remaining in the game, and this is Ron Springs. And he Rookie from Ohio State. That's three yards, close to the 41. It'll be second down and seven. Got it. Los Angeles Rams since 1970. I said earlier in the telecast they're working towards a seventh consecutive Western Division title of the NFC. Cowboys have been a bit of a nemesis for the Rams. Three times they've been eliminated from the playoffs in the last six years by these Dallas Cowboys. And the Last Vikings eliminated to nothing. And the Vikes eliminated a couple of times, too. Yeah. Second and seven. 57 seconds remaining in the game. Brown Springs. And back and gets inside the 40 for a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and three. Bob Brzezinski defensively for the Rams. Now they mark it at the 40, so we'll call it third down and four. It was a good cut by Springs that time. He was following uh, Tom Rafferty's block. Jerry Wilkinson is the new defensive end for the Rams. Wilkinson just played way upfield. Rafferty just kind of fenced him off, and Springs got right behind him. Dallas on the night, 187 rushing yards, Los Angeles 59. Tony Dorsett accounting for 103 of those 187 Dallas yards. Third and four. 
Love is the last play. Ron Springs, another Dallas first down. Limbaugh fumbles the football. They did not rule it down, and Eddie Brown has it. Wilson and Eddie Brown fumbles it, and there's a mad scramble on the sidelines. A fitting ending yes, for the nice game as time expires. <laughs> The scene turn out the lights of this game would be redundant. <laughs> they turned them out some time ago, and Tom Landry has himself another victory. The final score, Dallas 30, Los Angeles 6. Be sure to join us tomorrow for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings against the New York Jets from Shea Stadium in New York. Our rent provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through, and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics. And the Cowboys sink the Rams here on Sunday night. Seconds to air. Stand by, all cameras. Ready. Stand by in videotape. Ready. Stand by slow mo. Stand by to open your mics on the field. Stand by in graphics. Ready with your opening supers. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And rotate. Three, two.